Hello everyone, welcome to your PDA. Today I am going to start an interview marathon for one of the very important subjects for electrical engineering that is power systems. This interview marathon will be 9 to 10 hours almost. All topics, all corners of the topics will be discussed in this interview marathon along with the main topics. What will be the types of the questions asked in various interviews like BARC, BARC or ISRO or DRDO and what are the previous questions asked in those interviews, not only those IOCL, okay, BPSC, Bihar Public Service Commission or UPPSC, Uttar Pradesh Public Service Commission or TSPSC, Telangana State Public Service Commission. In many interviews, many questions will be asked all those uh, questions type of questions and previously asked questions will be discussed in this interview marathon so the way i am going to cover the entire syllabus in this interview marathon will be like this we all know that the very first topic in entire power system will be generation power generation yes power generation after that uh, power will be transmitted yeah we are going to step up with the help of step up transformer and we are going to transmit it primary transmission after that there will be secondary transmission and uh, we are going to step down it with help of step down transformer okay with that the primary distribution will start after that secondary distribution after that utilization this is a general and simple structure of power system network but i am covering from transmission onwards why because from generation mostly theory, generation is mostly theory, in interviews uh, theory questions will be asked, therefore this generation I will cover in the last of our marathon. I will start from transmission, after that transmission distribution both will be together as one topic, after that the very important uh, topic of power systems for any interview is uh, analysis part that is uh, fault analysis, stability analysis and load flow studies or load flow analysis. After that, I will be discussing power system protection, how to protect our power system network. In the last, I will be discussing about the concepts of generation. So, why uh, to wait? Let's enter into our uh, interview questions. The interview questions, what I am going to ask is, most of those questions are previously asked questions in various interviews. And some questions are probable questions in interviews. Probable questions in interviews. Let's enter into the questions part ma yeah mainly i'll be focusing on uh, means uh, see uh, i can say like uh, these are the research centers in india one is baba atomic research center next one is uh, drdo defense research development organization and isro indian space research organization these interviews are very difficult or tough or in-depth interviews i'll be covering uh, in the level of these interviews therefore all other interviews also will be covered uh, in our marathon okay so i'll start with a very basic question and uh, as time progress we will be entering into deep concepts okay yeah and uh, in between i'll be asking many cross questions if you go for uh, barc or isro or drd interviews uh, if you give some answer definitely they will ask why this is why not that remove this uh, element keep some other element what will happen so this type of dis discussion also we are going to see at some parts of our marathon let's enter, enter into our marathon ma what is the very first question i told you that uh, i'll discuss uh, i'll start with a very simple question the first question yeah this question was previously asked in one of the interviews overhead line insulation is designed for what voltage yes the question is yeah first of all let me draw the diagram of tower yes transmission tower i'm going to draw the transmission tower observe it ma so this is the transmission tower half part uh, this is the remaining half part okay we are keeping transmission tower on ground what is the potential of the ground potential of the ground is zero volts yes now i want to connect i want to connect uh, transmission line to the transmission tower okay now one question that can be expected here is first of all what is the purpose of tower what is the purpose of transmission tower to provide mechanical support for the transmission line. Yeah, without the tower, it is not possible uh, for the transmission line to trans for the transmission line to erect from one place to another place. Okay, so definitely we need mechanical support at uh, frequent distances. Practically, the length of uh, transmission the span length of transmission towers will be one kilometer. 
see at one kilo this is the zeroth kilometer means we are starting here after one kilometer one tower will be there next the second kilometer another tower will be there like that the span length of uh, tower series means uh, uh, how how frequently the towers are arranged uh, is for one kilometer for every one kilometer tower will be there okay this is a practical scenario i'm talking about now this is the tower with what material tower is made up of tower is made up of galvanized steel galvanized steel so the process of galvanization is used why we are using steel why not iron sir because of the problem of corrosion okay so galvanization will increase the mechanical strength of uh, steel that's why we are going for galvanized steel yes and uh, yeah so this is cross arm cross arm can we connect can we connect directly can we connect the transmission line directly to the tower if you connect what happens yeah this is one of the cross question that can be asked if a transmission line is directly connected to the transmission tower what happens now let's see now this is the transmission line now if this is at zero volt what is the voltage here that is also zero what is the potential you're going to get here this is also zero now this is the transmission line yeah i'm connecting transmission line directly here at what potential transmission line is operating at some voltage at some voltage now this is conductor a you assume transmission line phase a phase a phase a is connected to tower tower is connected to ground now directly which fault has been occurred here single line to ground fault slg or lg fault is occurred okay then what what will happen yes uh, the our system is a uh, yeah our system is a faulty faulty system now our system is a faulty system so we cannot connect directly we cannot connect directly transmission line to the tower then what to do put some insulation put some insulation this insulation is called as overhead line insulation this insulation is called as overhead line insulation these are the disc insulators okay these are the disc insulators so for example i am taking three insulators okay and you can connect you can connect a transmission line to this one this is the transmission line this is the transmission line there will be some metallic pin metallic pin okay there is some metallic pin metallic pins and these are the disc insulators now first question is what is the purpose of this overhead line insulation to avoid leakage current what does it mean by leakage current yes this question also can be asked what does it mean by leakage current the, the unwanted current is leakage current so to avoid leakage current from conductor to the ground we are using this overhead line insulation so this is a overhead line insulation let me go with some different color ma so this is a overhead line insulators and the current that is flowing from conductor transmission line phase to the ground via this tower is called as leakage current this leakage current will be very very small so this is transmission line or power conductor transmission line or power conductor that is okay now for what voltage this uh, overhead line insulation has to be designed is the question for what voltage we have to design now let's see what is the operating voltage that is going to appear across this overhead line insulation yeah this this is the question it is a phase voltage or line voltage a per phase voltage what is this potential zero and this is the conductor what is the potential that is uh, between one conductor to ground that is called as phase voltage the voltage that is appearing across uh, this the voltage that is appearing across these insulators is what ma v phase per phase voltage now if you draw if you draw the waveform of per phase voltage waveform of per phase voltage this is omega t yes uh, this is v of t per phase voltage i am drawing yes observe it carefully here ma this is the voltage yeah it continues and this is the the maximum value or peak value how much will be the rms value rms value will be vm by root 2 vm by root 2 now this will be v rms now the question is yeah the first point here is overhead line insulation has to be designed with respect to per phase voltage not with respect to line voltage one clarity we got now it has to be designed with respect to uh, 
maximum value or RMS value or average value. It has to be designed with respect to maximum value because this is the highest voltage that is going to appear across those insulators. My insulators has to withstand this maximum amount of voltage. If you design for RMS value of voltage in between these, yes, between between these instants of time, yes, let me indicate here. This is time T1, omega T1, okay, and this is omega T2. Yeah, you can take in terms of time or in, you can take in terms of omega T1, no issues. Omega T2, between omega T1 to omega T2, the voltage that is appearing across that string of insulators is more than RMS value is more than RMS value that's why overhead line insulation has to be designed with respect to per phase peak value of voltage yes overhead line insulation yes note this is one of the very important point yes note overhead line overhead line insulation insulation has to be has to be designed with respect to with respect to per phase peak value of voltage peak value of uh, voltage yes yeah now this is the answer what we have to give in the interview okay yeah, this is the first question. So many questions we covered in fact in this one. Okay, what is the purpose of a tower? The purpose of tower is to provide a mechanical strength. What is the purpose of overhead line insulation to avoid leakage current or to reduce leakage current from conductor to the ground? If a overhead line insulation is not there, what will happen? A dead LG fault, a short circuit fault is going to happen. LG fault that is single line to ground fault. For suppose for all three phases you are not connecting any insulation and you are connecting directly to the tower three phases are connected to ground directly yes sir, three single line to ground faults are going to happen yes and one more thing what will be the resistance of this overhead line insulation yes that will be in the range of mega ohms yes so i am writing here the insulation resistance will be in terms of uh, mega ohms now how much will be the leakage current that is flowing uh, i leakage leakage current now i leakage yes is equal to v per phase general transmission voltage will be in terms of kilo volts v per phase in kv by r insulation in terms of mega ohms uh, which is going to give some milli amperes of current very small amount of current very small amount of current is going to flow that is called as leakage current okay that is not going to have uh, that much effect on power system network you may be thinking sir some amount of current is unnecessarily flowing from conductor to the ground is it not affecting our system that small milliamperes of current is not going to affect the, the performance of the system much okay yeah on this uh, you, if you remember okay we are going to model this uh, overhead line insulation uh, in our electrical equivalent circuit when i enter into that topic there i am going to show with help of uh, uh, electrical elements electrical elements uh, we are going to see that okay let's go to the next question uh, yeah what is the purpose of overhead line insulation we already discussed this one that is what is the purpose ma yes the purpose is to avoid to avoid leakage current leakage current from yes conductor conductor to the ground to the ground so this is the purpose why we are using overhead line insulation let's go to the next question yeah this is a very big question in fact yes we'll spend good amount of time here to understand yeah why we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission yes many people will answer here as to reduce losses yeah many students will answer in the interview is to reduce losses though that is one of the answer but that is not the main criteria 
okay let's see first let me discuss about uh, the general answer given by the students then that let, let me enter into one more one of the very important uh, concept that is power system stability okay yeah let me start the explanation here ma yes now for constant amount of power transfer for constant amount of power transfer so p is equal to v into i cos y v i cos y okay i don't want to discuss in terms of uh, p and q let me discuss in terms of uh, yes that is uh, apparent power why because transmission line rating is always in terms of mva or va or kva okay not in terms of mw not on, in terms of mvrs okay we'll see that question also what is the rating of transmission line that is also one of the very important question uh, in the interviews like vrc they'll ask you why transmission line rating is always in terms of mva why not in megawatts we'll discuss that question also okay yeah so apparent power s apparent power s is equal to 3 times of uh, vi 3 v phase into i phase i am taking phase voltage or s is equal to root 3 vl il s is equal to root 3 vl il okay or it can be written as root 3 times of uh, vl into il here one important question that can be framed that is what is the configuration of transmission line yeah i'll discuss that question i'll i'll write here configuration of transmission line i'll discuss uh, after this question configuration of a transmission line what is the configuration of transmission line we'll see like uh, a synchronous machine is going to have star connection and delta connection transformer star delta so like that uh, electrical machine is going to have three phase electrical machine maybe star or delta in the same way what is the configuration of transmission line it is star connected or delta connected see by default transmission line means it is three phase transmission line unless it is mentioned if the examiner or the interior clearly mentions the given transmission line as single phase if he mentions then only we'll take it as a single phase otherwise always if not mentioned we'll take it as three phase transmission line by default transmission line means three phase transmission line we'll see well, what is the configuration of the transmission line fine yeah s is equal to three v phase i phase or uh, root three vl il where uh, vl is equal to we'll see depending on the configuration of the transmission line now for constant amount of power transfer yeah you tell me i per phase is equal to s by 3 v phase yeah now observe it carefully here this is very simple see losses will be reduced anyone can understand if uh, we are going for more voltage yes for constant uh, power so I, I write here constant for constant amount of power transfer if we are increasing v phase current will decrease current will decrease because of this yes because of this what is power loss power loss is equal to 3 i phase square into resistance of the transmission line now as see as the current is decreasing power loss will decrease what is the advantage you are going to get uh, if power loss decreases if power loss decreases uh, we are able to send more amount of power to the see i'll tell you like this 100 megawatts we are 100 mva we are transmitting or let's speak in terms of megawatts only 100 megawatts i am sending from the sending gate side at the receiving end side only 90 megawatts is received 10 megawatts is the loss consumer will pay for what for the sending end power or uh, the power what he is utilizing for the power what he is utilizing for this one only he will pay suppose uh, with increment of voltage now 100 megawatts only we are sending but at the receiving end side we are getting 95 megawatts means uh, power loss is only 5 megawatts so this 5 megawatts extra we are extra consumer is going to get now consumer will pay so there is an economical advantage if we are going for higher and higher voltages of transmission but one thing everyone has to understand that is if we are going for uh, more voltage just in the previous question we discussed that in the previous question we discussed that yeah let me show you so this insulation cost is going to increase this insulation is going to depend upon what rating voltage rating overhead line insulation has to be designed with respect to per phase peak value of voltage per phase peak value of uh, voltage as uh, 
to reduce the power loss we are increasing the voltage level then definitely we have to go for more insulation we have to go for more insulation that is one thing so and uh, uh, if we want to go for uh, more uh, like, uh, voltage i need to go for a step up transformer which is having more rating yeah see after generation generation typically will be done at 33 kv these days okay after that we are going to step up to 66 or 132 220 also sometimes and 400 kv nowadays okay so for stepping up to that value we need a very big transformer that is also includes cost so for transformer cost is increasing and insulation overhead line insulation cost is also increasing with the increment of voltage one more disadvantage we are going to get is corona whenever electric field intensity increases and if it is more than 21.1 kv per centimeter rms value or 30 kv per centimeter peak value the air surrounding the conductor is going to get ionized which is causing corona loss yes so cost is see i can tell you one thing that yes sir, we are going to get uh, power loss is a continuous phenomena which one is the major power loss when compared to corona loss this is a three square three i square r sorry three i square r okay uh, copper loss i can say i should not say copper loss copper loss we call it as uh, we call in the machine but here here in transmission the major transmission power loss is three i square r loss that will be reduced economy will be saved okay see i'll tell you one thing because of insulation cost and uh, uh, this uh, transformer cost and corona power loss uh, some uh, 10 watts is increased suppose say but uh, due to the increment of uh, in terms of cost i'm saying in terms of cost means that is equivalent to 10 watts that all that cost is equal to 10 watts now because of uh, this increment of voltage uh, 3i square r loss will be reduced uh, that will reduce by 100 watts okay so 10 watts is getting increased 10 watts is increased because of uh, stepping up of voltage see that insulation cost i am telling you in terms of uh, power loss okay ultimately we have to sell the power to the consumer and we have to get the money or let me speak in terms of uh, uh, money okay so because of stepping up of voltage we need more uh, overhead line insulation insulation cost is increased and uh, i can say a transformer cost will increase due to corona uh, corona is going to happen because voltage increase means electric field intensity will increase corona loss will increase all these thing, things uh, will contribute uh, so 10 inr 10 indian rupees increment in cost but uh, this uh, 3 i square r loss will decrease by 100 inr cost so overall 90 INR is a profit but apart from this one of the very important advantage why we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission is uh, power system stability yes power system stability let me discuss that one okay yeah see uh, this question many a times was asked in BARC Baba Atomic Research Center okay yes let me write here BARC isro and uh, drdo yes drdo in these interviews uh, this this question will give lot of discussion okay this question will give lot of discussion means if you start answering to the interviewer interview keep on asking questions uh, many cross questions will be asked the main reason the main reason to go for higher and higher voltages of higher and higher voltages of transmission transmission is to maintain is to maintain good power system stability what does it mean by power system stability let's understand okay what does it mean by power system stability we know a equation yes we have a famous equation power transfer equation of transmission line approximate power transfer equation ps is equal to mod vs 
mod v r y x into sin delta sin delta megawatts sin delta megawatts see understanding this equation is very 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 important uh, because entire power system will run on this equation entire power system see i'll tell you entire power system is going to run on this equation how it is and why it is let's see okay so this is ps as well as uh, p r also at the receiving end also because uh, resistance of the transmission we are neglecting this is approximate power transfer equation we will 99 percent of the entire power system analysis we are going to do with uh, this approximate equation very rarely we are going to uh, encounter exact equation and uh, i don't recommend you to remember exact equation also why because you can derive that's very simple how to derive those equations uh, yeah sometimes in in interviews uh, this may be asked derive power transfer equations i'm going to discuss that also i'm going to discuss that also come here ma yeah now what does it mean by stability what does it mean by stability that is very important now uh, i'll first i will discuss with a general generic example now there is a, a machine there is a machine you are increasing the load yeah take this one as load and uh, this one as power supply now there is no load no power supply you switch on the machine and uh, we kept some load now load is increasing power supply from this one also will increase it is matched both are operating stably now load is increased power supply will increase both are operating stably now load is further increased power supply will increase both are operating stably now that is a stable condition now if you observe load is increased but power is not increasing power is decreasing this is called as unstable condition this is called as unstable condition means uh, see if load increases supply also has to increase means if load is increasing supply is also increasing stable if load is increasing supply is decreasing system is said to be unstable we'll understand it further we'll understand it further let us draw the graph of uh, this uh, electric power transfer equation pe we call electric power transfer equation let's draw the graph of that what's the variable for a synchronous machine or in power systems there is an angle called a load angle delta yes load angle i'm writing here that is what load angle delta yes now this is electric power transfer pe okay i'm going to sketch that value this is zero yes yeah sir why you drawn only half uh, let me draw some part of this yeah let me draw the next some part of the negative part only some part not total part only some part i'll be taking yes observe it here now i'm taking the border that is uh, 90 degrees pi by 2 okay radians or uh, in degrees it is 90 we all know that that's yeah come here now in a synchronous machine or in transmission line or in power system i'm talking about ac power system not about dc power system not about hvdc the very first thing that happens when load changes is a load angle delta will change yeah which machine is the mostly used machine for the generation of uh, electric power that is synchronous generator wherever load angle delta increases whenever load angle delta increases uh, then whenever load increases sorry whenever load increases uh, the very first thing that is going to happen is load angle delta will increase do remember that point ma yes i'm going to write here see in a synchronous machine in a yes in a synchronous uh, machine when load increases then yes load angle load angle delta will increase delta delta will increase and vice versa when load decreases load angle delta will decrease load is not changing delta will not change now now come on here this is one of the finite analysis what we are going to take up that's very important for you to concentrate here yeah now 
present operating point is this one delta 1 yes if you observe carefully the corresponding to delta 1 corresponding to delta 1 yes corresponding to delta 1 this is the corresponding to delta 1 this is the present power it is delivering p1 i call p1 p1 is the present power that is delivered by the synchronous machine or transmission line okay the power transfer equations of synchronous machine and transmission line both are exactly the same in transmission lines we are going to use abcd parameters in a synchronous machine we are going to use a resistance and a reactance okay see equation wise both are exactly same parameters will change parameters will change yes yeah now what happened is load got increased load got increased by some delta p value load got increased the very first thing that will happen is load angle will increase now load angle got increased from delta 1 to delta 2 now if you observe carefully yes sir, this is the corresponding p2 value this is the corresponding p2 value as load angle got increased power is increased or not yes now the previous operating point was delta 1 due to the change in load change of load is taken a small disturbance there is a small disturbance at the load side that is increasing in load suddenly load got increased immediately what happens is load angle got increased from delta 1 to delta 2 due to which if you observe carefully due to which yes due to which power is increased from p1 to p2 power is increased from p1 to p2 yes power is increased from p1 to p2 observe it carefully now this is stable condition this is stable condition means i can write here what is a dp or let's take in this way p2 is the present power minus p1 is the previous power by delta 2 minus delta 1 delta 2 is the present angle delta 1 is the previous angle this can be written as dp by d delta if dp by d delta is positive system is said to be stable system is said to be stable yes sir. as uh, load increases load angle is increased power is also increased angle increased from delta 1 to delta 2 power is also increased from p1 to p2 stable now sir if load decreases yes let's see that let's see that if load decreases that also we see that also we are going to see yeah now load got decreased from p2 sir load got decreased load got decreased from p2 to p3 p2 to p3 load got decreased yeah to here load got decreased suppose say to here load got decreased to here load got decreased what happens immediately load angle will decrease to here to delta 3 to delta 3 load angle will increase this is p3 now tell me what is dp by d delta p3 minus p2 not the highest value minus lowest value see present value minus previous value now power is p3 previously it is p2 now it is p3 p3 minus p2 by delta 3 minus delta 2 p3 is less than p2 numerator is uh, negative delta 3 minus delta 2 numerator, denominator is also negative so negative by negative will be again positive dp by d delta is positive system is said to be stable if uh, let me write here if dp by d delta is positive yes one must understand very carefully this analysis yes now let me write one very important conclusion here that is if uh, note note if dp by d delta is positive yes then the system is said to be the system yes is said to be stable system is said to be stable if dp by d delta is positive okay now let's see what is the unstable condition let's see what is unstable condition now further load got increased further load got increased yes now load angle got increased to delta 3 yes then what happens what is the corresponding power this is p3 now load angle got increased but power got decreased or let me take a 
more length of the angle yes then that is easy for us to understand yes load angle got increased up to delta 3 what is the power this is p3 observe observe carefully now while load angle increases by expecting that power supply is going to increase but power is decreased from p2 to p3 power is decreased from p2 to p3 what is dp by d delta p3 minus p2 negative by delta 3 minus delta 2 positive negative by positive will be negative system is said to be unstable see here i want to explain something which is practical which is going to happen practically see whenever load increases the poor machine don't know simply it will increase the load angle by expecting that uh, the power supply is going to increase so up to 90 degrees up to here yes that will happen that will happen load angle is increasing power supply is decreasing but from here but from here load as in, load angle is increasing but power supply is decreasing now at delta 3 power is p3 which is less than the expected value now the poor machine will further increase the value of angle by expecting incrementing power okay let's start analyzing from this pi by 2 up to pi by 2 okay load angle is increasing power is increasing happy load is increasing load angle increasing power supply is increasing but uh, once you cross this 90 degrees once you cross this 90 degrees though see load got increased machine don't know anything machine just will increment the load angle so load angle got increased power supply is decreased but machine don't know machine needs the power to supply okay for that what machine will do it will increase the angle further further power is going to decrease it will further increase the angle by expecting more in power supply but further it is decreasing so after 90 degrees uh, how much angle it is increasing that, that much power supply is going to decrease but machine don't know when load increases machine is going to in simply increase the angle so like that it will come up to here up to pi by up to pi radians or 180 degrees up to pi radians or 180 degrees it will come now at that point of time how much is the power supplied by the this generator to the grid it is zero but machine don't know machine will further increase the angle which will make the machine to behave as a motor instead of generator suppose here, here you are standing power is negative we are giving steam input to the generator with help of turbine sorry we are giving steam input to the turbine and uh, that mechanical energy is connected to the generator and we are rotating the generator by expecting that it is going to supply electric power to the grid instead of that this particular machine is going to absorb the power from grid yeah power is negative according to passive power pa passive power and convention yes it is a source source power see positive it is supplying negative means it is absorbing it is behaving like a motor it is behaving like a motor so which is an unwanted condition so we are rotating the rotor of the generator with help of turbine in this direction and uh, if, if it is drawing power from the grid that uh, that electric power tries to rotate in, uh, rotate the rotor in opposite direction there is a possibility for the rotor to break okay so this condition is said to be unstable means what what is unstable condition if the load requirement is increasing but the power supply is decreasing and this continuously happens after some point of time power supply is going to become zero and after that one the machine is going to absorb that the machine starts absorbing power from grid that condition is called as unstable condition and how to avoid this one how to avoid this one there is a relay called reverse power relay which will recognize the flow of power from uh, grid to the machine and uh, that machine will be disconnected by the circuit breaker circuit breaker will receive the command uh, from that uh, reverse power relay reverse power relay will give trip signal to circuit breaker circuit breaker is going to disconnect this particular machine from grid. this is unstable condition let me write that point let me write that point then we go for yeah we started our discussion we started our discussion let me write here if uh, dp by d delta is negative the system or machine the system or the machine or the system power system is said to be unstable is said to be what ma unstable the machine is said to be unstable yes 
okay now what is the relationship between uh, this increment of voltage and this uh, load angle so if you observe if you observe if the load angle crosses 90 degrees unstable okay if the load angle is far below 90 degrees this is said to be stable see i'll tell you i'll tell you by taking one simple example observe here ma observe here so this is uh, the power angle characteristics power angle characteristics roughly i'm drawing power angle characteristics this is pi by 2 okay now this is p max this is p max if uh, the present operating point of our machine is at uh, 80 80 degrees okay let me write in terms of degrees this is uh, 90 degrees 88 degrees any small change in load uh, can uh, make the system to enter into unstable region right any small change of load also can make the system to enter into unstable region that is the reason why we have to operate our machine far below 90 suppose uh, sorry if we are operating the machine at 30 degrees any change of load may take up to some 70 degrees that system is not entering into unstable region but if you are operating near to 90 degrees uh, any small disturbance at the load side can make uh, or can bring uh, this particular system operation into unstable region that's why it is very important uh, to operate the synchronous generator power angle in between 30 to 40 degrees practically yes this is the practical question many times that is asked in many interviews that is note practically yes practically the synchronous generator the synchronous generator generator load angle load angle is is operated in between 30 degree to 40 degree by keeping transient stability in consideration transient stability what is this transient stability we will discuss okay a uh, question can be asked in an interview what is transient stability okay by keeping transient stability in consideration in consideration yes in consideration okay so understand it carefully understand it okay 30 to 40 degrees even a large disturbance yeah the stability that deals with large disturbances is called as tangent stability the stability analysis that deals with small disturbances is called as a steady state stability or small signal st small signal stability or small disturbance stability study we will see we'll see when we reach to that topic okay now come here see there is a lot of discussion there is a lot of discussion here okay now what is the relationship between that so which one is very important in terms of angle let's write in terms of angle zero less than delta less than pi by two machine is stable machine is stable delta greater than pi by two machine is uh, unstable or system is uh, unstable now which one is important load angle delta is very important now come here what is uh, the equation p e is equal to mod vs mod vr by x into sine delta for my analysis purpose megawatts for my analysis purpose i am taking mod vs is approximately equal to mod vr that is equal to v i am taking so pe is equal to yes v square by x into let me write clearly ma pe is equal to v square by x into sin delta now come here now come here now we reached to the answer of the question p is equal to v square by x into sin delta for constant of power to be transferred this is constant this is constant okay or let me write this one as constant if this is constant and we are going for we are going for higher and higher voltages of transmission if this is increasing or if this is increasing we know that if delta is equal to 90 degrees uh, this v square by x is the p max and now this total will increase 
to maintain this one as constant sin delta has to decrease sin delta is decreasing means yes sir delta has to decrease delta has to decrease means uh, if uh, voltage increases uh, that implies delta will decrease uh, for for constant pe for constant value of electric power output how much less will be the load angle that much more will be the stability yes sir uh, if your machine is operating at 10 degree i can say that your machine is more stable when compared to the machine which is operating at 70 degree why because a small for same power again you have to remember that for same power okay so the machine which is operating at 10 degree is supplying 700 megawatts the machine which is operating at 70 degree is also supplying 700 megawatts okay but a machine one is with a more voltage machine two is with lesser voltage so delta is less for machine one 10 degree delta is more for machine two that is 70 degree so my point here is very clear if we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission power system stability will increase that is the last conclusion point and this is the answer what you have to give to the interior see if if the interior will start with this question your interview on this question will run for at least 30 to 45 minutes only on this question Many questions will be asked how to improve how to improve power system stability one answer we saw that by increasing the voltage by going for more and more voltage of power transmission more voltage of power transmission okay there, that not only that there are many methods to improve power system stability we are going to discuss later those things methods to improve power system stability we are going to discuss later so the point here is uh, yeah let me write the point here higher voltages of higher voltages of power transmission power transmission will will increase will increase power system stability will increase what ma power system stability if you are going for higher voltage of power transmission, power system stability is going to increase. So this is the answer what you have to give. If you give this answer, how can you can you explain how power system stability will increase? And what is power system stability? Why it is important in power systems? So like that many questions can be asked. The total explanation what I given covered all those questions. Okay, let's go to the next question. Yeah, what is the next question? advantage of aluminum over copper yeah for uh, first of all this might be the question with what a material we are manufacturing transmission line with aluminum okay generally used conductor is acsr aluminum conductor with steel reinforced okay many questions can be framed here why aluminum why not copper so which one is a good conductor among aluminum and copper so yeah without second question copper is a good conductor when compared to aluminum then why we are going for aluminum yes sir the main reason or the known reason is uh, cost of copper is more why because its availability is less therefore we are going to prefer aluminum then interior will expect uh, what is there in any other point uh, why we are going for aluminum any other technical point apart from economic point so economically yes it is correct aluminum is cheaper and it's uh, available abundantly when compared to copper but any other reason why we are going for aluminum but not copper yes that is yeah let me explain that so in interviews like isro or drdo or bark so this type of answer is expected okay yeah for same resistance for same resistance for same resistance you may be thinking sir why we have to take same resistance if we are comparing two things then definitely one of the thing must they be taken as same so you can compare two electrical engineering students not one with the electrical engineering degree another with the computer science degree yes and you can't compare uh, an mbbs degree holder with an uh, engineering degree holder right in the same way I, i'm going to compare aluminum and copper therefore one criteria i have to take the same is that is resistance now what is the resistance of copper and resistance of aluminum both are equal now let me write uh, let me write uh, its formula what is resistance formula rho of copper by 
length of copper by area of copper that is equal to rho of aluminium into length of aluminium by area of aluminium same length of transmission line i'm comparing same length of transmission line if the transmission line length is same this uh, l l gone yes now let's write here now let's write here this is the important explanation okay now rho of copper by area of copper is equal to rho of aluminium by area of uh, aluminium we all know that copper is a good conductor when compared to aluminium yes we all know that conductivity of copper is greater than conductivity of aluminium if more is the conductivity and less will be the resistivity now i can write in this way rho of aluminium is greater than rho of copper where uh, rho is what ma rho is resistivity if conductivity is more resistivity is less yes now if, if you look at this if you look at this yes if you look at this relationship now for these two to be equal we know that uh, this is less when compared to this from this one we have to write that uh, area of aluminum required should be greater than area of copper this is a very simple mathematical equation this is less this is more to maintain the ratio suppose if this is 4 for example i'm taking rho of copper is uh, not 4 okay don't take it granted you will be having we are going to have those practical values sir. okay yeah this is suppose some 4 and this is 2 4 by 2 is 2 now this is 8 i have to take this one as 4 then only that ratio will be 2 okay so area of aluminum required is more than area of copper here immediately student will get it out sir we require more area means we have to use more material then again this is a disadvantage but uh, how this is an advantage for us technically means uh, technically means observe here that is this is uh, area of area of uh, aluminum this is area of uh, copper now both we are exciting with same voltage then electric field intensity on this uh, aluminum is less when compared to copper right? because uh, the air space is more your space is less for same voltage we are discussing for same voltage same resistance and same length of transmission electric field intensity electric field electric field intensity on aluminium is less when compared to electric field intensity on copper if electric field intensity is less what is the advantage corona loss will be less corona the probability of happening corona will be decreasing or if corona happens that loss is going to be less when compared to this copper so this is one of the technical reason why we are going for uh, aluminum compared to copper yes sir, all are correct means uh, cost is less uh, abundance is there aluminum is available abundantly okay and uh, but uh, the main technical reason behind why we are going for aluminum is uh, the area of cross section required for aluminum is more compared to copper for same resistance and same length if you are going with the same voltage of transmission then the electric field intensity on aluminum is less when compared to the electric field intensity on copper here charges will be packed loosely here charges will be packed tightly why because the surface area is less so this is the reason why we are going for aluminum practically instead of a uh, copper let's go to the next question read the question carefully yeah the question is in modern transmission all three phases are tied together with proper insulation and transmitted why see many of you don't know this concept okay let me get into this uh, concept one of the very important concept with respect to inductance and all okay yeah let me get into the concept see at your home you can find single phase two wire system both the wires are twisted together with insulation on those two see the, those are called as silk wires if you you can find uh, two wires at your home if you take any plug any plug it is going to have two wires between those two insulation will be there and both are twisted together both will be made as a single wire but that is two wires first of all let's understand why it is so what is the formula for inductance what is the formula for inductance this question was asked in isro interview once okay what is the formula for inductance l per phase is equal to mu naught pi 2 pi into ln of gmd pi or let's not take gmd let's take a let's take single phase uh, two wire system ln of uh, 
d by s r dash henry per meter okay now what is mu not by 2 pi mu not is a uh, uh, 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7 if you simplify it you are going to get a 2 into 10 to the power of minus 1 so this is some constant we are least bothered about that con that constant in this explanation okay let's rearrange this formula let's rearrange this formula l per phase is equal to mu naught by 2 pi s ln of d plus ln of 1 by r dash henry per meter let's rearrange it further let's rearrange it further l per phase is equal to mu naught by 2 pi into ln of 1 by r dash minus i'll write this one as ln of 1 by d henry per meter let me draw the conductor diagram conductors diagram of uh, this formula i am taking single phase two wire system so this is the forward wire and this is the return wire okay and the distance always uh, you know the distance is measured from center to center center of a conductor to center of uh, another conductor this distance is d this conductor radius i am taking it as r this also i am taking it as r two identical conductors i am taking conductor a conductor b this is <coughs> sorry forward conductor this is return conductor okay now see uh, the distance uh, d is the distance between both the conductors d is the distance between both the conductors let's write this formula once again we get more clarity okay yes let's write that formula once again to get more clarity now l per phase is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 keep it aside ln of uh, 1 by r dash plus minus of ln 1 by d why i wrote like this yes soon you are going to understand now if you observe carefully this particular inductance is called as l self self inductance why because uh, that part of inductance is going to depend on only on the radius of the conductor it is nothing to do so this part of the inductance value is nothing to do with uh, the distance between the conductor. Now, this part of inductance is called as L mutual. If you observe, if you observe, this part of the inductance uh, is going to depend on the distance between the conductors. If the distance D is increasing, yes, let me analyze here. This, this is the actual uh, analyzation. Here, actual analyzation starts. If the distance between two conductors is going to increase now if d is increasing 1 by d will decrease and this ln of 1 by d is going to decrease negative part is decreasing suppose if i take this one as x this one as y plus minus y if y magnitude is decreasing x minus y will increase x minus y will increase means what is happening if the distance is increasing inductance is increasing yes if the distance is increasing ln of 1 by d will decrease negative part is decreasing magnitude wise therefore x minus y suppose uh, this is 10 this is 2 now this became 1 10 minus 2 is 8 previously 10 minus 1 is 9 the overall value is increasing so the point very important point that anyone has to understand here is that if the distance between the conductors increases if the distance between the conductors increases then overall inductance is going to increase overall inductance is going to increase yeah why it is so if the distance is increasing see if you observe carefully mutual inductance is negative mutual inductance is negative then this question was asked in the interview yeah this was asked in bark interview is there any possibility for mutual inductance to be more than self inductance never why because the distance d between two conductors is always more than the radius of the conductor yeah if you are keeping one conductor upon another without any distance now what is the minimum distance we are going to get between these two conductors that is 2r that is the 
yeah this is r and this is r this is 2r nothing but diameter of one conductor if you are taking both identical conductors so the minimum distance minimum distance between two conductors minimum possible distance is 2r so this d is always more than the distance between two conductors is always more than radius of the conductor if the d is more then this part is always less when compared to this part means l mutual is always less when compared to l self if l mutual is more is it possible practically not possible if l mutual is more than l self then inductance is going to be negative instead of drop it is going to rise the voltage which will never happen practically so that's why inductance is always positive suppose you are doing one problem you got the value of inductance as negative then you have to think that your procedure is wrong or the question given by him is wrong but never be inductance is negative r l c are always positive quantities positive quantities okay so here observe here so never this distance is less than radius therefore this l mutual is always less than l self but if the distance between the conductors is increasing l mutual is going to decrease l self uh, is going to depend upon only on the radius okay uh, see once you fix the conductor size uh, area of cross section then l then l self is fixed if you want to further reduce its inductance then you have to play with this distance if i decrease the distance 1 by d will increase ln of 1 by d will increase and this negative part is increasing therefore total inductance is going to decrease you know what are the advantages if inductance decreases uh, voltage drop in the transmission line is going to decrease and uh, voltage profile at the receiving end is going to be improved yeah and uh, power transfer capacity will increase what is the uh, power transfer equation of uh, transmission lines uh, p is equal to mod vs mod vr approximate power transfer equation by x into sine delta okay megawatts it is so that is going to depend upon the magnitude of voltage also if voltage drop is less then more amount of electric real power will be transferred from sending end to receiving end voltage profile is very important in power system okay yeah come here so the point here is uh, if the distance between the conductors is decreasing uh, then uh, inductance will decrease if the distance between the conductors is increasing uh, inductance will increase why because l mutual is going to decrease so that's why it is very important to put the two phases or two conductors very nearby but in overhead transmission one culprit is going to enter here that is corona if the distance is decreasing yeah we are decreasing the distance between two conductors such that we are going to get less inductance and the voltage drop is going to be very less in the transmission line but if the distance is decreased electric field intensity is equal to v by d if distance is decreasing electric field intensity is going to increase due to which again corona loss is going to happen in low voltage transmission for high voltage transmission it is not possible okay in low voltage transmission all three phases phase a phase b phase c or phase r y b by keeping insulation on these uh, phases we twist all these three and we are going to transmit you can find in your cities nearby small uh, i can say low voltage transmission not for high voltage transmission okay for 33 kv we can do this for 33 kv <coughs> sorry corona is not significance corona is not going to have significance okay it's very 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 less in fact that can be neglected therefore uh, see uh, all three phases phase a phase b phase c take all three phases keep insulation on these how much insulation we have to keep uh, with respect to line voltage line with respect to line voltage that to maximum value we have to keep why because phase a and phase b i'm connecting together then how much is voltage how much voltage that is going to appear between this phase a and phase b between two phases the voltage that is going to appear is line voltage i have to design that insulation between these two conductors transmission lines or phases as a line peak value line to line value that to peak value not rms value now take that insulation and keep it twist all these three phases why we have to twist uh, to maintain good mechanical strength if you are leaving uh, all three phases independently some distance will be there or whenever wind comes there is a possibility for those wires to oscillate so to avoid that we take all three phases we twist and we are going to connect that one to the transmission tower okay with that what is the advantage we are going to get is uh, 
distance is decreasing if distance is decreasing uh, then inductance is going to decrease distance is decreasing inductance is going to decrease and capacitance will increase yeah what is the formula for capacitance the formula for capacitance is c is equal to 2 pi i'm writing per phase c per phase is equal to 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r by ln of d by r farad per meter do remember one thing yeah this question also can be asked in the interview in in the inductance calculation we are taking r dash 0.7788 times of radius but in the capacitance calculation we are taking only r why because the charge inside of a conductor the electric charge inside of a conductor is exactly equal to zero that's why the effective radius of the conductor is the total radius when you are going with the electric field okay when electric field means uh, electric field we are going to take up while finding the capacitance by finding inductance what what will we have to take up magnetic field okay so there the effective radius of the conductor is 0 0.7788 times of r whereas uh, in this capacitance calculation it is going to be directly r by because the charge inside of a conductor the electric charge in, inside of a conductor is equal to exactly zero and this is the formula now observe here if the distance between two conductors uh, is uh, decreasing yes now what happens this particular part will decrease then overall capacitance will increase okay let me write that as node point let me write that as node point okay yeah let me write the l per phase formula also l per phase is equal to again i am writing again 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of d by r henry per meter henry per meter now if uh, this distance is decreasing inductance per phase will decrease now see many points we are going to conclude here many points we are going to conclude here if uh, if distance uh, between the conductors is decreasing i am not writing completely if d decreases d is the distance between the conductors not the diameter of the conductor okay many students will get confused in the examination and interview okay d is the distance between the conductors then what happens l per phase uh, decreases that implies uh, x uh, decreases that implies yes uh, ql decreases what is that ql the reactive power drawn by the transmission line yeah transmission line is going to have inductance inductance will absorb lagging reactive power or lagging watts capacitor will absorb leading watts in the same way inductor will supply leading watts capacitor will supply lagging watts okay please do not get confused later we are at the time of voltage control interview questions i'm going to discuss about that topic very clearly okay yeah now if distance is decreasing l per phase decreases uh, x decreases qc ql not sorry not not c okay ql means uh, the reactive power absorbed by the transmission line what is l then inductive reactive power it is lagging reactive power okay yeah and uh, <coughs> c per phase increases that implies xc yeah we need not to talk about xc okay we need not talk about xc and i can say i see the charging current uh, per phase is going to increase charging current increases not only that qc will yes uh, what is qc yes qc and see the reactive power drawn by the capacitor see if capacitor which watts will draw capacitor will draw leading watts that can be said as what capacitor is going to supply lagging watts see vice versa it is ql is lagging reactive power inductor will absorb lagging reactive power that can be said in this way also inductor can supply leading reactive power capacitor will absorb leading reactive power that can be said as capacitor is going to supply lagging reactive power so qc increases qc increases what is qc v square by xc what is xc 1 by 2 pi fc 
So QC is equal to V square into 2 pi FC. Am I writing very clearly? What is voltage? This V is line voltage or phase voltage. This is uh, we have to mention. We have to mention. Okay. So uh, if if we are taking per phase capacitance, this should be phase voltage. So there are many calculations. Those are very simple calculations. This is C per phase per kilometer. If you want a QC per kilometer, if you want total Q of the total length of the transmission line this c must be c per phase that's all not per kilometer so qc is directly proportional to c if c is increasing qc will increase qc will increase see if a reactive power drawn is going to decrease and reactive power supply is going to increase that implies overall reactive power behavior overall overall reactive power behavior of transmission line will be improved overall reactive power behavior of transmission line will increase will increase what does it mean by behavior increased the net reactive power that is drawn by the generator will decrease that is that is the net reactive power drawn by the transmission line by the transmission line will decrease and power factor of the transmission line increases of the transmission line will increase of the transmission line yes will increase yes so this is the reason why we are sending all three phases uh, by keeping insulation between those three phases and we are twisting together and transmitting okay it's a very good question in fact for any interview okay let's go to the next question mark read the question carefully for finding self gmd of a all aluminum conductor as stands for all aluminum you all know it very well ac conductor how many distances we have to calculate it's a very good question okay so this question is asked a number of times in an examination also if you go for nptel questions or drdo examination isro examination or if you go for a state level uh, interviews or psc interviews very simply if, if they want to ask some questions and transmission lines from power system this type of questions can be asked so he is asking for finding self a gmd of a two layer yeah let's men mention the number of layers also let's mention the number of layers also yeah of a two layer two layer means many concepts will cover here two layer means so how many conductors it is going to have or how many strands it is going to have how many strands seven strands the first strand is the first layer is always one strand after that six after that 12 the increment from one layer to another layer from second layer onwards second layer onwards will be by six why by only six that will make the conductor to be circular in shape if you are going for any other number of strands any other increment of number of strands from one layer to another layer the resultant conductor is not going to be circular if the resultant conductor is not going to be circular then what is the problem for you sir if the resultant conductor is not circular in shape there will be sharp points which are going to form means uh, this is the conductor and this is also one conductor why can't we make conductors in, in the form of square or rectangle why because uh, here yeah this is also one of the good question ma. i tell you like uh, many cross questions will be asked okay when you are answering something why this is why not that why that is why not this like that many such type of questions can be asked so the here four sharp points four sharp edges are formed okay here there is no sharp edge total conductor is smooth if the conductor is circle circular in shape <coughs> sorry then no sharp point will be formed but uh, any other shape uh, then sharp points will be formed what what is the disadvantage with the sharp points is uh, at sharp points the electric field intensity is very high when compared to the other points and even less than the uh, rated voltage I, I should not say rated, rated voltage generally 21.1 kV per centimeter is the voltage uh, RMS value required to get uh, air ionization okay to get air, air ionization but uh, at uh, this sharp points less than that voltage also can cause uh, electric field intensity uh, to increase and ionization is going to take place due to which corona is going to happen okay so that's why always we want our conductor to be circular so if you want your conductor to be circular the number of uh, strands in a stranded conductor you have to choose in such a way that 
from one layer to another layer except the first layer from second layer onwards the increment in number of strands should be by six okay so it is like a one plus six plus twelve plus eighteen plus twenty four twenty four plus thirty plus thirty six plus and so on okay so this uh, this relationship it has to satisfy so this is very simple thing you all know very well okay now the question here is he is saying that all aluminum conductor means all conductors are made up of aluminum yeah let's take uh, ac conductor this layer 1 layer 2 yes 1 2 3 4 4 5 6 total 6 conductors let me Number those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Total seven conductors are there. Okay, all are good conductors. Yeah. <coughs> what are the good conductors? Silver is the best conductor. After that, copper, gold, and after that, aluminium. This is this is the list of list of good conductors. Okay. Anyhow, silver and gold cannot be used. You know the reason why? Too much cost. Copper and aluminium. We already saw the reason why we are going for aluminium when compared to copper. Now observe here, ma. Yeah. See, every conductor is going to have its own distance. Yes. Conductor one. For for conductor one, how many distances we have to calculate? Yeah. So self GMD of conductor one or strand one. Strand one is equal to its own distance will be R dash. Why? Because I am finding for inductance calculation R dash. With the two, how much it is? Two R. With the three, two R. With the four, conductor four, two R. With the conductor five, two R. With the conductor six, two R. With the conductor seven, two R. So its own distance one, one to two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Conductor one is having total seven distance to calculate. In the same way, conductor two is going to have how many distance? Its own distance. First one, two to one, two to three, two to four, two to five, two to six, two to seven. Total seven distances. So what is what should be the root? What should be the root here? What should be the root here? Seventh root of seventh root of why? Because we are taking seven distances. So each conductor is going to have seven distances to calculate. Therefore, how many strands we have here? Seven strands. E for each strand, we have to calculate seven distances. How many total strands are there here? Seven strands. Total number of distances to calculate are seven into seven. How many? Forty-nine. Yes. Let me write here. Yes. Yeah. For each conductor. Yes. For each conductor, seven distances. Seven distances we have to calculate. Seven distances we have to calculate. Therefore, total number of distances, total number of distances are how many? Seven into seven is equal to forty-nine. Seven distance and seven strands. See. For each conductor, not conductor, for each strand. In fact, let let me write here it as strand. For each strand, seven distances we have to calculate. Total number of strands are seven. Seven into seven are forty-nine. Let me go for the next question. Yeah, read this question, ma. For finding the self GMD of a two-layer ACSR conductor, ACSR standard conductor. In fact, how many distances we have to calculate? This is the intelligent way of asking question. Okay, you may be thinking, sir, previous one and this one, what is the difference? Yes, there is a difference. Previous one is AAC conductor. Now this is ACSR conductor, aluminium conductor, steel reinforced. Is this? Yes. Now, the central one is steel. Yes, and the outer layer will be yes, aluminium only. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Let me draw it in my six. Yeah, total are seven. Now, this central conductor, which is made up of steel, is not going to carry significant amount of current. Why we replace the central conductor with steel to increase the mechanical strength? To increase the mechanical strength. That we all know. That is very simple concept. Why we are going for a stranded conductor instead of solid conductor? There are two main reasons. In that. Uh, the very main reason is transportation problem if it is a solid conductor 
you can't make in the form of spirals you can't transport it at all first forget about skin effect skin effect power loss and everything okay i'm in a position to bear the skin effect power loss but the main problem here is uh, if it is a solid conductor can you make in the form of spirals to transport from the factory to the uh, erect, uh, erection location suppose transmission lines we are going to erect at somewhere uh, somewhere outskirts of delhi and uh, this transmission line solid conductor is uh, made at haryana okay from haryana to delhi we have to transport it see one kilometer length of transmission line if it is a standard conductor i can make in the form of a circular spirals okay if it is a solid conductor solid conductor means it is a rod if you try to make a spiral of a rod that bend will be a permanent bend okay that is the main reason so second reason is skin effect okay most of the current is going to concentrate only on the surface of the conductor so there is no need of uh, taking aluminum in the center right? because most of the current is going to concentrate only on the surface okay and if we are making strands instead of solid conductors skin effect will decrease and resistance due to skin effect will decrease and power loss and voltage drop due to skin effect is going to decrease we all know but though after making strands the central strand is not going to carry significant amount of current as it is a all aluminum conductor of standard mechanical strength is decreased solid is going to have good mechanical strength when compared to standard so what scientists told is anyhow the central strand is not going to carry significant amount of current i am not saying the central strand is going to carry zero current it will carry some amount of current but it is not uh, that much uh, significant that's why replace the central strand with the uh, steel instead of aluminum to increase mechanical strength steel is not a good conductor it is a good magnetic material but it is not a good conductor therefore approximately the central strand that is steel is going to carry how much current zero therefore its distance is need not to be considered not required okay so here uh, let me number the conductors this is one steel conductor See, steel is not a conductor first of all steel strand simply called as steel strand 2 3 4 5 6 7 now i have to start from second conductor only yeah so self gmd of self gmd of let me write here clearly self gmd of conductor 2 is equal to its own distance 2 to 3 2 to 4 2 to 3 2 to 4 we have to calculate it's not 2r it's not 2r i think previously also i wrote wrong yeah i can say yeah previously it is correct from central strand yeah so here we have to calculate by using mathematics you can find it very easily yeah i'll write like this self distance is r dash and d 2 3 d 2 4 d 2 5 yes d 2 6 d 2 7 that's all its own distance 2 to 3 2 to 4 2 to 5 2 to 6 2 to 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 only six distances therefore which route we have to take up which route we have to take up that is equal to sixth route of sixth route of i have to take up okay such how many strands i have six strands therefore total number of distances are yes yes total number of distances are total number of distances is equal to 6 into 6 that is equal to 36 that is equal to 36 is the answer yes let me go for the next question ma draw the electrical equivalent circuit of a transmission line and explain yes this is one of the subjective question okay it will take see uh, when we are going to explain this question lot of questions can be asked let's start let's start okay first i'll take first i'll take transmission line general transmission i'll be taking two towers and i'm going to represent a transmission line between those two towers okay from there i'm going to develop electrical equivalent circuit with a complete explanation okay so let me draw let me draw yes all of you observe carefully ma observe carefully so this is part of tower okay half part of the tower this is remaining half part yes 
tower is kept on ground yeah and uh, another tower i am taking practically for every 1 kilometer there will be one tower for every 1 kilometer there will be one tower yes practically this is zero volts this is zero volts yes so let me draw it again let me draw it again yes We are going to keep tower on ground yes this is zero volts you know this will be the cross arm these are overhead line insulators i am taking only two just for the sake of explanation that's all okay this is also one of the cross arm only two insulators i'm taking just for the purpose of simplicity that's all yeah now between these two there will be a transmission line like this yes let me yeah yes observe here i'm going to take up the conductor here this is the transmission line yes this is the transmission line okay yeah now what is the voltage here the voltage here is uh, the voltage here is uh, zero volts here what is the voltage zero volts this is zero this is a zero yes and there is one wire that is running on the top of the transmission line throughout the transmission that is called as guard wire okay or shield wire or earth wire okay see the thickness or area of cross section of that wire is very small when compared to transmission line because uh, it need not to carry current always it need not to carry current continuously whenever lightning occurs see first of all what is the purpose of this uh, guard wire let me name it let me name that okay so this particular wire is called as a guard wire guard wire or earth wire okay or shield wire or shield wire what is the purpose of that wire to protect our transmission line from lightnings you know what is lightning lightning always attacks the topmost conducting body see in our entire power system network what is topmost conducting body transmission line see you may be thinking sir tower is uh, in more height when compared to transmission line here at the tower suppose if uh, if lightning is occurring at the tower yeah tower is the highest body it will enter into tower so assume that there is no guard wire but uh, between these two how much distance is there one kilometer is there suppose say in between somewhere here if the lightning is occurring then that lightning will travel either this direction or this direction or some part in this direction some part in, other, in this direction and there is a possibility for these insulators to damage and uh, whenever the insulation damage takes place this transmission line is directly connected to tower directly connected to tower then uh, tower is connected to ground this is a phase and that is a uh, connected to ground which fault will occur lg fault line to ground fault is going to occur that's why if there is a guard wire lightning stroke always attacks only the topmost conducting body topmost conducting body that is lightning now that lightning will travel yes it will come to tower the resistance of tower is uh, almost a 75 to 100 ohms 90 ohms typically that lightning will enter into the ground so this resistance will be in terms of uh, this uh, resistance is in terms of uh, mega ohms this is in terms of mega ohms okay whereas this resistance will be in terms uh, from 75 to practically 75 to 90 ohm it is 75 to 90 ohms always we know that always current to a short conducting path so lightning comes yes lightning attacks the topmost conducting body which one is the topmost conducting body this guard wire okay now travels to the tower a tower it is finding two paths one is through these insulators another is through the tower which is having a very 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 less resistance when compared to other is tower therefore through tower that lightning will enter into the ground so our transmission system is safe our transmission system is safe okay so here many questions are possible why see uh, they may ask uh, tower is the highest conducting body you know yeah at the tower it is tower but uh, between tower to tower there is one kilometer gap for example practically 
then in between tower to tower if lightning is occurring then the topmost conducting body is transmission line yes this is transmission line and it is also called as power conductor transmission line we also call it as power conductor okay now it uh, lightning never enters into the transmission line why because there is a shield wire or guard wire or earth wire okay now the current will go to uh, the lightning current will go to ground yeah now let me develop its electrical equivalent uh, circuit i am developing the electrical equivalent circuit of a transmission line now one important point i want to discuss here that is yeah we connected we connected see uh, here some load current is flowing i or some current i is flowing but some amount of leakage current will flow from conductor to ground via this insulation why because what is this insulation resistance in terms of mega ohms how much voltage that is going to appear how much voltage that is going to appear here yes how much voltage that is going to appear here across uh, this overhead line insulators that voltage is going to be v phase now can you calculate i leakage i leakage is equal to v per phase by that mega ohms of resistance is going to give micro amperes of current or at most milliamperes of current we have to show that one also in our electrical equivalent circuit let us develop the electrical equivalent uh, circuit yes see every transmission line is made up of uh, some conducting material every conducting material is going to have some resistivity and uh, we are taking some length and cross section area therefore we are going to get some resistance in fact uh, that resistance is going to concentrate at some place and it is uniformly distributed throughout the length of the transmission line the resistance of a conductor see not only transmission line if you take any conducting material material take a one meter copper wire take one meter copper wire the resistance of the copper wire is uh, located where is it located at the first end or it is located at the second end or it is located at the middle no the resistance of the copper wire is uh, uniformly distributed throughout the length of the uh, copper that wire okay the resistance of that copper wire is uniformly distributed throughout the length in the same way here also but for our convenience purpose what is our convenience see if uh, we are taking lumped elements we can go with the network analysis techniques like kvl kcl thevenins and all okay if we are not taking lumped elements uh, uh, if we are taking distributed elements we have to go with the electromagnetic field theory okay it's very difficult that's why we are taking all lumped elements the resistance of the transmission line yes my transmission line is going to have some resistance okay i'm drawing a per kilometer per kilometer this is the resistance uh, per kilometer resistance in ohm per kilometer yes let me write it completely resistance in ohm per kilometer or total resistance let me take total resistance every transmission line is going to have some resistance i'm taking that one in the lump of form okay now if you look at this is phase a of the transmission line this is phase b phase b of the transmission line this is phase c of the transmission line this is going to carry a current of y a this is going to carry a current of ib and this is going to carry a current of ic all three currents are alternating currents when there is a current a flux phi a there is a flux of phi b there is a flux of phi c okay the flux in conductor a or phase a is going to cut with itself which is going to give l self of a okay and uh, this phase a flux links with phase b phase a flux links with phase c in the same way phase b also will link with the uh, phase c phase a so i am going to get l m b mutual inductance in phase a because of b okay yes now l m c mutual inductance in phase a because of c so every phase conductor is going to have one self and two mutuals that overall will be we are going to have one l a this overall will be inductance of phase a overall means please don't add all three so that is the reason why we are finding gmd and gmr those concepts l a is equal to yes we, we are going to see that also we are going to see that also okay what is the purpose of uh, purpose of gmd and uh, gmr fine yeah i am going to have see this is the effective inductance of phase a 
we are going to disconnect in electrical equivalent circuit so in fact physically we can't disconnect inductance of phase a is going to depend upon a b and c all three phases but in electrical equivalent circuit we are going to draw per phase electrical equivalent circuit why we are going to draw per phase equivalent circuit if a system is balanced if i am drawing per phase equivalent circuit for one phase i will do the analysis for remaining two phases the results will be almost same except some angular difference that's all okay yeah so earlier we are going to get so every conductor is going to have inductance i'm going to write that one as la if inductance is there we are going to get reactance xa where x is equal to 2 pi fl okay now xa it is going to have xa it is going to have in the same way yes or let's not write it as x let's write it as la only let's write it as la only okay now in the same way this is one conductor this is another conductor two conducting bodies are separated by some dielectric air is a dielectric and then if there is a potential difference between those two conductors then definitely capacitance will form there is a capacitance that is formed between phase to phase phase to phase and a phase to phase this is called as line to line capacitance another capacitance is line to ground capacitance which is very less uh, line to ground means uh, phase a to ground yes phase uh, b to ground yes and phase uh, c to ground phase a to ground b to ground and uh, c to ground so see if you take up c capacitance between a and b is greater than c a g uh, because c is equal to what ma epsilon a by d the distance between one phase to another phase is less when compared to the distance from conductor to ground conductor to ground it is uh, hundreds of meters but uh, between conductor to conductor it is uh, tens of meters or some three meters or two meters like that okay so see the line to line capacitance is more when compared to line to ground capacitance generally line to ground capacitance are neglected in power systems so if you come here i'm drawing its electrical equivalent circuit yes i'm going to draw its electrical equivalent circuit observe all of you here yeah so this is resistance resistance is the property of the conducting material this inductance we got because of self and uh, mutual so this is in henry's i have to mention here this is in henry's now i have to put capacitance then the problem rises here where we have to put the capacitance if if i am keeping the capacitance here all the total capacitance i am keeping at the sending receiving end side sorry receiving end side if we are keeping the entire capacitance at the receiving end side the ferrante effect is overestimated yes what is ferrante effect under no load or light load condition the receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending end voltage and it is significant in medium and long transmission lines neglected in short transmission lines why the receiving end voltage under no load or light load is more when compared to sending end voltage during no load condition the only current that is flowing in the transmission line is charging current that charging current is uh, is going to cause the voltage rise the reactive power drawn by the capacitance is uh, leading reactive power it means it is going to supply reactive power as a uh, uh, more lagging reactive power is there uh, in the transmission system the lagging reactive power the capacitor the center capacitance of the transmission line are going to supply which can make uh, the voltage to increase so it is overestimated if i am keeping the total capacitance at the receiving end side because total charging current is flowing throughout the transmission line which is not the case practically speaking in this way transmission line will be practically speaking in this way transmission line will be yes resistance inductance resistance inductance resistance inductance resistance inductance like that there is a capacitance there is a capacitance see the capacitance is also uniformly distributed throughout the length this is also not correct this is also partially correct for every uh, one section of line i am taking again lampada for every 1 km i am taking the resistance inductance and capacitance that is also approximation see uh, for every 1 km resistance is uh, placed at somewhere no for that km also resistance is uniformly distributed but uh, this approximation is uh, near to the practical uh, i can say analysis if you see the capacitance is uniformly distributed the charging current suppose if it is a uh, 6 amperes here here 2 amperes here 4 amperes here 2 amperes here 2 amperes here it is 2 amperes right so the charging current is uh, progressively decreasing from sending end to receiving end but if i am keeping the total capacitance at the receiving end side yes uh, 
total charging current is flowing throughout the transmission line which is a misleading case that's why we should not keep uh, yes we should not keep uh, entire capacitance at the receiving end side sir if i keep at the sending end side yes no charging current at all flowing in the transmission line ferranti effect is not at all considered it is underestimated in fact not underestimated first of all there is no ferrant effect in this one what is ferrant effect under no load or light load condition charging current is flowing through the transmission line due to which the receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending end voltage is the ferrant effect is it happening here no the total charging current is flowing only at the sending end side nothing is flowing in the transmission line so the point here is in two ways we can represent the transmission line by keeping half of the capacitance at the sending end side remaining half at the receiving end side this is one way and this model is called as pi model this model is called as pi model okay or yes we are dividing the transmission line into two parts and we are going to keep uh, the entire capacitance at the center yes center of the transmission line this is r by 2 this is l by 2 this is r by 2 and this is l by 2 this is c and here it is a uh, c by 2 here it is a uh, c by 2 this is pi model yes and this is a uh, t model and this is t model yeah so for a practical purpose for practical purpose uh, which model is preferred among t and pi total four models we have sending and capacitor model receiving and capacitor model uh, t model and pi model sending and capacitor model first of all the circuit is not symmetric all trans practical transmission lines are symmetric and reciprocal okay what is the condition to satisfy symmetry a equal to d what is the condition to satisfy reciprocity ad minus b is equal to 1 sending and capacitor model or receiving and capacitor models are not symmetric that is one thing second thing is in sending and capacitor model ferrant effect is underestimated in receiving and capacitor model ferrant effect is overestimated okay and uh, now if we come uh, for these two models pi and t models uh, here ferrant effect uh, is uh, considered uh, in a careful manner okay that ferrant effect is going to match with the practical things what that is going to happen okay so we are not done there is one more element to consider we will see we will see that element also yeah yeah we, we are going to see that element also that is one of the very important element yeah now observe here carefully in these two practically which model is preferred nominal pi model why because you know this is one of the very important interview question yeah this is preferred practically because how many nodes it is going to have this is one this is two for example this is a reference node two nodes how many nodes it is having one two and three three nodes it is having now if the number of nodes are three the number of equations are y versus matrix size is going to be three by three three by three means how many elements are going to get in the y versus matrix nine elements in the y versus matrix here i am going to get a uh, it is 2 by 2 means 4 elements 5 elements are more here when compared to this one more uh, memory required to store uh, vibus values uh, uh, when we are going with uh, load flow studies see all load flow studies these days are conducting with uh, computers uh, to store practically there are thousands of buses here only bus means node okay here only 3 here 2 but if i am going with the uh, uh, t model for every one section i am going to get one node extra here two nodes here three nodes therefore the computer capacity or memory required to store the data of fibers matrix is less here when compared to this one therefore practically pi model is preferred when compared to t model one important thing that we forgot while developing our uh, transmission line uh, electrical equivalent circuit is the leakage current yeah every transmission line is going to have drop voltage drop because of resistance we represented it it is going to have self inductance that inductance is also going to cause causing voltage drop that voltage drop we are going to we represent it with respect to reactance and uh, uh, there is a capacitance that is formed uh, we represent with help of uh, these capacitors but there is a shunt conductance forget about shunt conductance i will tell you one thing here yeah sorry just uh, let's go up observe here carefully observe here some current is flowing from some current is flowing from conducted to the ground via this uh, overhead line insulation and tower that current we called as leakage and we said that it is in terms of micro amperes or milli amperes so conduct current is flowing from conducted to ground means i have to take uh, one conductance from i have to take one conductance from conductor to ground that also we are representing half here and half here yes this is a uh, 
shunt conductance G. This is shunt conductance G. This will be micromos because this G is reciprocal of insulation resistance. People will uh, misunderstand. People will misunderstand where people will misunderstand. I'll 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 show you here. I'll show you here where people will misunderstand. Okay? Yeah. Observe here. So this is G. So this is G in micromos. I'll tell you. G is one by R insulation. Many people will misunderstand this G as reciprocal of this R. No. This is a series resistance of the transmission line. See, unit wise G and R are reciprocals, but this resistance reciprocal will be its conductance. But the conductance, what we are taking here is the conductance which is causing the flow of current from conductor to ground in the form of leakage current because of that insulation resistance. Okay, we have to take insulation resistance reciprocal. Yes, insulation resistance reciprocal. Observe here carefully. Yeah, insulation resistance reciprocal. This is in terms of mega ohms. Sorry, I forgot to write M here. This is in terms of mega ohms. Therefore, that G is in terms of micro MOS or micro Siemens. Okay, so this is a electrical equivalent circuit of a transmission line. So after this, we have to go for the next, next question. question. Yeah, read the question carefully. If length of transmission line increases, what happens to R? L, C, G and reactive power charging current IC of the transmission line. See, this is uh, one of the common question if you go for any interview, very simply. So, this analysis is very simple. Let us carry out the analysis more. So, we have the formula for resistance. Yes, resistance is equal to rho L by A. If length increases automatically, length of transmission increases automatically, resistance is going to increase. We know that. That is straightforward answer. Take L per phase. That is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into Ln of D by R dash. Yes. Henry per meter. Henry per meter. So, this is per meter inductance. If length is increasing, then definitely inductance is going to increase. So, let me write about capacitance also. That is 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r by capacitance per phase. Ln of uh, d by r. This is farad per meter. As the length of transmission line increases, yes, capacitance also will increase. Why? Because for 1 meter, if it is a 0.1 farad, okay, for 2 meters, how much it will be? 0.2 farad, obviously. Yes. And uh, let me talk about G, conductance G. Yeah. Here student will get confused. What is G? We understood in the previous uh, discussion that G is the shunt conductance uh, that is due to the conductance that is offered by overhead uh, in line insulation. As length of the transmission line increases, uh, overhead line insulation number of uh, sections will increase. So leakage current will increase. Suppose, I will tell you like this, I will tell you like this, observe here all of you, observe here man, yes. Now I have one tower, one cross arm, one string of insulators and this is a leakage current, high leakage. I have one more tower, suppose if this high leakage is equal to 1 ampere for example, I have one more tower, I have one more tower where, uh, yes, again the leakage current is going to be I leakage is going to be 1 ampere. So like that, how many number of towers increases that much leakage current is going to increase. When number of towers will increase, whenever length of transmission increases. So that is very simple analysis. So G also increases. Conductance is also increases. Yeah, G increases. Capacitance increases. Okay. Or let me write in this way instead of uh, writing here. Yeah. This is a capacitance uh, per meter, capacitance in farads per meter, that is inductance in Henry's per meter, and uh, G, yes, G. Yeah. Let me write here. If, uh, if length of transmission line increases, then 
L comma R comma C comma G will increase. All these are going to increase. Now, what ask? Yeah, few more things are asked. That is reactive power, charging current of the transmission line. Yes. See, analysis of reactive power and charging current is very important. Now, what is QC? QL, inductive reactive power of transmission line. That is uh, I square into XL. I square into XL. Why we have to write it as I square into XL? Why not V square by XL? Why? Because the inductive reactance is a series element, whereas the capacitive reactance or capacitance is a shunt element. For all shunt elements, we are going to give power formula in terms of uh, voltage. For all series elements, we are going to give power formula in terms of current. Okay? Yes. Observe here. And QC is equal to V square by X. Let me write here. I square into what is XL? Omega L. That is 2 pi F. This is L per kilometer into length of the transmission line. Now, if, if length of the transmission line increases, obviously QL is going to increase. Now, let me write here. What is uh, this V square by XSC? That is V square into 1 by XSC will be omega C. XSC will be 1 by omega C. Therefore, uh, 1 by xc will be into omega c. Omega means uh, 2 pi f, 2 pi f that is c per kilometer into length of the transmission line. If length of the transmission line increases, if length of the transmission line increases, qc is also going to increase. If length of the transmission line increases, the reactive power absorbed by the transmission line increases as well as the reactive power supplied by the transmission line increases. By default, reactive power means a lagging reactive power. Why? Because most of the loads practically are lagging loads. See, if it is a leading reactive power, we will mention or the examiner or the interviewer will definitely mention it as a leading reactive power. Otherwise, see, unless it is specified, always the given reactive power is lagging reactive power. We have to consider that way. We have to go for the next question. Yeah, read the question carefully. If frequency changes, yes, uh, this is also one of the important discussion in interviews if frequency changes there are a lot of discussions we will discuss again the same uh, during uh, stability analysis and fault analysis okay uh, and in, in many places what are the effects of change in frequency generally power system won't accept change in frequency right? because uh, all generators and loads are uh, connected together to a common point called as grid okay all the generators and loads are connected to a common point called as grid so the the frequency of every load and every source or generator must be equal otherwise uh, parallel operation is not possible otherwise parallel operation is not possible circulating currents will flow uh, from a machine to machine or in a machine due to which there is a possibility for the machine to damage there are lots of disadvantages we'll discuss uh, but uh, with respect to transmission line like uh, transmission line uh, inductive reactance capacitive reactance charging current uh, what happens if frequency changes that thing we are going to discuss here yeah if frequency changes see what is the first thing we have is resistance r is equal to rho l by a so if you look at this resistance i can say uh, this resistance will not change and it is not a, a dependent of a frequency but if you look at skin effect we all know that skin effect skin effect is directly proportional to under root of frequency if frequency increases yes if frequency increases obviously skin effect will increase due to skin effect what is the main disadvantage resistance of the conductor will increase why resistance will increase yeah see this is uh, in brief way this is a skin effect yes if you take a conductor solid conductor yes solid conductor see uh, this is having infinite number of parallel filaments or infinite number of uh, annular filaments okay all those are carrying a current uh, suppose then the central part of the conductor is going to have more flux linkages this is the central part because of which because of which an emf will be induced in the central part that will opposes the flow of current that's why most of the current will concentrate only on the surface of the conductor surface of the conductor this effect is called as skin effect so this is the total cross section area a but uh, because of this skin effect only in this area only current is flowing therefore uh, i have to take effective cross section area excluding this uh, central part then cross section area decreases yes 
cross section area decreases let me write see due to skin effect yeah due to skin effect see i'll write here if uh, if if frequency increases that implies area of cross section decreases physical area remains same my point is about effective cross section area decreases that implies yes resistance increases that implies a uh, voltage drop voltage drop voltage drop and power loss and power loss power loss increases voltage drop and power loss is going to increase okay yeah so these are the points uh, with respect to skin effect and resistance if frequency increases skin effect increases resistance increases one should not say that uh, uh, I, one should not say that uh, uh, if uh, frequency increases resistance remains same resistance uh, effective resistance increases you should, see you have to say like this you should not say directly resistance will increase effective resistance increases due to skin effect okay this is about resistance then let's talk about inductance capacitance inductive reactance capacitor reactance and all okay yeah what is uh, inductance what is inductance l per phase is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of gmd by self gmd gmd by self gmd henry per meter so this is independent of frequency nothing to do with the frequency okay inductance remains same but inductive reactance xl is equal to 2 pi fl yes if a frequency changes inductive reactance will change if frequency increases inductive reactance will increase due to which due to which see what is voltage drop voltage drop in a transmission line voltage drop is equal to i into x i into x per phase voltage drop i am taking okay yeah always we have to take voltage drop per phase only it's not line to line drop there is there is no such kind of quantity only voltage we have we are going to take uh, between two lines that is called as a line to line voltage line to line voltage yes now if you look at it yes so if uh, if frequency increases if frequency increases if our frequency changes x changes voltage drop is going to change voltage drop going to is going to change so and uh, some students will think sir if uh, a reactance changes current will change this current depends on load this current depends on load okay this is a load current see uh, this uh, is transmission line series inductive reactance is nothing to do with the flow of current see uh, I, I, I'm once again I'm uh, uh, stressing at that point that this is I load in fact I, I'll mention it as load current I'll mention it as load current okay so reactants uh, inductive reactants will increase now let's talk about reactive power also reactive power ql what is ql this is a reactive power in fact lagging reactive power observed by the inductive reactants of the transmission line what is the formula i told you i square x we have to write not uh, uh, v square by x for series elements uh, i square is for for the shent elements v square by x okay so i square into yes uh, x is what 2 pi f l if frequency changes definitely this uh, reactive power absorbed by the transmission line will change so if uh, f is increasing the reactive power absorbed by the transmission line will increase now let's uh, talk about uh, let's talk about uh, capacitor reactance and all capacitor reactance also yes what is uh, uh, Xsima Xc is equal to 1 by omega c that is 2 pi fc fc if f changes yes x is going to change if uh, f is increasing if uh, frequency increases if uh, f uh, increases that implies uh, xc decreases xc decreases then what is qc qc is equal to v square into 2 pi fc in fact uh, c is nothing to do with the capacity uh, the c frequency is nothing to do with the capacitance what is that 2 pi epsilon naught 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r by ln of gmd by yes self gmd gmd by self gmd this is fired per meter so frequency is nothing to do with the capacitance if our frequency may increase or decrease capacitance will remain same yes now if you observe carefully here uh, if uh, frequency changes qc will change if frequency is increasing qc also will increase yes sir 
v square by x c x is equal to again 1 by 2 pi fc so if frequency increases uh, qc will increase means uh, if the frequency operating frequency of the transmission line increases uh, then the reactive power supplied by the transmission line also will increase okay this is about uh, when frequency changes this is about when frequency changes now let's talk about the charging current let's talk about the charging current ma let's talk about the charging current yes what is ic ma ic charging current is equal to v by xc see so in fact if we have to take v phase here why because see many people don't know this uh, simple basics that is see this is the transmission line one section okay if you take transmission line as uh, a long transmission line if we take distributed parameter model n when this type of sections are contained in cascade what will be the next section ma yes like this the next section will be yes like this so there are how many sections n sections uh, typically each section is taken as 1 km enough for our uh, accurate result uh, taking 1 uh, km as one section is enough sir can't i take 1 uh, uh, meter as one section yes you can take you can take 1 cm also as one section but the complexity increases uh, and accuracy level is not that having that change from assumption of 1 km to 1 meter there is no much difference in the accuracy suppose if you are taking transmission line as 1 km as one section you are getting 99% as answer and if you are taking 1 meter as one section you may get a 99.001% there is no much difference in the accuracy but but uh, complexity is going to increase see uh, short transmission line there is some assumption that is uh, uh, see center capacitance we are going to neglect medium transmission line we are assuming that uh, center capacitance is concentrated at some point we have two types of models we'll see in the upcoming discussion but uh, uh, those two are uh, limited uh, means uh, i can say only for uh, few lengths of transmission lines with uh, a few voltages those are uh, giving accurate results approximate results in fact but if you take a long transmission line that kind of uh, assumption like a, a capacitance is uh, lumped at some place or uh, like that if you take then the result what you are going to get is not uh, uh, i can say it is not a uh, accurate result it is having some uh, uh, what you called uh, uh, error so how can we deal with that that is lumped parameter model what is that entire transmission line is breaked into n number of sections each section is going to have series inductance yes and i forgot to mention this uh, shunt uh, capacitance also so shunt uh, conductance sorry shunt conductance so each uh, section is taken as uh, n number of e transmission line is taken as n number of sections each section is going to have resistance series resistance series reactance shunt uh, capacitance and shunt conductance see we will write in this way r per kilometer this is l per kilometer this is g per kilometer and this is c per kilometer right per 1 kilometer this is the value of resistance yes now if you look at here so this is the this is the voltage v1 let me take this is the voltage v1 let me take this is the voltage v1 so r r v v i i i, I, I won't take it as v1 this is v this is 0 volts okay that is a reference plane zero potential plane we call that is a reference okay now i want to find the current that is flowing in this that is called as charging current ic charging current ic so always i have to take per phase voltage per phase voltage v per phase by xc therefore ic is equal to v per phase into xc is what ma 2 pi f c per phase if you want charging current per kilometer ic per kilometer then take uh, c per phase per kilometer if you want uh, that entire charging current you have to take it as ic then uh, you, you have to take it as uh, c per phase okay what is c per phase again let me write c per phase is equal to c per kilometer per phase into or c yeah c per phase per kilometer into length of the transmission line in kilometer this way yes now if you observe if frequency if a uh, frequency increases suppose say if frequency increases obviously the charging current drawn by the transmission line will increase charging current is a leading current in turn it is going to absorb leading reactive power it mean to say it is supplying a lagging reactive power yes so that is one of the important point okay let's go to the next question ma let's go to the next question yeah what is the next question if voltage increases yes if voltage increases 
come on so let's uh, understand this one this is very simple if voltage increases resistance will not change inductance will not change capacitance will not change but uh, but what will change what what will change let's see let's see what happens if voltage increases now the very important discussion i am going to take up here that is about stability yes if voltage increases uh, what is a uh, electric power transfer pe approximate equation mod vs yes mod vr by x into sin delta s yes, megawatt yeah previously when frequency changes so we we didn't discuss about this uh, electric power electric power output we'll discuss that also yes where delta is what ma load angle delta is what load angle yes x is the reactance of the transmission line x is the reactance of the transmission line now if voltage increases if uh, v increases that implies we can write this one as uh, p max into sin delta p max into sin delta the units are in megawatts p max into sin delta see if voltage increases obviously p max will increase if p max is increasing p e will increase that is one way or sir i don't want to send more power see for constant amount of power if voltage increases uh, the power transfer capability of the transmission line will increase means we can send more and more amount of power through the same transmission line that is one thing but uh, sir i want to send the same amount of power now to make this one as constant uh, then uh, sin delta has to decrease uh, that implies delta will decrease delta is decreasing means load angle will decrease load angle is decreasing means uh, system is said to be more stable if voltage increases see please do understand this is one of the very important point if you are going for more and more voltage higher and higher values of uh, uh, transmission voltages uh, for a constant amount of power transfer uh, then load angle will decrease which can make our system to be more stable let me write that as uh, note point yes let me write that as note point yes yeah so if uh, if note if yes if voltage increases voltage increases then power transfer capability power transfer capability capability of the transmission line increases or if it is required if it is required to send constant amount of power constant amount of power constant amount of power then then delta decreases that implies that is that is power system power system stability increases power system stability yes power system stability increases what is the stability and all we will learn in the upcoming classes in the upcoming discussion we are going to learn so if voltage increases uh, that is uh, one of the effect uh, that is to see either power transfer capability will increase or or yes power system stability will increase for constant amount of power transfer either of those two both will not happen both will not happen and what is another thing what is another thing with the uh, increment of voltage see there are some disadvantages also not uh, i can say directly disadvantages uh, with respect to economic what is the effect on economic uh, like uh, one more thing i'll tell you one more thing i'll tell you see if i if i ask uh, uh, any student uh, why we are going for higher and higher voltage of power transmission they will simply say that to reduce power losses they simply say that to reduce power losses let's see how it happens see uh, power loss is equal to 3 times of i square r megawatts yes 3 times of i square r megawatts power loss okay now we have s is equal to root 3 times of vl into il mva yes this is the apparent power formula of a transmission line apparent power formula of a transmission line s is equal to root 3 vl il so what is il s is, il is equal to s by root 3 times of uh, vl s by root 3 times of vl yes now this is the current this is the current now if you observe carefully for fixed amount of power for fixed amount of power see uh, where people will get uh, confused is uh, they won't take fixed amount of power if i say 
voltage increases they will they'll say that uh, s is going to increase if voltage increases uh, apparent power is increasing means the current is constant right yes now my point here is for fixed amount of power supply that has to be mentioned see I, i'll mention here for fixed amount of power supply fixed amount of power supply fixed amount of power supply if uh, if vl increases let me continue if uh, vl increases that implies il will decrease so this is fixed ma this is fixed there is no change in it il will decrease il is decreasing means il is decreasing means yes power loss is equal to 3 times of il square r means observe carefully il is decreasing that implies power loss is going to decrease then people are very happy sir power loss is decreasing economically we are saving a lot of money or see if power loss is decreasing means more amount of power i am able to deliver to the load or consumer therefore definitely economy will be generated that's okay but see if you take if you take our transmission tower if you take our transmission tower yes this is the transmission tower i'm drawing it observe all of you carefully this is the transmission tower yes and this is the cross arm and what these are what these are these are overhead line insulators yes these are overhead line insulators yes overhead line insulators and this is the transmission line let me draw with a different color let me draw with a different color transmission line yes yeah this is our transmission line now see what is the voltage that is appearing across this one p per phase so this is zero volts this overhead line insulation we have to design with respect to per phase peak value of voltage we already decided yes now if voltage increases if uh, if transmission voltage increases if this increases uh, that implies uh, insulation level insulation level has to has to be increased has to be increased which will again increase the cost yes so with the increment of voltage yes uh, power loss is decreasing if power loss is decreasing yes uh, economy is saved means uh, we are getting more uh, economy but at the same time if you want to go for more and more voltage this overhead line insulation cost has to increase but one point here is that here is this is one time investment increment of insulation but the econ means our power loss will be saved at every instant power loss will be reduced at every instant that is one thing see the the solid answer for why we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission yes let me take uh, that question let me take that question then we'll discuss about power system stability yes let me take that question so before i go to uh, this question let me take that question yeah why we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission uh, we need uh, some good explanation here yes we need some good explanation here yes why why we are going for we are going for higher and higher voltages of and higher voltages of trans ac transmission in fact ac transmission means why we are going for always more and more voltages in ac transmission see if you ask anyone the first answer that is given by a student is to decrease power loss we already discussed previously but the most important thing is uh, yeah this is i can say this is a secondary reason the very first reason is to improve power system stability yes to improve yes power system stability power system stability let us discuss what is this power system stability one of the see entire power system discussion will go on this power system stability let us discuss that let's discuss what is power system stability yes let us discuss what is that power system stability yes what is power system stability what is power system stability 
what is power system stability yes now see i have a transmission line like this this is the sending end mod v s at an angle delta this is the receiving end mod v r at an angle zero degrees for time being i am neglecting the resistance of the transmission line and the shunt conductance and capacitance also i am assuming transmission line as only reactance transmission line see practically also most of the times in our analysis we are going to neglect the series resistance and shunt conductance and capacitance most of the times we are going to consider only the series reactance of the transmission line yes and practically for some lines it is perfectly correct this is called as approximate analysis yeah approximate analysis is near to actual analysis that's why we are taking this so we are able to take this approximation yeah now what is sending and power ps i'll tell you the way how to derive these equations also okay i am not going to derive it okay i'll give you the way if in any examination or in any interview uh, they will if they ask you to derive those equations you can derive very easily okay i'll give you the method just uh, i i'll i'm i'm going to leave the simplification part to you that's all i'm going to leave the simplification part to you that's all okay yeah now let me take ps sending end power first of all what is the current now let me put load here yeah this is the load this is the load okay yes now the current that is flowing here is uh, let's take uh, add as ir the current here it is is yes is yes. now if you observe carefully so uh, s yes s yes is equal to vs into is conjugate vs into is conjugate how to get is 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 yes equal to what is that why we are going for that conjugate also we'll discuss why this conjugate is vs into what is is vs minus vr by jx whole conjugate you can do it yes so j stands for 90 degrees yes you can do it and you are going to get the equations ss equation you are going to get or i'll i'll solve it if you want i'll solve it if you want this is vs is what ma mod vs at an angle delta yes this is a mod vs at an angle delta minus a mod vr at an angle of 0 degrees by yes x at an angle of 90 degrees this is conjugate no because of that conjugate this is minus 90 this is minus delta sorry let me write it the next time let me write for the next time okay this is a whole conjugate let me take a new page in the next page i'll solve that okay yeah observe it carefully ma yes so what we have s s is equal to mod v s at an angle of a delta here about the delta also i have to speak few points let me first complete this then i'll discuss mod v s at an angle minus delta minus mod v r at an angle of zero degrees by x at an angle of minus 90 degrees yes now s s is equal to mod v s square at an angle of delta minus delta gone yes or let's uh, simplify this one first uh, yes this is mod v s at an angle of delta mod v s at an angle of uh, 90 minus delta minus mod v r at an angle of uh, 90 yes yes s is equal to mod v s square at an angle of 90 yes mod v s square at an angle of 90 minus mod v s mod v r yeah x we forgot by x will be there okay let's keep it by x yes yeah mod v s mod v r by x at an angle of uh, 90 plus delta 90 plus delta let's write this one in the next page so s s is equal to mod v s square by x at an angle of 90 degrees minus mod v s mod v r by x at an angle of 90 plus delta see according to power triangle what is power triangle that also i'll discuss what is power triangle see we have apparent power that is equal to react for real power plus reactive power yeah apparent power s is equal to the combination of uh, real power and uh, reactive power this is active power and this is reactive power real power is also called as uh, uh, active power okay the units of this one are mva or va its units are 
megawatts its units are m v a r s wars megawatts it is called as v a r s now see uh, this plus or minus that depends on the value of q see we have two types of loads one is leading load another one is a lagging load i'll discuss about that conjugate also i'll discuss about that conjugate also yes so if you draw a triangle for this one this is p yes and this is q why q having 90 degrees uh, phase angle if you observe uh, this p and q combination is not arithmetic combination it's not arithmetic combination see there is a 90 degrees uh, difference between p and q s is equal to p plus jq yes now this will be s yes. and this particular angle is called as power factor angle yes uh, what is power factor cos phi cos phi is equal to yes uh, cos phi see cos phi is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse that is uh, p by root of p square plus q square if i ask anyone what is power factor simply they will give the definition that is uh, that is uh, they will say like this it is the cosine of uh, power factor angle see everyone knows that but what what it is exactly it gives it gives the ratio of see p is the power that is converted from one form to another form okay see real power the name itself says real power that is the power which is really working so i can say working power suppose if you take a fan what is the purpose of fan uh, by taking fan as an example i'll explain about reactive power and active power if you take a, uh, a fan which is made up of a synchronous motor induction motor suppose say three phase induction motor the fan is made up of three phase induction motor so for a three phase induction motor what is the supply we have to give ac supply we given ac supply then some power that is drawn by the fan that is converted to mechanical that is giving us air flow in the room that is called as a real power the power which is really converted from electrical to mechanical and we are enjoying it there is some power which is taken by the fan for creating the working magnetic field in the machine for every electrical machine to work magnetic flux is required that working magnetic flux or field will be developed by or will be created by some power that is called as a reactive power the name itself says reactive and that power is not consumed that power again will be given back to the source the power that is flowing from source to load load to source source to load load to source is called as reactive power that is q and we have two types of reactive powers one is lagging reactive power another one is leading reactive power we'll discuss about that also what is lagging reactive power what is leading reactive power now see observe here p by root of p square plus q square now see uh, some doubt will be expressed by a student here that is uh, sir if reactive power is flowing from load to source source to load then what is the problem if reactive power what are the reactive power what is the problem we have we have a problem that is see for the reactive power to flow from source to load and load to source that reactive power will flow in the form of current when current is flowing some real power loss will take place yes i'll i'll, I'll explain i'll explain by taking formula also see one simple uh, one simple example i'll take here which is not uh, means technical uh, to explain you see you are roaming from your house to college college to house house to college again and again yes then what is a problem with that the problem with that is transportation charges will increase yes transportation charges will increase the same way some students may confuse that sir reactive power is again given from load to source source is again taking then what is the problem there is a problem why because reactive power is continuously flowing from load to source source to load load to source source to load in this process anyhow any power will flow in the form of current then current flow increases current flow increases I, i'll show you in the form of equations why current flow will increase when current flow increases uh, every line or transmission line or wire is going to have some resistance because of that i square r loss will takes place again which is a real power means because of more reactive power flow in the system more active or real power loss is taking place if you make a, a transmission line or a wire with a zero resistance then there is no problem with reactive power with respect to loss and one more thing let me write here let me write here see if, if i take a, s is equal to p plus jq that is equal to v i conjugate but i am taking the magnitude s magnitude so mod s i am taking let me take so mod s is equal to root of 
p square plus q square is equal to mod v into mod i then what is the magnitude of the current that is equal to mod s by root of s yes, p square plus q square now if if this reactive power is increasing yes just uh, wait a minute ma i wrote i wrote wrong i is equal to yes i wrote wrong yeah yeah i is equal to what ma root of sorry root of p square plus q square by mod v now what happens is if a reactive power consumption increases then current flowing in the transmission line is going to increase now you see i'll write here if uh, q increases that implies i increases that implies power loss that is equal to i square r will increase and the rating of the equipment required also will increase rating of the equipment are required also will increase what is the rating of the equipment i have to design a transformer that a transformer current rating will increase due to which kv rating is going to increase means i have to keep more rating machinery more rating machinery again economically it's a loss for me i have to keep more rating machinery and rating of rating of equipment increases equipment increases suppose if if suppose there is a load whose q is equal to 0 then i is very less then s is equal to vi for fixed amount of voltage i got decreased means s is going to decrease means i have to purchase a lower kv rating transformer this that is again economical so we we need to maintain a good power factor power factor will tell you the ratio of useful power see active power is called as useful power it doesn't mean to say that yeah reactive power is useless no 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 please please do not misunderstand that reactive power is a useless without reactive power first of all the machine will not work see the basic criteria of a machine to work is uh, for an electrical machine to work is uh, uh, this creating magnetic field that magnetic field will be created with help of only reactive power don't treat it as useless power but if it is uh, more and more then see the actual power that is converted from uh, uh I, i can say the, the ratio of actual power to total power will decrease means if you come here this is the ratio see this is uh, the actual power that is converted from electrical to mechanical suppose if i take a uh, machine uh, motor as an example induction motor three phase induction motor as an example then if this q is increasing this factor will decrease power factor see break those two terms power factor the factor which is telling about the about the power that got converted from one form to another form suppose if this cos phi is equal to 1 if the power factor is equal to 1 how much power how much total power is there the total got converted happy if it is only 0.1 90% of the power got used in creating flux that is a worst case right yes 90% wasted only 10% is converted from uh, mechanical electrical to mechanical so more is the power factor more is the advantage for us so in the upcoming sessions we are going to see how to improve power factor and all there are several methods and i told you that we have two types of reactive power one is leading reactive power another one is lagging reactive power see uh, according to passive power sign convention we have yeah we have two elements one is inductor yeah one is inductor let me explain that also then we go to the power transfer equations we go to the power transfer equations yes inductor yes if you take a inductor if you take inductor yes see for an inductor this is v and this is i this is i ideal inductor i am taking for an inductor current lags the voltage exactly by 90 degrees the current flowing through inductor lags the voltage exactly by 90 degrees please remember that what does it mean by lagging and leading that also i'll explain how to explain see in one of the interview that this question got asked that is what how can you explain lagging and leading concept to a student to a uh, to a layman okay we'll see that also we'll see that also okay so this is v and this is i now uh, p if i take uh, p is equal to vi cos phi vi cos phi q is equal to vi sin phi vi sin phi and uh, the reactive power of an inductor we call it as a lagging reactive power right? because current is lagging see the reactive power the reactive power or uh, i'll write like this i'll write like this i'll write like this see can i write can i write uh, 
minus i upside yes happy like i can write yes i can write minus i upside yes i can write this is 90 degrees plus i downside minus i upside both are same now i can write see here this is positive or negative positive i had taken this current lagging current as positive then the leading current should be negative right yes minus and this leading both will cancel see so this is very simple man this is very simple just like this this is uh, 2 ohms and 4 amperes this direction or minus 4 amperes this direction both are same plus 4 amperes this direction minus 4 amperes this direction both are same by using the same concept by using the same concept observe here carefully plus i downside minus i upside both are same V i sin phi according to passive power sign convention this is very important according to passive power sign convention from network analysis if a power is positive means it is absorbing or supplying absorbing that is that is inductor yes inductor is what absorbing absorbing what this V i sin phi plus V i sin phi is leading a lagging lagging absorbing lagging reactive power lagging reactive power i am writing it as q or see p formula is that only let's write q in one more way that is v minus i into sin phi minus i into sin phi okay i take it as upside now this is what i am going to get it as minus vi sin phi minus vi sin phi so this is a negative now let me write now let me write uh, yes uh, inductor yes let me write here q is equal to minus vi sin phi yes uh, what is this this is negative can i write uh, inductor inductor yes first of all tell me according to passive power sign convention if react if uh, power is negative means uh, for a passive element if power is negative means what we have to understand it is absorbing or it is supplying it is supplying inductor supplies supplies but one point here this negative we got because of this upside current which is negative that is what leading current or lagging current leading yes leading inductor supplies leading reactive power leading reactive power inductor supplies leading reactive power if you observe the same inductor is uh, able to supply as well as absorb people knows only that inductor absorbs reactive power yes that is true but because 99 percent of all our loads are lagging loads okay all our loads most of the loads are lagging loads that's why by default we take reactive power means lagging reactive power they won't use the word lagging just they call it as see one means plus one or minus one plus one plus is by default need not to say plus one plus two plus three like that yes in the same way reactive power means by default lagging reactive power inductor absorbs lagging reactive power or inductor absorbs reactive power that's all yes inductor absorbs reactive power but the same inductor is able to supply leading reactive power yes now let's discuss about capacitor also then we write four conclusions we will write four conclusions yes capacitor yeah if you take capacitor yes this is the voltage this is the voltage and this is the current i am taking ideal capacitor okay yeah and this this is 90 degrees now here also p is equal to vi cos phi yes q is equal to vi sin phi so this is positive or negative this is positive phi is equal to 90 degrees you can substitute it ma okay this is VA sin phi is positive what we have to understand what we have to understand that is inductor yes sir not inductor capacitor one of the very important note point capacitor positive means absorbing or supplying according to passive power sign convention positive means it is absorbing capacitor absorbs absorbs what are leading reactive power yes this current is leading leading reactive power but the same current I do like this same current I will draw downside with the minus I let me do it in the next page ma yes let me do it in the next pages yes yeah now if you observe q is equal to v into minus i sin phi minus i sin phi 
So this is a negative or positive? Negative. Now I got negative. Reactive power is negative means it is absorbing or supplying? Supplying. But which one? Which one it is supplying? Yes, sir. lagging or leading? Lagging reactive power. This is 90 degrees. Yes. Yeah. Now I can write capacitor. Capacitor supplies. Supplies. Yes, what? Lagging reactive power. Lagging reactive power. Let me write all four node points in a single page. And from there, we are going to get beautiful conclusions. So by this time, you might got what does it mean by power factor? Yes, it is a factor which is giving us or if you multiply power factor with 100, you are going to get a percentage that is going to say how much percentage of the total power is converted from one form to another form or, or how much we really used. Okay, that, that is the information given by the word power factor. Don't say in interviews like, sir, it is the cosine of angle between voltage and current or it is a P by root of P square plus Q square. You should not give like that. Okay. We have two types of reactive powers. One is leading, leading reactive power and one is lacking reactive power. Lacking reactive power, we call it as reactive power, just reactive power. Why? Because 99% uh, of all our loads are lagging loads. Now, let me write all those four conclusions in a single page. Then, yeah, what is that first one? First one, note. Yes, this is very important discussion. Ma. If you go to interviews like Bark or ISO or DRDO, the total discussion sometimes uh, only will happen on reactive power. Suppose if one question they ask about power, if they start asking about reactive power, they will ask many cross questions. Okay, You must be in a position to explain everything. If you have good concepts like this, then definitely you can do. Yeah, The first point is uh, inductor, yes, inductor absorbs absorbs lagging q lagging q yes the same time yes capacitor yes supplies observe carefully supplies lagging q lagging q observe it carefully capacitor i wrote here capacitor supplies lagging q yes next third statement is capacitor absorbs absorbs leading q leading q yes inductor yes inductor yes supplies supplies leading q you can go there and check leading q if you observe carefully what that is required by the inductor is supplied by capacitor what that is required by capacitor is supplied by inductor yes don't misunderstand that uh, inductor always absorbs capacitor always will supply no if capacitor is the load then you put inductor in such a way that the capacitor requirement is fulfilled by inductor if the load is inductive load, then we are keeping capacitive capacitors for the compensation of reactive power. Yes, or to improve the power factor. So both are opposite elements. Means if this is supplying, this is taking. That too in one half cycle or in one quarter cycle, if this absorbs, that supplies. So that that is a cyclic process. Means instead of from source, I, I'll explain you by taking one simple example. So this is very very important concept with respect to research oriented companies uh, interviews like Bark, ISRO, and DRDO. Okay. Please be careful and uh, if you go for uh, power system specialization at IITs for interviews, uh, then one of the very important concept, basic con concept it is. Okay, so reactive power, it's very important. Now, how come, how come this uh, reactive power compensation is going to be a fruitful thing for us? I'll, I'll explain you, I'll explain you, observe. There is a generator, there is a generator, yes. There is transmission line and there is uh, an RL load, there is an RL load. Okay, now observe it carefully. Ma. We started at uh, power transfer equations. Yes, we'll resume that. Don't worry. Yes, this is uh, receiving end current, and uh, this is the sending end current. Yes, so this is uh, the steam input. This is synchronous generator. See, synchronous generator. This uh, transmission line is having A, B, C, D parameters like A, B, C, and D. That's not a big deal for us. Okay. Yeah. Now, observe it carefully. This uh, 
this load absorbs what reactive power this load absorbs what reactive power lagging reactive power now who has to supply it who has to supply it generator has to supply it. now qs let me write uh, qs is equal to q line plus q load q load means uh, the reactive power that is supplied from source is equal to the reactive power absorbed by the transmission line plus the reactive power absorbed by the load load is what load lagging load okay now what i'll do is if i put if i put a capacitor here yes if i put a capacitor here yes and i'm closing the switch at t is equal to zero if i put a capacitor here this capacitor this capacitor just let me write this capacitor is going to supply the reactive power required by the load instead of coming from source and uh, see it's not like that simply it is going to supply it is going to take see uh, i told you right uh, whatever that is required uh, required by the inductor is supplied by the capacitor whatever that is required by the capacitor will be supplied by inductor mutual exchange and uh, there is no need of reactive power to come from source for first one cycle for first one cycle this will happen means from source it will come after that after that these two keep exchanging no need of a source to interfere with respect to reactive power okay then what happens see this is uh, this is uh, without c without c now with the c with the capacitor qs is equal to q line only okay q line only if i'm going for 100 percent compensation if i'm going for 100 percent compensation now qs decreased that implies that implies SS will decrease that implies current will decrease IS will decrease that implies uh, power loss in transmission line decreases advantage or disadvantage it's an advantage suppose if this is the load if this is the load now I have to connect an inductor why because uh, see I I'll tell you like this for inductive loads for inductive loads for inductive loads we write like this s is equal to p plus j q for capacitive loads or for leading loads instead of writing inductive for lagging loads i write for lagging loads for leading loads for leading loads s is equal to p minus j q but end of the day end of the day what is s mod s is equal to root of p square plus Q square. This here also mod s is equal to what root of uh, p square plus q square only. Sir, so why one is plus one is minus uh, for our reference we are taking convention we are taking. If I look at plus q, I can say that okay the load is lagging load. If I look at minus, I can say that it is the leading load. Right? Suppose here, suppose here the load is like this. Yeah, the load is like this. Let me write more clearly. If the load is like this. Yeah, this is generator, this is transmission line, and the load is this load. Even now also, this is R, this is C, or XC. We should not write as C uh, in a steady state, XC. Uh, in fact, minus J XC, I have to write. This is load. Now, this is mod VR at an angle of zero degrees. I'll tell you why this is taken as zero. This is mod VS at an angle delta. This is steam input, and this is... Uh, yeah here uh, ss uh, is equal to ps plus uh, ps plus j qs i call where qs is equal to q line plus q load q load this q load inherently it may be negative but that negative reactive power it has to supply see uh, negative reactive power means you should not misunderstand that uh, this has to absorb reactive power one cycle it supplies one cycle it absorbs it this keeps happening reactive power the name itself says reactive power okay one cycle it absorbs element another cycle it is going to deliver that keep happening so for our reference purpose we take like this now suppose what i do is what i do is now uh, for for time being q load q line you neglect q line you neglect now qs is equal to q load q load okay now this q load is supposed say qs is equal to minus 200 minus 200 this minus indicates that minus 200 mvrs are where you take this minus indicates that this is leading minus doesn't mean to say that uh, it is supplying it is absorbing okay reactive power see there is a reactive power one thing we have to understand carefully active power source will supply load will absorb never load will give it back to the source okay 
except in some cases if if uh, the load is acting like a generator if it also supplies then okay but uh, there is a resistive load it always absorbs but a capacitor inductor or lagging and leading loads are not like that okay reactive power absorbed means see that is one cycle it takes one cycle it will supply okay see load up load is absorbing reactive power lagging reactive power means it is absorbing lagging reactive power and it is supplying leading reactive power we have to understand that it is absorbing some reactive power it is supplying some other reactive power here if you observe if this is the load it is absorbing leading reactive power but supplying lagging reactive power your source must be in a position to absorb lagging reactive power why because this fellow is supplying who has to take source has to take if you neglect the transmission line reactance okay now if that is the case it needs some type of reactive power what is that leading this generator must be in a position to supply it is supplying lagging reactive power the generator must be in a position to absorb during this uh, reactive power exchange from load to source source to load power loss will takes place in the transmission line what i do is i'll connect one inductor i'll connect one inductor here this is the inductor i'll connect one inductor here then what happens is t is equal to zero then what happens is this will give reactive power to this one this will give reactive power to this one these two keep exchanging the reactive power then qs will become is equal to zero if i am neglecting the transmission line reactive power okay now what happens you see ss will decrease that implies uh, yeah current will decrease that implies power loss will decrease power loss will decrease so this is the complete concept of reactive power reactive power means by default lagging reactive power if not mentioned okay if load is a lagging load compensating device should be a leading device okay if load itself is a leading device then compensating equipment must be a lagging device and uh, what is the advantage of compensating for reactive power there is no requirement of source to interfere for reactive power then the current that is coming from source will decrease because of which a uh, power loss in the transmission line will decrease if power loss is decreasing means uh, i can say and one more thing power how power factor will be improved what is cos phi cos phi is equal to p by root of p square plus q square here there is a lot of misconception i'll tell you see the load required the reactive power it will take but the reactive power that is coming from source will decrease so many people will misunderstand if we connect capacitor inductor stop taking reactive power no 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 okay reactive power consumption of uh, uh, inductor will not decrease ma see if if i have come here come here i'll explain by taking this one this load is taking some 100 mvr of reactive power this is supplying The, this load is not comp the not compromising at absorbing reactive power load is taking but that is not coming from source that is given by this capacitor what that is required by this capacitor this inductor will take place that that mutual exchange will take place okay so what is power factor power factor is equal to p by root of p square plus q square that q we have to take that is the reactive power that is coming from source we have to take then only power factor improvement will be visible to you see if you observe here you have to take this one as qs if you take q load q load will remain same q load will remain same the load is going to absorb same amount of reactive power okay but the the one that is coming from source will decrease uh, with this reactive power compensation devices then power factor is going to improve yes power factor is going to improve this is the total story about the reactive power this is one of the very important thing and uh, we drawn uh, we drawn that uh, uh i i can say uh, power triangle we we can power triangle for lagging loads for leading loads also we'll draw power triangle so s is equal to p minus jq if this is a p and a q will be like this this is q and this is s yes and this is phi what is cos phi ma cos phi is equal to p by yes cos phi is equal to p by s that is equal to p by root of p square plus uh, q square yes and uh, yes this is the power factor formula okay in many ways you can find the power factor the concept of power factor reactive power are very important and so confusing if you do not have these concepts if you don't know that leading reactive power and lagging reactive power both are different and if you don't know that the capacitor is going to absorb reactive power uh, in one cycle in another cycle it is going to supply 
and if you do not know that a capacitor and a capa inductor is also able to supply reactive power, but that is leading reactive power which is required by the capacitor. If you do not know these concepts, you may not learn completely power systems and even machines also. Okay, this is very important thing. Okay, yeah, let us go back to our concept that is, yeah, we started at the power transfer equation. Yes, we are here at the power transfer equation. Yeah, now what is that? Ma? SS is equal to Vs square by x 90, Vs Vr by x 90 plus delta. Remember that and write in a new page. Then we are going to find active power and reactive power. Active power and reactive power. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So SS what we got ma? Yes, S is equal to mod Vs square by x at an angle 90 degrees minus mod Vs mod Vr by x at an angle of 90 plus delta. Yes. Now Ps is equal to apply cos for this from power triangle. From power triangle, if you apply cos, you are going to get a see uh, s cos phi. S cos phi is uh, what uh, active power. S sin phi will be reactive power. Yes. So mod Vs square by x cos 90 is zero minus mod Vs mod Vr by x cos of 90 plus delta cos of 90 plus delta. So, this is a 0. So, P s is equal to mod V s mod V r by x into sin delta megawatts, sin delta watts or megawatts. Let me write here. So, P s is equal to mod V s mod V r by x into sin delta. Let me explain about this delta also. Yeah. Now, we taken transmission line like this, we taken this one as mod Vs at an angle delta, we taken this one as mod Vr at an angle of uh, 0. See, receiving end always taken as reference, receiving end is always taken as reference. Suppose in the examination or in the interview, they may give you mod Vs at an angle of 10 degree, this one they may give you mod Vr at an angle of 5 degree. Now, you can make it as 5 degree and you can make it as 0 degrees. Yes means uh, this delta is nothing but delta s minus delta r okay suppose uh, if non zero angles are given at the both sides okay like uh, I'll, I'll write here i'll write here i'll write here so this is uh, delta s and this is delta r this is delta r this can be replaced like this this can be replaced like this mod vs at an angle of delta s minus delta r and this is a uh, mod we are at an angle of uh, 0 degrees this way we can replace this way we can replace so reference uh, is always receiving it that's why we are taking that angle as 0 degrees now observe what is uh, our system stability yes so p is equal to mod vs mod vr by x into sin delta what is the maximum possible value of sin delta plus 1 that is for delta equal to 90 degrees maximum possible value of sin delta is uh, 90 that is possible for delta equal to sorry maximum possible value of sin delta is 1 that is possible for 90 degrees then how much i am going to get p is equal to p e max is equal to how much mod v s see i will write here p e p max p max is equal to mod v s mod v r by x why because the maximum possible value of sin delta is 1 that is for delta equal to 90 degrees then how much you are going to get p is equal to p max into sin delta in this way i can write yes now let's draw the graph of it let's draw the graph of it yes i am drawing it observe carefully ma. so this is a delta and this is a p this is delta and this is a p yes this is zero this is a 180 degrees yes and this is and this is don't treat it as half circular this is a, a sinusoidal waveform okay or let me draw it let me draw so that it looks like sinusoidal for you okay yes this is a 180 degrees or pi radians pi radians okay and this is the p max this is p max right 
P max and its corresponding angle is what 90 degrees now what does it mean by stable system let's understand what does it mean by stable system now now see synchronous machine is the machine which is supplying power supply to the most of the uh, power most of the power is supplied by synchronous machine synchronous generator in fact it is called as alternator what it is alternator what is the difference between alternator and generator we will see what is the difference between alternator and generator yes now that is p max now present the load angle is 30 degrees suppose say present load is at here now here this is the power supply what we are getting this is the power supply i call it as p1 i call it as p1 is the present load and present load angle is delta 1 and see this this curve is all possible values of uh, all possible values of power of that particular generator okay if delta equal to 0 if load angle delta is called as load angle delta is called as what load angle okay if load angle is 0 means no load then uh, angle is 0 means how much is the power supply that is 0 happy if load increases see this is the process this is the process yeah very important note i am writing here Yes, this is the process we have to follow. If load increases, if load increases, that implies load angle increases in a machine. Load angle in a synchronous machine, load angle increases. Do remember that point. If load increases, load angle will increase. Okay. Now, observe here. Observe here, all of you. Now, what happening here is my load got increased from P1 to P2. First of all, see when load increases, the first thing happens is load angle increases. Now, load angle got increased from delta 1 to delta 2 take it as suppose 60 degrees then what happens power supply also will ah yes increases from p1 to p2 to supply that increment of load to supply that increment of load this is p2 this condition is a stable condition if load increases load angle increases if load angle increasing power is also increasing then that condition is said to be stable condition means if uh, load angle increases that implies power also increases uh, then system is uh, stable or then this condition is said to be stable or then then this condition is said to be stable load increases load angle increases if load angle is increasing power supply is increasing system is said to be stable now further load got increased then what happens immediately load angle has to increase load angle has to increase yes load angle has to increase load angle is increased from this delta 2 to i can say delta 3 that is equal to 150 degrees suppose or 120 we take looks appropriate yes 120 degrees now what is our expectation see the poor machine the poor machine don't know that the poor machine don't know that if load increases uh, load angle increases if load angle increases a uh, load all uh, power supply always increase poor machine don't know that it may or may not what machine thinks is or what happens in a machine is if load increases immediately the first thing that is going to happen is load angle will increase load angle is increased now observe power supply is increased or decreased or we will go further okay I will take you further so that for some appropriate discussion takes place huh? yeah now load increased load angle increases load increased load angle is increased to here suppose say some delta 3 is equal to 160 degrees you take now what machine expected machine expected for the increment of power now this is a p3 now power is increased or decreased power got increased or decreased power got decreased from p2 to p3 p2 to p3 load increased load angle increased but supply got decreased this is called as unstable condition now further what happens the load the machine will increase further load angle by expecting that power will increase but further power will decrease like that it decreases 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 after some time it is going to become equal to zero after that uh, the power tends to become negative because uh, what is our what we drawn what is our equation p is equal to what ma p max into sine delta sine delta is going to be negative after 180 degrees see now power is positive from 0 to 180 means that the generator is supplying power after 180 the generator starts absorbing power why because power is going to become negative okay 
we we installed a generator we given steam input a turbine lot many things by thinking that this particular generator is going to supply power to the grid but instead it is going to absorb power which is not required there is a relay called reverse power relay that relay will observe this condition and it is going to give trip signal to circuit breaker and this particular machine will be disconnected from grid before it is going to absorb power from grid okay yes with there is discussion let's let's uh, discuss it furtherly yes sir. see i'll write all the points very clearly if uh, if load increases if a uh, load increases that implies load angle load angle increases now that is see that always happen that always happen now if uh, dp by d delta is positive what does it mean by that p2 minus p1 by delta 2 minus delta 1 means what uh, if delta 2 is greater than delta 1 means uh, delta is increased from delta 1 to delta 2 then i am expecting p1 to increase from p1 to p2 then yes system is uh, system or generator is said to be is yes said to be stable is said to be stable if uh, if uh, see load angle increased but power supply decreased means means load angle is increased from delta 1 to delta 2 but power supply is decreased from power supply is decreased from yes p1 to p3 p3 is less than p1 or take p2 take p2 delta 2 load angle is increased from delta 2 to delta 3 but power supply is decreased from p2 to p3 numerator is negative denominator is positive the overall will be negative if dp by d delta is negative then the machine is then the machine is unstable unstable this is power system stability yes now go back go back that dp by d delta positive is possible only up to 90 degrees 90 degrees let me draw the regions of a stable uh, system let me draw the region of stable system yes yes let me draw the region of stable system yes this is a delta and this is a pe yes this is delta and this is pe now if you observe this is 180 degrees and this will be 90 degrees this is a zero degrees yes yes observe it man. all of you so i'm going to take here that is p max this particular value is p max yes and this region is stable region and uh, yes this region is unstable region this region is what ma unstable region if load angle increases beyond 90 approximately uh, the equation what we taken is an approximate equation if load angle crosses 90 or at 90 also the system is unstable there are a lot of things to discuss about power system stability we will discuss in a dedicated chapter called power system stability but there is an introduction about power system stability okay please see discussion will definitely happen in interview about this power system stability if you are going for an interview on the subject power system or if you choose your favorite subject as power systems in interviews definitely questions will be asked this way okay please do understand the concepts okay so if uh, by keeping so p e is equal to p max what is that mod v s mod v r by x into sin delta if uh, observe if uh, if voltage increases if voltage increases i can write uh, i can write like this if voltage increases entire this p max will increase and uh, to maintain constant amount of power the sine delta has to decrease therefore what happens delta is decreasing how much less is the delta that much more stable i'll tell you how it is suppose you are here you are here initial angle is suppose uh, this initial angle is i'll take it as some delta one now suddenly load got changed that got changed to here this is p1 this is p2 this angle is delta two still your system is in stable region but you are already here you are already here at p3 you are already at p3 yes now any sudden change of load may take your system here somewhere at p4 yes at delta 4 yes what happens system is stable or unstable unstable 
so how much less is the load angle that much more the system is stable suppose there is some there is some uh, uh, i can say hazard 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 happened there how much far away from that hazard you are that much safe you are yes you are very near to that even a small disturbance in you can make to fell in that hazardous situation yes so that's why how much less is the load angle that much more the system is stable that much more the system is stable so that's why that's why if i increase voltage if i increase voltage to 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 send a constant amount of power sin delta will decrease delta will decrease delta is decreasing means stability will increase let me write that as a note point yes let me write it as a note point yes yeah that note point let me write if uh, voltage level in transmission increases in transmission increases for constant amount of power transfer for constant amount of amount of power transfer power transfer transfer then stability power then let me write this way total i'll write then load angle decreases that implies power system stability increases power system stability increases so see so this is the main reason why we are going for a higher and higher voltage of transmission uh, this is the main reason and the added advantage is power loss is going to decrease power loss is going to decrease then what are the disadvantages corona will increase this corona is due to electric field intensity electric field intensity is going to depend on voltage yes corona loss is going to increase and insulation level we have to increase to decrease again corona loss we are going for bundle conductors okay we are going to see all those things further so these many reasons are there why we are going for higher and higher voltage of transmission we discussed about uh, reactive power one of the very 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 important concept with respect to any interviews after this we'll go for the next question what is this question what is a balanced system so general common question in any interview what is a balanced system see after this we are we will see the power transfer equations we already derived uh, ps equation or uh, p equation we have to derive a uh, q equation also we'll we'll go back uh, some few important points there we are going to see but let's complete this one then we go back to the power transfer equations of transmission line okay approximate power transfer equations not the exact one exact one how to derive i'll tell you exact one how to derive i'll tell you but approximate we are going to see yeah what is a balanced system so many students will say that sir ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero system is balanced or currents are balanced or va plus vb plus vc is equal to zero voltages are balanced no the answer straight answer is no i'll tell you here what is a balanced system what is a balanced system so first let me talk about currents if i take current ia ia is equal to im sin of omega t plus some theta im a equal ib is equal to imb sin of omega t plus theta minus 120 degrees ic is equal to imc sin of omega t plus theta minus 240 degrees amperes okay amperes currents are in amperes so observe it carefully when this system of currents is said to be balanced when these currents are said to be balanced very simple ma if uh, so i am writing here i am writing here let me take a new page and uh, let me write there yes let me take a new page and write there yes yeah what is that if first condition is if i am a is equal to i am b is equal to i am c all maximum magnitudes must be equal either currents or voltages suppose if if the question is about voltages all maximum voltages must be equal first one and the second condition is both must be satisfied or why to name as 1 and 2 i'll write as and 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 the 
phase angle difference the phase angle difference difference between consecutive phases consecutive phases must be equal to yes must be equal to 120 degrees what is that i'll tell you suppose if you look at yeah we need ima imb mc must be equal the phase angle difference between current a and current b ia and ib must be 120 what is this angle theta so what is the difference means uh, if i see if i draw if i draw the graph of this or if i draw these phasors now i'm going to draw like this suppose if this is ia this is ib this is ic so this is ia this is ib and this is ic so the difference phase angle difference between ia to ib must be 120 this must be 120 this must be 120 so uh, we, if you take uh, vectors are rotating in uh, uh, anti clockwise direction what is the phase sequence we are going to get ma b c a means uh, see if you stand here what is the phase sequence what is the phase sequence if you stand here the first vector you are going to come across is b after that c after that a after that b after that c the phase sequence is abc that is how we have to find the phase sequence that is how we have to find the phase sequence okay yes the phase sequence is uh, abc so or or not need not need not to have this way only need not to have this way only suppose uh, i'll write here if theta is equal to 30 degrees in the previous vectors if theta is equal to 30 degrees uh, i'll write here if uh, if uh, theta is equal to if theta is equal to 30 degrees then what is ia is equal to im sin of omega t plus 30 yes ic sorry ib is equal to im sin of omega t plus 30 minus 120 will be minus 90 right minus 90 yes and ic is equal to im sin of omega t yes plus theta minus 240 will be minus 210 degrees now if you take the difference between these two what is the difference between these two is uh, minus 120 minus 90 minus 30 will be minus 120 between these two minus 210 minus 90 will be minus 120 between these two also if you draw in the form of vectors means uh, suppose uh, I'll, I'll draw like this i'll draw like this yeah this is the reference suppose i'm taking this one as zero degrees and this is the reference or let me do like this yes yeah this is zero degrees i'll do one thing this is zero degrees reference i'm taking okay this is zero degrees reference i'm taking fine yeah now if this is zero degrees plus 30 will be plus 30 will be somewhere here this is a a yes and uh, just a minute this is a a and uh, i can say uh, this is uh, IB yes and this is IC okay so this is 120 let me put let me put here clearly this is 120 sorry this is looking like 90 uh, I'll, I'll draw it again I'll draw it again yes this is looking like 90 it's not 90 it should be 120 yes yes this is a uh, ic yeah and uh, this is uh, 120 degrees this is also 120 degrees this is balanced means uh, all three maximum magnets must be equal and uh, the phase angle difference must be 120 degrees between the consecutive phases either for voltage or currents then those currents or then those system of currents or system of voltages are said to be balanced now when load is said to be balanced when load is said to be balanced now suppose i have a load za is equal to mod za at an angle of theta a and zb is equal to mod zb at an angle of theta b zc is equal to mod zc at an angle of theta c load is said to be balanced load is said to be balanced balanced 
if mod z a equal to mod z b equal to mod z c and theta a equal to theta b equal to theta c these two conditions must satisfy then load is said to be balanced if source load and connecting wires all are balanced then the system is said to be balanced what is that i'll take one simple example i'll take one simple example ma yes i'll take one very simple example yes the source load and connecting wires i'm taking a star connected source yes star connected source yes yeah this is source let me take the load here load also star connected load let me take a resistive load for example i'm taking for simplicity and i'm connecting these uh, like this this is connecting wire this is the connecting wire and this is the connecting wire yes and this is plus minus va plus minus sorry this is minus plus vb and this is minus plus vc this point is neutral assume that we are connecting this neutral also no issues this is a load neutral this is source neutral okay yeah now this this is uh, the transmission line suppose say it is having an impedance of uh, zla and it is having zlb and it is having zlc this is uh, za this is uh, zb and this is uh, zc now i want to find the current ia i want to find the current ib i want to find the current uh, ic yeah voltages are balanced voltages are balanced voltage maximum magnets are equal and uh, phase angle between the two consecutive phases uh, any consecutive phases c a to b b to c c to a or uh, a to c also we can take so, suppose I, i'll tell you like this yeah please observe here see this is a this is c between a and c also this is 120 not a to b b to c c to a c a to b b to c now as it is a circular rotation c and a also consecutive c and a also consecutive okay now come here all of you yes now what is ia ia see load is also balanced ia is equal to what ma va by za plus zla now whether ia ib ic are balanced or not will be decided by va vb vc za zb zc zla zlb and zlc also yes now what is ib ma ib is equal to vb by zb plus zlb ic is equal to vc by vc by zc plus zlc now the point here is the point here is yes observe all of you va comma vb comma vc are balanced we are taking those as balanced okay za za zb comma zc are also balanced and if zla comma zlb comma zlc are also balanced along with are also balanced yes along with along with va vb vc and za zb zc then currents are balanced because current is the result of uh, this voltage and uh, load voltage source and load okay current is the result then currents are balanced then currents are balanced then only we said that we'll say that currents are balanced otherwise see suppose va vb vc are balanced zd zb zc are balanced but zd la zd lb zd lc are not balanced then obviously currents are not going to be balanced so i can say this is a balanced system this is a balanced system okay yeah let's go to the next question and one more thing uh, i forgot to tell you what is the mistake that is uh, uh, did by students in interviews that is mainly see if uh, these two conditions are satisfied what is that maximum magnets are equal and the phase angle difference is 120 then the result is what uh, ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero this is the outcome this is not the condition if a system is balanced then ia plus uh, if a system of currents is balanced then ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero but uh, it is not a uh, converse is not true means if ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero then uh, the currents are said to be balanced no this is not a condition this is the result 
if a system of currents are balanced then definitely this will satisfy but it doesn't mean to say that uh, if this condition if, if uh, this equation satisfies or ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero then system of currents are set to be balanced no may or may not no guarantee for that okay let's go to the next question yeah let's see yeah which configuration of transmission line is preferable that is symmetrical or asymmetrical first let's understand uh, what are the what are the configurations of transmission lines and uh, which configuration is preferable and why it is so which configuration is preferable and why it is so and uh, what are the disadvantages of asymmetrical configuration and symmetrical configuration finally what is the outcome we are going to see see one of the very important topic is this okay uh, mostly if you go for interviews like uh, assistant engineer jobs in generation corporations or transmission corporations or distribution company limited sir like uh, the power distribution company limited so then definitely this question will be asked to you okay now we have two types of configurations yes there are two types of configurations two types of configurations configurations one is uh, symmetrical second one is asymmetrical symmetrical and asymmetrical let's see what is symmetrical what is asymmetrical and all okay let's see what is symmetrical what is asymmetrical and all technically which is preferable and economically which is preferable then what we are going to do uh, for achieving both we are going to see see now uh, if a uh, conductor this is phase a transmission line phase a this is phase b and this is phase c okay this is uh, I, i can say d b c and uh, this distance is uh, yes d a b always the distance must be measured from center to center ma d a c or d c a now what is symmetrical configuration if uh, if d a b is equal to d b c is equal to d c a means uh, the distance between phase a to b b to c c to a is exactly equal or the conductor the transmission line conductors are placed at the vertices of equilateral triangle see just for example configuration i'm telling then that configuration is said to be symmetrical configuration then then the transmission line the transmission line configuration configuration is said to be is yes said to be what symmetrical yes now this uh, configuration is said to be symmetrical how it looks on a transmission tower suppose if i take uh, this one as transmission tower yes this is the transmission tower yes and this is the cross arm these are overhead line insulators for simplicity i'm taking like that okay and uh, these are the overhead line insulators and, and this is a second conductor yes and uh, this is the third cross arm and this is a third conductor let me name those as let me name those as a b and c in the this distance is uh, d b c and uh, this distance is yes this distance is yes d c a c a and uh, this distance is yes this distance is d a p so all those three are equal may not look uh, in the diagram as equal but please take treat those as equal okay dab dbc dc are equal now how many such type of conductors we can send at a time on a transmission tower only one one circuit only see abc will constitute one circuit please do remember remember abc will constitute uh, one circuit so these three conductors are constituting one circuit this is symmetrical configuration let's see how asymmetrical configuration looks see asymmetrical configuration asymmetrical configuration how asymmetrical configuration looks so this is how asymmetrical configuration looks yeah see in this again there are two types one is vertical configuration another one is horizontal vertical means phase a phase b phase c so this is a this is b this is c observe here the distance between a to b this is uh, dab b to c this is uh, dbc and this is uh, a to c this is uh, dca or dac if you observe carefully those three are not equal 
So, I can say DAB is not equal to DBC is not equal to DAC. Now, we forgot one thing that is uh, what is the advantage of symmetrical configuration? Let us see first of all that one or let us complete it. See, let us complete it. This is a vertical configuration. How horizontal configuration looks? Same, just uh, the same it is horizontal configuration is horizontal configuration. Yes, how it looks. Yeah, I will I'll show here how horizontal configuration looks. Yes, so this is a phase A, phase B and phase C. See, so this is a DAB. Yes, and this is a DBC and this is a DCA. Yes, DCA. This is conductor A, this is B, this is B, this is C. Okay, and here also DAB is not equal to DBC is not equal to DCA, not equal. Okay, uh, how it looks on the tower, how it looks on the tower. And one more thing, when horizontal we prefer, when vertical we prefer. In transmission always we are going to prefer vertical configuration. In distribution we are going to prefer this horizontal configuration. Okay. Sometimes in distribution also we are going to prefer this uh, vertical configuration. Okay. Where the space is very less. Where the space is very less. Okay. Yeah. Come here. How on a tower, transmission tower, the vertical configuration or uh, this asymmetrical configuration looks. Let me show. Yes. Let me show you please. And this is the cross arm. This is the cross arm. Yes. This is the cross arm. These are the conductors. See, this is phase A. Yes, and this is phase B. And this is phase C. Yes, these are A, B, C. And the distance between A to B. Yes, this is DAB. This is DBC. And this is DCA. Right. D C A. Now, if you look at here, uh, how many uh, circuits I can run at a time on a single tower parallelly two circuits? Right? Because this side one circuit I can call A1, B1, C1. This side another circuit I can run. This side another circuit I can run. Yes. Circuit 2. Yes. That is A2. This is B2. And uh, this is uh, C2. So, this is A2. This is B2. This is C2. The distance between the distance is measured from center to center. The distance is measured from center to center. Yes. So this is a D A to B to yes D B to C to. This total is yes D A to C to. Observe it. So at a time two circuits I can run on a single tower. This is going to save a lot of economy. First number of towers, the space required for the towers. See, the charges for erection, installation, there are a lot many things. So, huge cost it is going to save if I go with this configuration, asymmetrical configuration. What is asymmetrical configuration? The distance between the phases, phase conductors is not equal, then that is called as a asymmetrical configuration. If the distance between the consecutive conductors or phases is exactly equal, it is called a symmetrical configuration. Now, economically, which is more preferable, this one? But what is the disadvantage with the asymmetrical configuration? Before that, I have to I have to see what is the advantage with symmetrical configuration. Let's see. Yeah. Now this is symmetrical configuration. Let me give you the reason why symmetrical configuration is advantage technically. First, let's discuss the technical reason. Then we are going to see how to make asymmetrical configuration behave like symmetrical configuration. Yes. Yeah. We know that L per phase is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of yes gmd of the system or gmd of the conductor a by self gmd of the conductor a self gmd of conductor a henry per meter yes this is la in the same way lb lb or l per lb let's let me write it as instead of l per phase la lb lcl right yes this is LA, this is LB. That is also 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of, yes, GMD of B by, yes, self GMD of C, self GMD of B, sorry, Henry per meter. What is LC? That is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of, yes, 
GMD of C by yes self GMD of C that is Henry per meter now see GMD of A GMD of B GMD of C are going to be equal then only LA LB LC are going to be equal if if GMD of A is equal to GMD of B is equal to GMD of C. Anyhow, self GMDs are not going to depend on the conductor distances. It is going to depend on subconductor configuration. Suppose if you take bundle conductors, bundle conductors are also called as subconductors. We are going to see the next bundle conductors and all. So I assume that self GMD of all the systems is equal. Okay. Uh, we are going to see that one also in, in the concept called bundle conductors. Now, then, yes, and uh, I am writing here self GMD of A equal to B equal to C. Okay. Then, LA is equal to LB is equal to LC. I am going to get means the inductance of all three phases is exactly equal. Sir, why you need inductance of all three phases exactly equal? Let's see. Let's see. First of all, GMD A, GMD B, GMD C are equal or not? Let's find a GMD here. Take uh, this one as D. Take this one as D. Why? Because symmetrical configuration. What is symmetrical configuration? If uh, all are equal, then symmetrical configuration. What is GMD of A? GMD is a. Uh, what is GMD? Geometric mean distance. Geometric mean distance. See. Uh, what is what it is what it is see suppose in an interview they may ask you what is GMD I, I, I'll discuss that also I'll discuss that also yeah we are here here right yes let me add a page let me add a page I'll discuss GMD and GMR also what is GMD see everyone knows that GMD means geometric mean distance but what it is it is an effective distance over which mutual magnetic flux linkage occurs means suppose if this is conductor a phase a this is phase b phase a flux is going to interact with phase b phase b flux is going to interact with phase a in the same way phase c is also there see uh, it is the distance over which mutual magnetic flux linkages occurs means uh, this gmd is going to give us the calculation about the uh, mutual inductance between one conductor and another conductor this is the name itself mutual inductance means uh, between one phase to another phase yes it is uh, the distance it is the distance over which over which mutual magnetic flux linkages mutual magnetic flux linkages occurs it is the distance over which mutual magnetic flux linkage occurs i will tell you how to find i will tell you how to find here observe see we are talking about a mutual magnetic flux linkage. I am going to calculate GMD of phase A. So phase A, in its vicinity, I have one phase that is B. What is the distance between A to B? D. Phase A is having one more conductor in its vicinity that is C. How many distance I have? Two distances. It is a geometric mean square root of D into D is D. Now GMD of B. If you come to B, B is having one conductor, one conductor or one phase in its vicinity that is a conductor A. The distance is D. Phase B is having another conductor in its vicinity or another phase in its vicinity that is a phase C. The distance between B to C is a D. I have two distances. That's why it is square root. That is equal to D. What is a GMD of C? That is equal to C is having a one phase in its vicinity that is A. Another phase in its vicinity that is a B. Means phase C is having two phases in its vicinity okay mutually so d into d again it is a square root of that is equal to d so if you look at gmds of all three phases are exactly equal if i'm going with what configuration symmetrical configuration that's why we get we get yes i write here see what is the advantage with symmetrical configuration let me write so gmd a gmd b gmd c are equal then la is equal to lb equal to lc now if load is also balanced, if load is also balanced, IA, IB, IC are also balanced. IA, IB, IC are also balanced. Now, what is the drop in phase A? Delta VA is equal to IA into XA. If I am neglecting the resistance drop, if I am neglecting the resistance drop, VA is equal to IA into XA, where XA is equal to omega into LA. Okay. And delta VB is equal to what? IB ib into xb delta vc or before to that itself uh, let me write this one ma. before to that itself let me write this yes 
I'm going to get uh, that implies I'm going to get x a is equal to x b is equal to x c. x a is equal to x b is equal to x c. I'm going to get this term in. So if if x a is equal to x b is equal to x c, then what we get uh, delta v a drop in phase a is equal to drop in phase b is equal to drop in phase c. That implies uh, receiving and voltage are balanced. Receiving and voltages are balanced. But for this one, one more condition that has to be satisfied is sending and voltage is anyhow balanced. Source voltage is anyhow balanced. load is also balanced then whether the receiving and voltage are balanced or not will be decided by the drop that is taking place in the transmission line the drop that is taking place in the, uh, taking place in the transmission line is going to be decided by the reactance of the transmission line phases if it is a symmetrical configuration all three phases are going to have same value of inductance L A equal to L B equal to L C. Then X A is equal to X B is equal to X C. Then delta V A, delta V B, delta V C are balanced. Source voltage are balanced. Balanced minus balanced is equal means balanced source voltage minus balanced uh, transmission line drops is equal to receiving and voltage which are also balanced. So receiving and voltage are balanced. Okay. What is the advantage of balanced system? Calculations are easy. First thing. and uh, see i i can say one more thing there is no radio interference if the system is not balanced no? see if uh, transmission lines are not uh, symmetrical then la not equal to lb not equal to lc then what happens uh, then what happens the current is also not balanced if the current is not balanced the flux is not balanced then phi a plus phi b plus, plus phi c is equal to zero or not equal to zero not equal to zero in a balanced system only phi a plus phi b plus phi c or ia plus ib plus ic or va plus vb plus vc is equal to zero in an unbalanced system that may be zero may not be zero that depends on our fate okay whether va plus vb plus vc or ia plus ib plus ic or phi a phi means flux phi a plus phi b plus phi c is equal to zero or not will be decided by our fate if not balanced means may or may not but if it is balanced definitely phi a plus phi b plus phi c is equal to zero we'll discuss about that radio interference also or this discussion is enough so that uh, If it is unbalanced, phi a plus phi b plus phi c is not equal to zero. That resultant amount of flux is going to cut with the neighboring communication lines, and some EMF will be induced in the communication lines. That EMF is going to corrupt the data which is going in the communication lines. Communication data that is called as radio interference or telephonic infer interference, or communication interference, okay, or TV interference. It is also called as. Okay, so that is one of the disadvantage. Major disadvantage is uh, if the system is unbalanced, the calculations are difficult, and one of the phase is going to be overloaded, another phase is going to be underloaded, and a neutral shifting will takes place. We are not going to find uh, a stable neutral in an unbalanced system. That is also one of the uh, important thing to discuss. What are the disadvantages of unbalanced systems? Since see, I'll tell you. If the system is unbalanced, see, uh, if you if you are giving unbalanced voltage uh, to a, an induction motor, then the torque produced by that one is also not that good. Okay, so a steady torque you may not get. The torque may increase or decrease. Like uh, see, uh, I can say the expected good amount of torque we may not get from the induction motor. Neutral of the generator is keep on shifting, or neutral of the load also keep on shifting if the system is unbalanced and. If the system is unbalanced on one phase, the load will be very high. On another phase, the load will be very low. Okay, and so due to overloading, some in some phases there be, there is a possibility for the melting down of the conductors. When current when conductor melt downs, it is going to be happen open circuit. That fault is called as open circuit faults. Or if the insulation damages due to heavy heat that is generated in a highly loaded phase in an unbalanced system, then the insulation may damage due to which the phase is going to touch with the live part or another phase which is called as a short circuit fault. Okay, so these many disadvantages we have with unbalanced system. Always we try to make our system to be balanced. We keep maximum efforts to make our system to be balanced. One of the effort is we want always. the configuration to be symmetrical but what is the major disadvantage with symmetrical configuration the major disadvantage with symmetrical configuration is economic disadvantage that is that is if you if you come here yes let's go back yeah if you come here this is a, a symmetrical configuration i am able to run two circuits at a time economic disadvantage now how to overcome this i want both i want my system to be balanced and i want to run two circuits at a time yes now the solution for this one is transposition of transmission lines yes transposition of transmission lines see 
practically practically this unsymmetrical or asymmetrical configuration is only preferred but with this configuration itself we are going to achieve that symmetrical configuration result that is uh, la equal to lb equal to lc we are going to get we are going to make gmd a equal to gmd b equal to gmd c with a procedure called transposition of transmission lines after this we have to go with the transposition of transmission lines how it is done now i think all of you got the idea practically we are going to have symmetrical or asymmetrical asymmetrical configuration only due to economic reason but technically we will fail that is system is going to be unbalanced to make system balanced with asymmetrical configuration we are going with a procedure called transposition of transmission lines after this we will discuss uh, radio interference on the transmission lines let's go to the next question that is radio interference on communication lines or simply radio interference okay after that we go for a transposition of transmission lines yes let me add some few pages here yes radio interference is having several names let's write all those names okay radio interference or tv interference or telephone interference or communication interference all are same yes radio interference or tv interference or communication interference or telephonic interference telephonic interference what is this yeah see there is a three phase transmission line phase a phase b so i am naming these as a b c and there are neighboring communication lines there are neighboring communications lines like this okay uh, don't feel that uh, this is also three phase communication lines are not going to have phase simple communication lines so these are power lines in fact we call these as uh, power lines these are our power lines these are communication lines communication lines now what happens is when current of ia is flowing in this then current of ib will flow in this current of ic will flow in this now ia will give a flux of phi a ib will give a flux of phi b ic will give a flux of phi c in these three phases uh, three currents are flowing ia ib ic three fluxes will be there phi a phi b and phi c if the system is balanced i just i explained you what does it mean by a balanced system if the system is balanced then only currents will be balanced It means uh, source load and the transmission line all must be balanced then only currents are said to be balanced if currents are balanced then only flux is said to be balanced now if the system is balanced phi a plus phi b plus phi c is equal to zero how much is the net flux that is cutting with the neighboring communication lines zero but if the system is unbalanced if the system is unbalanced it means to say see phi a plus phi b plus phi c phi n phi net i'll write phi net is equal to phi a plus phi b plus phi c is not equal to zero if the system is unbalanced if the system is yes unbalanced if the system is uh, unbalanced now that net flux is going to cut these communication lines then an emf e will be induced in these communication lines uh, which in result uh, make some current to flow and because of that current uh, the communication data whatever that is there in these communication lines is going to uh, i can say uh, disturb uh, or i can say it will be corrupted in fact okay so this is this is called as a radio interference or telephonic interference or tv interference or communication interference it is the interference of a power lines and net flux if the system is unbalanced with the neighboring communication lines is called as what telephonic or radio interference okay so the emf induced in this one will be measured in terms of uh, micro volt per decibel yes we are going to measure this one in terms of uh, 
माइक्रो वोल्ट पर डेसिबल्स माइक्रो वोल्ट पर डेसिबल्स what is the main reason for radio interference see because of this interference the communication data what we are sending that is going to be uh, corrupted means uh, at the receiving end side we are not going to get the same data what that is sent at the communication sending end side okay see in phone you are speaking something here the same has to be reached at the receiving end if something got added mixed in between then at the receiving end side you are going to get something nonsense right now see what is the main reason main reason for uh, this interference is the main reason the main reason for main reason for radio interference radio interference is the main reason for radio interference is uh, the system unbalance is an unbalanced system an unbalanced system yeah see uh, previously we discussed that system is unbalanced because of uh, many things source anyhow balanced suppose if load is also balanced if the transmission line configuration is symmetrical then definitely total system will be balanced but which one is advantageous for me symmetrical or asymmetrical configuration asymmetrical why because on a single tower i can run two circuits at a time yes that's why we are going for asymmetrical configuration but in turn that asymmetrical configuration making our system unbalanced due to which it is causing a radio interference okay now we, we are going to see the remedy also unbalanced system and another reason for the uh, for this communication interference is a corona see due to corona what is corona suppose if you take this one as a transmission line see this transmission line is operating at some voltage suppose a v okay if that voltage if that voltage is greater than some value see not only voltage we have to calculate electric field intensity see if the electric field intensity surrounding this conductor is more than 21.1 kv per centimeter okay i'll explain corona also let me give the point here then we'll go for corona okay yeah so the main reason for radio interference is unbalanced system and unbalanced system and another reason for another reason for yes another reason for radio interference is for radio interference interference is corona discharge is corona discharge what does it mean by corona discharge let's understand corona discharge suppose uh, if i am taking a conductor if i am taking a transmission line or let me take a transmission tower like this very simple it is we are keeping that one on the ground yes we explained this one very clearly this is the cross arm and these are overhead line insulators for simplicity i am taking like this yes these are overhead line insulators and this is the transmission line now this transmission line is operating at some voltage surrounding this conductor surrounding this uh, transmission line there is some electric field intensity e is equal to v per phase by the distance very simple formula very simple formula i am taking or see what are the units kv per centimeter kv per centimeter per phase only we have to take per phase only we have to take voltage kv per centimeter why because i am talking about single phase i am talking about per phase okay or e is equal to v by r into ln of d by r kv per centimeter this is the formula from formula from electromagnetic fields okay this is a very simple formula if you are taking one conductor one straight conductor this this can be applicable for any conductor or from our power system so the e is equal to yes v per phase by gmd sorry self gmd self self gmd into ln of gmd by self gmd gm by gmd by self gmd kv per centimeter okay now electric field intensity is going to depend upon two things one is operating voltage and one is distance and one is distance if uh, my question my my points are here here observe they may ask you like this in the interviews what what is the reason for corona what is the reason for corona electric field intensity many people will say that sir high voltage no electric field intensity even with low voltage also we can get a corona if the distance is very less okay if uh, if yes if 
electric field intensity is greater than 21.1 kV per centimeter this is the rms value or 30 kV per centimeter this is peak value peak value then then the air surrounding a conductor then the air surrounding surrounding the conductor surrounding the conductor starts starts ionizing ionizing okay see when it starts ionizing it behaves like a conductor because of which there is a possibility for the short circuit with the neighboring live bodies or elements okay the main problem with corona is the main problem with corona is or the severe problem with corona is uh, a short circuit uh, between two conductors suppose I, i'll tell you like this this is an example yeah i'm not writing everything yes this is a, a phase a conductor neighbor this is phase a neighboring to this conductor there is another conductor or another phase suppose say this is phase b okay this is phase b now what happens is because of this ionization yes because of this electric field intensity which is greater than 21.1 kv per centimeter the surrounding air start ionizing the surrounding air starts ionizing now here also this also will start ionizing yes this also will start ionizing like this yes let me show here yes this also will start ionizing like this after some time yes both are going to touch like this phase a phase b which fault is going to happen line to line fault a short circuit is going to happen this is the main problem due to corona but being an engineer we calculate this distance this distance we are going to calculate we keep enough distance in such a way that this type of short circuit should not happen and this may be a phase this may be an another conductor maybe some other conductor or it may be a communication line okay need not to be our power transmission line this is our power transmission in phase here this may be some other conductor okay so there is a possibility to happen a dead short circuit between two conducting bodies due to this corona due to this corona this is the main disadvantage but before we install our transmission line we do all these calculations and we are going to keep enough distance in such a way that this type of short circuit will not happen this problem will be solved at the time of design itself then student may raise a question sir why don't we keep more and more distance see if you are going to keep more and more distance the place required for the installation of the tower is going to be increased there is a thing called right of way or o w right of way what does it mean by that we have to we means the transmission corporation has to pay to the farmer who to whom that land belongs to where the transmission tower is installed this is the land this is the transmission tower installed so in this uh, area of the land the farmer is unable to do the cultivation even if you do also the uh, the plants under that uh, transmission lines uh, may not grow properly they may not give fruitful result to him that's why transmission corporation every year has to pay some amount to the farmers to whom the land belongs to this is called as right of way or ow so if you take more space more we have to pay okay there is a constraint on space also that's why we can't we are not in a position to keep too much distance but we can keep some distance right now this is the main problem due to corona that got addressed while the designing itself then what is another problem with corona see though the distance is more ionization will not stop ionization may takes place if uh, the electric field intensity is greater than 21.1 kv per centimeter or greater than 30 kv per centimeter peak value okay because of that ionization see who is giving energy for the ionization the electrical energy what is flowing in the transmission line is unnecessarily used for the purpose of this ionization okay so you are going to observe some hissing noise and uh, if uh, see there is a corona called uh, visual corona visual corona means uh, which are which is visible to our eyes which is visible to our eyes in the form of a violet glow violet glow see you are you are able to hear some sound and some light you are able to see some light means all that is energy so i am expecting electrical energy to flow from sending and to receiving and through this transmission line but some part of that energy is getting wasted in the form uh, in uh, for ionization and uh, for, for creating light and sound okay so what is the second disadvantage with the corona is uh, power loss the main disadvantage is short circuit but that got addressed already by keeping enough distance but the second major disadvantage of corona is a power loss yes the major disadvantage of 
the major disadvantage of corona is power loss corona is what ma power loss okay what is the severe disadvantage short circuit that got already addressed no issues with that okay so power loss is going to happen now we are going to consider power loss due to corona for the voltages greater than or equal to 220 kv okay yes let me write here let me write here see generally generally in transmission in transmission for voltage is greater than 220 kv 220 kv yes corona and power loss due to corona power loss due to corona is considered sir you mean to say sir for less than 220 kv corona is not there may be there but its effect is very less it's not a significant effect that's why we are not considering uh, this corona loss for the voltage is less than 220 kv sir this 220 kv is line voltage or phase voltage pakka line voltage i told you number of times in the given data or if i am not mentioning whether that is line voltage or phase voltage by default you have to treat that as a line voltage okay yes now what is the disadvantage of corona corona the major disadvantage of corona is what a power loss then how to how to reduce it how to reduce it bundle conductors are used to reduce corona bundle conductors are used to reduce corona yes how bundle conductors reduce corona i'll explain now yes see bundle conductors are bundle conductors are used to decrease corona what does it mean by bundle conductors means per phase we are going to have more than one conductor per phase i i'll 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 draw here this is single conductor system i'm drawing here single conductor system yes this is single conductor system means per phase you are going to have only one conductor per phase you are going to have only one conductor let me show this is phase a and this is the conductor of phase a now this is single conductor system so i'm writing here single conductor single conductor system this is now let me put the heading here bundle conductor system bundle conductor system let me draw the diagram okay yeah this is the tower we are putting that one on the ground yes yeah and uh, observe here carefully ma observe here yeah this is uh, now instead of uh, instead of taking like this we are going to go like this i am taking two conductors per phase two conductors per phase i am taking now here very important questions i am going to discuss so this is uh, one conductor this is another conductor so this is phase a now this is also phase a i will name this one as uh, these conductors as i will name these conductors as uh, this one as a1 and this one as a2 instead of uh, instead of one conductor we are going to take two conductors per phase if you are taking two subconductors per phase suppose if you take uh, uh, three subconductors per phase here you have to take uh, three this type of conductors then what is the relationship here what is the relationship here see here this is this is carrying current of i this both the must carry a current of i this is carrying a current of i1 this is carrying a current of i2 then what is the relationship i must be equal to i1 plus uh, i2 area of cross section if i take a here if i am taking a uh, a1 here and if i am taking area of cross section a2 here now the relationship is uh, a must be equal to a1 plus uh, a2 this is a uh, pi r square capital r is the radius of single conductor system then pi r1 square plus pi r2 square so pi pi will get cancel now if r1 is equal to r2 yes let me take here if uh, if uh, r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r then r square is equal to 2 r square then small r is equal to r by root 2 means the radius of each subconductor or each bundle conductor is uh, the total radius of the conductor by root 2 times by root 2 times yes but here few points we have to understand uh, here the cost of bundle conductors is more when compared to the cost of a single conductor why because here how many insulators i kept here two here i need four insulators why because both are having same voltage 
insulation level will remain same but the insulation amount required will increase insulation level and insulation amount both are different level means it's going to depend on the voltage same voltage from here to here suppose if this is 220 kV this is also 220 kV but here instead of one conductor I am taking two conductors bundle conductors that's why here what happens ma insulation amount will increase because of that cost is going to increase yes but uh, why we are going for bundle conductors to reduce the loss due to corona see if the loss due to corona reduced means economy is saved for us but again the money requirement for the installation of these conductors is increasing therefore we have to take uh, the relationship between uh, corona loss saving and uh, this uh, uh, insulation amount increment both uh, see if the law if the corona loss uh, if, if the loss due to corona we are going to reduce uh, two means uh, we are going to reduce uh, the loss due to corona very less means uh, we are going to save more amount with the reduction of corona loss than this increment of cost then we go for bundle conductors otherwise bundle conductors are not economical yes see there is a trade off between there is a trade off between this bundle conductors and corona loss if uh, see with the reduction of corona loss with the bundle conductors if i am able to save some 100 rupees because of this uh, uh, this insulation uh, i i am getting extra cost of 50 rupees then uh, what, which one is profitable corona loss reduction with bundle conductors but uh, this uh, installation itself is making a cost of 150 rupees or 100 rupees uh, then going for bundle conductors to reduce corona is a meaningless task yes or not yes now here uh, uh, let me draw these bundle conductors again something i want to show that is uh, called as space r what is space r i'll tell you space r is a metallic body yes let me show you yes yes these are the two conductors i am not showing a length so these two i am going to join with a metallic body i am going to join with a metallic body this is called as a space r space r then student immediately will ask sir you are joining those two with help of a metallic body due to which uh, there is a possibility for the short circuit or a dead short circuit will takes place nothing will happen why because nothing will happen why because i'll tell you the current that is flowing in this one is zero why because the voltage here it is va at an angle of some theta this is also va at an angle of theta both are operating at operating at the same voltage see it, this is a metallic body space r is a metallic body space r is a metallic body what is the purpose of this space r to maintain good mechanical strength see we are not connecting those two with help of space r whenever wind comes there is a possibility for those two oscillate if we are joining together then the oscillations will decrease then the oscillations will decrease that's why we are using spacer that's why you are using spacer so uh, in spacer there is no current flowing why because both the bundle conductors are operating at the same voltage why we are going for bundle conductors to reduce corona sir how corona will be reduced with bundle conductors this is one of the very good important question and one more very good important question with respect to interviews is what is this spacer if if a spacer is made up of metal then why current is not flowing why short circuit is not happening why because both are operating at the same voltage the current uh, this is carrying current of i1 this is carrying a current of uh, i2 if the area of cross section of both the conductors is same then i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i i by 2 in fact see within single conductor system if the current flowing is i if, if uh, both are having same radius or same diameter then the current that is flowing in these through these two conductors is i by 2 and i by 2 bundle conductors are also called as subconductors multi conductors now the question the million dollars question here is uh, how bundle conductors are reducing corona let's see what is the main reason for corona electric field intensity write the formula for electric field intensity see i am drawing here this is single conductor system single conductor system this is this is single conductor system this is phase a this is phase b this is phase c yes this is uh, dab yes and this is uh, dbc yes and this is uh, d c a d a b d b c and d c a this is single conductor system same in the same way bundle conductors i am going to draw see rating is same voltage rating current rating power rating everything is same from here to here single conductor to bundle conductor bundle conductor then only we can we will be in a position to able we are in a position to compare okay yes this is bundle conductor system yes phase a this is a1 this is a2 yes these are the conductors of phase b this is b1 this is b2 yes these are phase c this is c1 and c2 the distance between this and this is 
DBC. The distance from here to here is uh, D A C or D C A. The distance from here to here is yes uh, D A B. Yes. So C1 and C2. Now one thing that is very important here is uh, the spacing between the subconductors we call it as yes uh, subconductor spacing. Subconductor spacing S. Yes. Now here, here the formula for electric field intensity E is equal to V by GM uh, self. Uh, sorry, I can write it as GMR into V per phase. This is please V by GMR into ln of uh, GMD by GMR. GMD by GMR. Here the formula will change. What is that formula? Let me write. Here the formula will change. What is that formula? Let me write. So E is equal to V per phase. The units are kV per centimeter. Ma. The units must be mentioned kV per centimeter. V by self GMD into yes ln of GMD by self GMD. GMD by self GMD. Yes, this is also kV per centimeter. Observe it. Here it is GMR, here it is self GMD. See, self GMD is greater than GMR. Why? Because this extra spacing, subconductor spacing, the spacing between the, the conductors of same same phase is called as self GMD. It is a effective distance over which self magnetic flux linkages occurs is called as self GMD. What is GMR? It is the radius of the conductor over which self magnetic flux linkage occurs is called as GMR. What is GMD? It is the effective distance over which mutual magnetic flux linkages is called as GMD. What is self GMD? Self means same. GMD means distance. Okay. Therefore, the definition is like this. What is self GMD? It is the effective distance over which self magnetic flux linkage. Why? Because if current is flowing in A1, flux of A1 will cut with A2. Flux of A2 will cut with A1. A1 with A2 is mutual, A2 with A1 is mutual. A1 with A1 is self, A2 with A2 is self. Now, but A1, A2 belongs to the same phase. Same phase, that's why we call it as self. But A1 with A2 or A2 with A1, it, this is one with another, that's why it is called as GMD. Therefore, the total we call it as what? Self GMD. The total we call it as self GMD. Yes. Now, observe here carefully. Self GMD is going to be greater than, I can write here, self GMD. Let me take a page, ma. Yes. Self GMD is going to be greater than. Yeah. Self GMD is greater than GMR. That implies electric field intensity decreases. That implies corona decreases. And I told you there is a trade-off. See, to reduce corona loss, we are going for bundle conductors. Again, bundle conductors, if you want to install, insulation cost will increase and there are many other costs also. Now, for what voltages the bundle conductors are economical? For the operating voltages, for the operating voltages, voltages greater than or equal to 220 kV, bundle conductors are economical. Bundle conductors are economical. For the operating voltage greater than 220 kV, bundle conductors are economical. For less than that, bundle conductors are not economical. What does it mean by that? Even if you use bundle conductors, loss due to corona will decrease, but the cost of bundle conductors is going to be more than the loss what you saved. So there is no point in that. There is no point in that. Now, uh, bundle conductors, uh, this is the this is the purpose why we are going, we are going for bundle conductors. But uh, with bundle conductors, we are going to get many advantages. We are going to see. We are going to see what are the all advantages of bundle conductors. Let's come back here. We are at uh, radio interference. In fact, radio interference. Yes. Come back. So the main reason for this radio interference is uh, unbalanced system. See, unbalanced system main reason is uh, for is due to asymmetrical configuration. Then how to make it? How to make it? Uh, yes, we'll see. And another reason for radiant reference is corona discharge. With bundle conductors, we are reducing corona. Bundle conductors are reducing this radio interference. With bundle conductors, our radio interference will be reduced. That is one of the important point. Okay. Now, how to reduce uh, this uh, uh, radio interference? Means how to make uh, an asymmetrical system into symmetrical model? Let's see. That is a uh, transposition of transmission lines. Yes. What is that? What is that? Ma? What is transposition of transmission lines? Now, suppose if there are 
three phases like this phase A, phase B, phase C. Okay, let me draw with the three different different colors. Okay, for your visualization purpose. So this is phase A. Phase A. Yes. This is uh, phase B. Yes. This is phase C. We name it as R Y B. That's why we taken those colors. Yes. This is R. Red, yellow, blue. Practical colors. Okay. Practical possible colors in the industry. Red, yellow, and blue. Now, if you see R is uh, so GMD of R Y B not equal. You can find because R to Y, Y to B, and R to B distance is not same. If all three distances are equal, then only uh, GMDs are equal. Then only uh, inductance for phase is going to be equal. Then uh, X A X X A is equal to X B is equal to X C. Then uh, delta V A, delta V B, delta V C are equal. Then receiving and voltage are going to be balanced. Then uh, all the currents in the system are also balanced. Then uh, Phi A plus Phi B plus Phi C is equal to zero. Then the net flux that is cutting with the neighboring communication lines is zero. No EMF will be induced in the neighboring communication lines. Yes, no radiant radiant interference. But here very clearly system is asymmetrical. But why we are going for asymmetrical con configuration because of uh, economic reason. That is, uh, on a single tower, two circuits I can run at a time if I am going with asymmetrical configuration. Now, that's why what we are doing is what we are doing is we are going to change. We are going to change the we are going to change the positions of these conductors at regular intervals in such a way that every conductor is going to experience all three positional GMDs. Every conductor is going to experience all three positional GMDs. This process is called as transposition. This process is called as what? Transposition of transmission lines. This process is called as transposition of transmission lines. How it is? I'll tell you. The total length I'm taking as L. Let me take the total length as L. Total length of the transmission line as L. Now this is L by 3. This is L by 3. This is L by 3, right? Now, what I'm doing is, what I'm doing is, see, this uh, red R phase is there, no? Now, that is there here at position 1. Now, I'll change its position to this position, okay? Actually, this is phase R only, phase R only. Therefore, I'll replace this one with phase R. This is phase R, okay? This is uh, phase R. Let me draw. This is phase R, not L O. Okay, yes. Means uh, the conductor R for some time in position one. See, let's take this one as position one, this one as position two, this one as position three. For some time it is in position one. After some time it came to position two. After some time, not some time, some distance in fact. After some distance, and I made equal distance. In position three it is. In position three, yes. In position three. Now observe here, observe here, this uh, yellow phase is there, this yellow phase is there. Now this is in position, in this position, yes. Now what I do is, I'll take here to here, yes. I'll take from here to here. Now position 2 to position 3 it came. After that I'll change this one to position 3. Means every conductor is going to experience all three positions for equal amount of distance equal amount of distance this uh, this phase is there no i'll change to here yes i'll change to here yes now observe here now observe all of you carefully here yes this is called as transposition of transmission lines what is transposition of transmission lines exchange of the positions of power conductors at equal intervals of distance in such a way that each conductor is going to experience all three positional GMDs equally. Okay, every power conductor is going to experience all three distances, all three positional GMDs equally is called as transposition of transmission lines. Now, this uh, if you calculate its GMD, it is going to be equal. GMD of A, B, and C is going to be equal. Then LA equal to LB equal to LC, XA equal to XB equal to XC, Delta V equal to Delta V equal to Delta VC. And uh, receiving and voltage are balanced, current is balanced, and uh, Phi A, Phi B, Phi C are balanced. Now, uh, very happily, net flux that is cutting with the communication lines is equal to zero. There is no radio interference or communication interference. So, this way we are going to 
we are going to reduce uh, or we are going to completely eliminate uh, radio interference with the transmission of transmission lines now one student asked one doubt sir how we are going to do this one at towers at towers we, are, we can do this at towers we are going to exchange the positions of uh, uh, these four conductors a to b b to c and c to a like this yes or we take an r y b here after this we have to see what are the advantages of bundle conductors see with this total radio interference may not be eliminated why because radio interference is mainly due to two things one is uh, because of uh, asymmetrical configuration yes we did it symmetrical with help of transposition another one is uh, due to corona discharge due to corona discharge with bundle conductors we are in able we are in a position to reduce corona but not completely eliminate corona there will be small amount of radio interference because of corona yes which can be neglected after this we let's see what are the advantages of bundle conductors yeah bundle conductors are called as multi conductors or sub conductors see bundle conductors or let me take the heading advantages of advantages of bundle conductors bundle conductors yeah let me draw its uh, diagram how uh, how bundle conductor system looks okay i think we already drawn this tower diagram and all this is the cross arm okay for giving the support uh, to the transmission line yeah yes observe it carefully this is phase a for example i am taking and this is uh, one conductor of phase a i can say yes this is the conductor this is the conductor or not required to show like this yes i won't show like this this is a conductor a1 i call this is a1 this is a2 this is phase a okay and these two are joined with a metallic uh, metallic conductor to maintain good uh, stability mechanical stability please okay so when wind comes so there is a possibility for these to oscillate to avoid that we are connecting uh, uh, we are connecting a metallic device which is called as spacer we already seen that sir if it is a metallic device both will get short circuit no both belongs to the same phase same phase same voltage same frequency there is no short circuit if phase is not same then definitely a dead short circuit will take place we should not do that it is called as spacer space r it is, it is a metallic one it is a metallic one current will not flow the through this uh, space r i is equal to i can write it as a zero but because voltage is same phase is same frequency is same everything is same therefore no current will flow now let's see what are the advantages see see with bundle conductors first one is with bundle conductors with bundle conductors reactance of the transmission line will decrease sir how do you know that reactance will decrease see previously one transmission line only one phase see i, I can tell you one conductor whose reactance is x now there is there are two in parallel suppose if both are having reactance of x and x x in parallel with x will be x by 2 x by 2 okay so reactance I, i won't say that it is exactly half that depends on the configuration reactance of the transmission line will decrease series reactance of the transmission line will decrease see uh, with bundle conductors uh, reactance of the transmission line will decrease due to that voltage drop will decrease voltage drop in the transmission line will decrease yes with that voltage profile at the receiving end with that voltage profile at the receiving end receiving sorry receiving end improves okay see what is the main cause of voltage drop in power system series reactance resistance drop is very less in fact most of the times resistance drop will be neglected in power systems when compared to reactance drop with bundle conductors reactance got decreased due to which voltage profile got improved the second point is the second point is see what is p p is equal to mod vs 
mod vr by x into sin delta yes if uh, x decreases to maintain uh, same amount of uh, electric power transfer to have same amount of electric power transfer then uh, i can say if x decreases this particular part will increase if you want to maintain this one as constant then what we have to do is uh, we have to decrease uh, this uh, sin delta means delta we have to decrease let me write if uh, reactance decreases that implies p max increases what is p max so this is p max p max into sin delta that mod vs mod vr by x is taken as p max into sin delta p max and uh, the total function is p max into sin delta in megawatts p max increases that implies sin delta decreases that implies we have to decrease that implies delta will decrease that implies stability increases stability will increase yeah with the bundle conductor's power is simply how much less is the rotor angle rotor angle that load angle delta that much more the system is stable we already saw okay we drawn this uh, p max into sin delta and uh, we uh, verified that uh, before 90 it is stable after 90 it is unstable exactly at 90 we are unable to say it is uh, marginally stable or marginally unstable it is at the verge of stability but uh, how much far away below from 90 that much more the system stable is means i can write uh, with bundle conductors the power system stability will increase power system stability will increase yes third point here is third point here is i can say see uh, with bundle conductors we are decreasing corona yes with the bundle conductors we are decreasing corona with uh, the decrement of corona uh, radio interference will decrease see one of the main reason for radio interference is one of the another reason not main reason main reason is unbalanced resistance one of the another reason for uh, uh, radio interference is corona discharge the corona discharge will decrease see this is the main reason in fact we got for bundle conductors with the bundle conductors with bundle conductors yes corona decreases that implies radio interference decreases radio interference radio interference decreases radio interference decreases yes and what is surge impedance ma surge impedance zc is equal to under root of l by c with bundle conductors in fact inductance got decreased that's why x got decreased with bundle conductors uh, the primary point is inductance will decrease inductance will decrease then only what is uh, x uh, 2 pi f l x is decreasing means f is constant 2 pi is constant right f is 50 hertz in our india power system yes in us and other countries uh, see entire world is divided into two parts uh, us based countries and uk based countries with respect to frequency i'm talking about okay all uk based countries uh, like india china uh, or sri lanka Bangladesh, most of the Asian countries are maintaining 50 hertz. US based countries like uh, United States of America, Argentina, these nearby countries, all those are maintaining 60 hertz. Okay, yeah. So, when what happens? There's no effect on C. In, fa in fact, C increases. In fact, C increases. I'll show you how C increases. C increases. What is uh, L? L is equal to, yes, L is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of gmt will remain same why because we are not changing the distance between one phase to another phase but what we are doing we are in, we are making means we are using more than one conductor per phase because of that self gmt increases this is self gmt henry per meter let me write here so because of uh, one conductor self gmt increases that implies uh, inductance will decrease Let's write capacitance formula. Let's write capacitance formula. What is C? C per phase. In fact, this is also L per phase. C per phase is equal to 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r by ln of yes GMD by yes self GMD. GMD by self GMD farad per meter. See if a self gmd is increasing yes with bundle conductors the only thing that is going to change is self gmd increases instead of one conductor per phase we are using more than one conductor per phase bundle conductors are also called as a multi conductor subconductors 
okay now what happens this denominator decreases therefore c for phase increases now you see l is decreasing c is increasing therefore zc decreases zc decreases means what uh, surge impedance loading what is that uh, v square by zc observe here we got zc decrease this is decreasing means surge impedance loading or natural loading of the transmission line will increase natural loading of the transmission line will increase next uh, what is another point see with bundle conductors l decrease that implies x decrease that implies what is the reactive power drawn by the transmission line see that x or l is a series element or shunt element series element for series elements we have to write the formula i square x so q of uh, inductance of transmission line q line is equal to i square x decreases and with bundle conductor c is increasing that implies x c in fact let's write this one as x line okay x c of the line transmission line will i can say decrease why what is x c x c is equal to let me write here let me write here some people will confuse 1 by omega c of the transmission line now as we got that as we got that c increases xc will decrease that implies qc of the transmission line v square by xc v square by xc what is v square by xc see our uh, capacitance of a transmission line is a shunt element shunt element for shunt elements yes uh, this is the formula we have to use v square by xc so xc got decreased qc got increased see QC is what power uh, lagging reactive power supply but it is supply okay this QL is lagging reactive power but it is absorbing see we know that we know that inductor absorbs lagging reactive power capacitor supplies lagging reactive power capacitor absorbs uh, leading reactive power so let's take this one as leading reactive power but it is absorbing it means to say this amount of power this amount of lagging reactive power it is supplying means uh, simply by default reactive power means lagging reactive power so I can say like this the reactive power see the reactive power supplied by the transmission line increases and the reactive power drawn by the transmission line decreases overall power factor of the transmission line will increase so one of the very important point with bundle conductors with bundle conductors with bundle conductors yes the reactive power the reactive power the reactive power drawn by the drawn by the transmission line transmission line yes the reactive power drawn by the transmission line decreases and under the reactive power and the reactive power i'm writing q and the reactive power supplied by the transmission line supplied by the transmission line increases that implies power factor of the transmission line increases increases okay here again there is a confusing point to the student sir you mean to say reactive power supply is more than uh, reactive power drawn on no no i didn't say that what i said is suppose previously it is supplying some 1 MVR, now it may rise to 2 MVR. Previously, if it is drawing uh, or if it is absorbing some 10 MVR, that may be reduced to 8 MVR. I am not saying here that the reactive power supply is more than reactive power absorption. Reactive power absorption will decrease as that of the previous value. Reactive power supply will increase as that of the previous value. That's all. Okay. You see how many advantages we got. Uh, with bundle conductors okay so first of all why why we went for or one more point also we have to say i'll tell you what is that point last but not the least point this is five sixth uh, serial number see what is pe p is equal to p max into sine delta yes megawatts so pe is equal to what is p max mod vs mod vr by x into sine delta megawatts now observe here with the decrement of inductance inductive reactance will decrease i can say p max will increase you don't want 
you don't want the improvement of stability you want to maintain the same stability now i don't want to decrease this i don't want to decrease this then what happens pe will increase means if you are compromising at the stability i i am not saying that you have to reduce the stability if you are okay with the previous stability angle then the active or real power transfer capability of the transmission line increase but if if you don't want that if you want to keep this one as constant you don't want any improvement in the real power transfer then stability will improve stability will improve yes yeah so if 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 we maintain same stability if we maintain same stability maintain yes same stability then if we maintain same stability then yes what happens is the real power transfer the real power or active power power transfer capability transfer capability of the transmission line increases the transmission line will increase yes the real power transfer capacity will increase or if you maintain same power transfer then if you maintain same power transfer then yes uh, power system stability will increase this, this is one of the very important thing we, we want uh, our system to be more stable how much less is the rotor angle rotor, rotor load angle that much more the system is stable so these are the advantages of bundle conductors we went for just one thing that is we want to reduce the corona loss anyhow corona loss is decreased yeah first of all we forgot that point that is that is the main thing we went okay loss due to corona decreases see loss due to due to corona decreases sir how it is how it is what is electric field intensity e is equal to e in kv per centimeters is equal to v per phase in kv by yes sir self gmd into self gmd into ln of gmd by gmd by self gmd gmd by self gmd kv per centimeter we already wrote now with uh, bundle conductors this particular self gmd will increase because of that this electric field intensity will decrease what is the main cause of uh, corona electric field intensity if electric field intensity rate de decreases then obviously corona will decrease so this is what we went for bundle conductors but how many advantages it given you saw already so bundle conductors are uh, very much advantageous uh, when compared to normal conductors but there is a equation for that economic equation what is that bundle conductors are economical for the operating voltages greater than or equal to 220 kv below 220 kv what are all the advantages you got of, with that you are able to get some 10 rupees say for example but uh, with the installation of bundle conductors the expenditure is 15 rupees means 5 rupees you are going to loss see uh, at the at the basics uh, at the starting stage we will think that uh, our uh, technicalities are important but uh, when it comes to business we are selling obviously all uh, distribution companies transmission companies generation companies are selling power to various consumers they have to make a revenue so for making revenue definitely there is a trade off it's not that sir for 11 kv also you use bundle conductors and then all these advantages i'm going to get okay you can do that but uh, at the cost of the profit yes then your profit will be decreased or it is not at all economical you may you, you may enter into losses also okay so bundle conductors are economical for the operating voltage greater than or equal to 220 let me write that note point note bundle conductors are economical bundle conductors are economical for the operating voltages for the operating voltages greater than or equal to 220 kv greater than or equal to 220 kv so these are all the advantages of bundle conductors much so it's a very good concept in fact in many interviews uh, these questions are asked they may ask you how can i improve stability 
one of the method is using bundle conductors there are a lot of methods to improve stability in fact the stability is divided into two parts transient stability another one is steady state stability we will see under a separate heading called power system stability ma power system stability let's go to the next discussion ma yeah what is the question this question see all the questions what i am discussing in this session in this marathon or from previously asked questions from previously number of times in many interviews asked what is the question for what operating voltages bundle conductors are economical we already saw that we already saw that for the operating voltages greater than or equal to 220 kv for the operating voltages greater than or equal to 220 kv bundle conductors are economical 220 kv we already saw this one let's see the next question ma yeah what are the types of conductors used in transmission? Yes, we have various types of conductors. One is a solid, solid conductor. Second one is stranded, stranded. Why we are going from solid to stranded? So the reason people may say like a uh, skin effect, but apart from that, the main reason is a transportation problem. If it is a solid conductor, solid rod-like structure, it is a we are unable to transport it from one place to another place. If it is a standard one, we can make in the form of spirals, round spirals, and we can transport from one place to another place. And uh, one more reason is skin effect. In solid conductor, skin effect is very high. What is skin effect? We already saw. Okay, it is the concentration of alternating current only on the surface of the conductor. Uh, it is called as skin effect. It is due to the flux linkages. It is due to the more number of flux linkages at the center part of the conductor. Next, uh, in this one, third one is uh, composite standard. Composite. Composite. Stranded. Solid, standard, composite standard. Okay. What is the difference between standard and composite standard? In standard, all aluminum conductors we, we may use. But uh, to increase mechanical strength, the central layer anyhow is not going to carry current. Therefore, we are replacing the central conductor with uh, uh, steel to increase mechanical strength. Uh, it is called as composite standard. For example, uh, this one is ACSR, aluminum conductor steel reinforced. Example for this one is AAC, all aluminum conductor. Which one is used practically? This is the one which is used practically for transmission. Okay. And after that, uh, we have halo conductor, halo. So where halo conductors are used for the making of bus bars, what is a bus bar? Suppose if you, uh, bus bar is a structure like this, it's a halo one, okay? There are a number of tappings on this, there are number of incomings and number of outgoing tappings on the bus bar. So as there are more tappings on the bus bar, we made it as halo so that, uh, so that see halo means it's a uh, area of cross section is going to increase due to which again corona volt, see electric field intensity will decrease and corona loss is going to decrease. See due to that, we are making this one halo. Okay. And this bus bar, we are going to rest it on some, some body. Okay. Some body with some sufficient insulation. Okay. Mostly you will find bus bars in the substations bus bar bus bar simply in network analysis we'll treat it like a node bus bar is a uh, we'll treat it as a node it's a point uh, where uh, many number of incomings and many number of outgoings are present so this is bus bar okay halo conductor all our uh, transmission line conductors are made, made up of aluminum you know the reason why aluminum we are preferring over copper steel and gold copper uh, sorry steel and gold or uh, very high in cost that's why those two are eliminated among copper and uh, uh, i can say aluminum we are preferring aluminum when compared to copper because of uh, that more cross section area for the same power loss we are getting yes and copper is uh, less available when compared to aluminum when compared to aluminum and the cost of the copper is also less when compared to aluminum so like that there are a number of uh, reasons why we are going for aluminum okay let's go to the next question ma read it read it Explain transposition of transmission lines. We already had done. We already done. It is uh, the exchange of uh, uh, positions of the transmission line at uh, frequent uh, intervals is called as transposition. Yes. Read the next question. We are done with that. See what are the performance indices of a transmission line? Yes. How one is going to uh, give the performance of a transmission line? How to measure the performance of a transmission line? The first one is voltage regulation. Yes. First one is voltage regulation and the second one is efficiency. Efficiency. These two are the performance indices of a transmission line. Means uh, 
based on these two whether a transmission line is working properly means uh, according to our requirements or not we can decide performance indices how the performance of a student is estimated with help of his mark report or, or progress report or report card yes in the same way if you measure these two and those are good values in fact uh, see regulation should be less uh, regulation should be less how much less is the regulation that much more is the voltage profile at the receiving end and i need more efficiency i need more efficiency these are the two performance indices of a transmission line ma let's go to the next question ma read the question or it is classification of transmission lines yes this question is a subjective question see according to uh, see first of all what is the need of classification what is the need of classification see entire network analysis we are going with the lumped parameter models means uh, suppose if i take this one as a conductor where uh, this conductor resistance is located it is located at this end or this end or the middle it is uniformly distributed throughout its length it is uniformly distributed throughout its length but for our simplicity purpose by using network analysis we are assuming resistance as an element concentrated at some place but that is valid up to some extent beyond that extent it is going to give erroneous results so depending on such some parameters some parameters we are going to uh, classify the transmission line so that see for that for that criteria this classification will give correct results if not uh, we are going to get wrong results okay i'll tell you for example yeah based on electrical length or wavelength see first one is based on based on electrical or electrical length electrical length or wavelength wavelength transmission lines are classified as one is short another one is long there is no medium based on electrical length or wavelength electrical length or wavelength okay yeah what is uh, wavelength wavelength is what is wavelength is we'll take it as a lambda that is equal to 2 pi by beta 2 pi by beta okay see uh, i can say what is wavelength let me let me define wavelength let me define wavelength okay lambda what does it mean it is the physical length required by the transmission line to complete one full wave okay it is it is the physical length physical length required by transmission line to complete one full wave one full wave what is a full wave 2 pi radians 2 pi radians is a full wave yeah so this is radians this is radians per second then you are going to get uh, radians okay or i can write here yeah wavelength is equal to 2 pi by beta okay so it is the physical length required by the transmission line to complete one full wave okay then we have to understand more about this uh, wavelength first of all uh, what is lambda what is beta about these parameters also we have to understand uh, here then we can go for another classification that is based on physical length in fact uh, why we have to take physical length to con uh, length into consideration that also we have to see ma let's understand what is wavelength in depth okay let me take a white page let's understand what is wavelength before uh, going to the wavelength uh, every transmission line is going to have a series impedance of r plus j omega l i'm taking this one in ohm per kilometer if i take a transmission line as a distributed parameter model practically all transmission lines are distributed only but we are taking for our simplicity purpose as lumped in short and medium even in long also we are taking every kilometer resistance inductance and capacitance and shunt conductance as a lumped again okay it is distributed for 1 1 km but again for 1 km we are taking it as lumped that is a small i can say uh, assumption that assumption is not going to affect too much in our results therefore we are able to take it otherwise if that is also not giving correct answer then we have to take completely uh, it as a distributed parameter model and the uh, shunt uh, abundance i will take it as g plus j omega c this is more per kilometers now yeah 
Now, if you observe carefully, yes, gamma is equal to under root of small z into small y. What is that? Under root of g plus j omega c. r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c. This is called as propagation constant. Gamma is called as what ma? Propagation constant. This will tell you how a wave is moving from sending end to receiving end. Now for a lossless line or this gamma if you simplify you are going to get from alpha plus j beta I can take. Okay, and the units are per kilometer. Okay, see this is ohm per kilometer. This is more per kilometer. Ohm more will get cancelled. You have under root of per kilometer into per kilometer, under root of per kilometer square that you're going to get per kilometer. That's all per kilometer. Okay, gamma. Now let me write what is gamma. What is the significance of it? So what gamma will tell us is what gamma will tell us is gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta per kilometer per kilometer this alpha will tell us the attenuation of the wave means if you are giving some value at the sending end side at the receiving end side most of the times we will experience the reduction of the magnitude of the wave okay so that reduction will be reduction or increment will be calculated in nepers per kilometers what are the units ma nepers per kilometer and a beta is beta is going to tell us about how many radians of the waveform is going to occupy per kilometer. So its units are radians per kilometer. Now what is wavelength? Wavelength lambda is equal to, see or instead of, instead of writing like that, I will derive wavelength formula. See beta units are what ma? Radians per kilometer. Radians per kilometer. Okay. So beta radians I am going to get for 1 kilometer yeah this one what beta radians per kilometer beta radians i'm going to get for 1 kilometer i need 2 pi radians i need 2 pi radians then how many kilometers i need lambda kilometers this is wavelength means the physical length of the transmission line require to get a one full wave repetition 2 pi radians means one full cycle okay with what with how much its actual value is beta radians per 1 kilometer. For 1 kilometer, if I am getting beta radians, to get 2 pi radians, how many kilometers of the length I require? Now tell me, beta into lambda is equal to 2 pi, lambda is equal to 2 pi by beta, this is, uh, units are kilometers. This is radians per kilometer, sorry, this is radians, this is radians per kilometer. Yes, radians, radians go on here left with a kilometer. This is the wavelength. Now, based on physical length, based on physical length, Yes. Now, why, why we are taking length first of all? Why we are taking length first of all? See, what is charging current IC? IC is equal to V per phase by XC. V per phase by XC. So, IC is equal to V per phase into 2 pi F C per kilometer into length of the transmission lines in kilometer. Length of the transmission line in kilometer. Now, if you observe, the charging current drawn by the transmission line is going to depend on two things. One is the operating voltage, another one is the length of the transmission line. Yes, length of the transmission line. If uh, if more is the length, if more is the length, I can say, then more is the charging current drawn by the transmission line. If more is the voltage, then more will be the charging current. So based on this voltage and the transmission line length, we are defining another classification, not just the length, not just the length. So based on this uh, operating voltage and length of the transmission line, transmission lines are classified as three ways. One is short, medium and long. And uh, see any values nearer by that or this can be treated into the same group. What does it mean to say? Suppose if I say uh, less than 80 kilometers and less than 20 kV, short transmission line. Sorry, it is 21.1 kV, it is short or medium, it comes under short. Okay, so that way, it's not a strict definition. So short transmission line means less than 80, any length above 80 to 160 is a medium transmission line, not like that. We have to take both voltage and physical length into consideration, operating voltage and physical length into consideration, not just the physical length, okay. 
let me take uh, that let me take that yes classification let me take that classification yes based on physical length and operating voltage yes based on physical length physical length and operating voltage because these two are going to affect our charging current or base see see in bracket ic is equal to v per phase into 2 pi f c per kilometer into length of the transmission line in kilometers that's why we are taking physical length and voltage into consideration otherwise there is no use of physical length okay based on physical length and operating voltage transmission lines are classified as transmission lines are classified as classified as one short transmission line short transmission line what is that voltage line to line voltage not phase voltage we line to line less than 20 kV and length less than 80 kilometers second one is medium transmission line medium transmission line this is a hundred kV less than V line to line less than sorry 20 I wrote wrong 20 kV less than V line to line less than 100 kV comma 160 kilometers length 160 I have to write km kilometers less than length less than 80 kilometers okay and yes third one is third one is third one is operating voltage greater than 160 kilometers and length greater than 160 kilometers sorry voltage it is 100 kV not kilometers 100 kV and length greater than 160 kilometers is what long transmission line it is what long transmission line there is no standard definition for classification there is no standard definition so depending on if you are doing transient analysis and transmission lines uh, even uh, 10 kilometer transmission line is also treated as long transmission line because for doing transient analysis we have to take the transmission line as a distributed parameter model okay then let's uh, discuss about uh, transmission line representations see see short transmission line what is a short transmission line for a short transmission line the main assumption is charging current is neglected that is assumption if charging current is neglected and and one more thing and shunt conductance g is also neglected shunt conductance let's take it as capital g instead of small g by because we are taking it as distributed g is also equal to zero means the shunt conductance and shunt capacitance both are neglected the transmission line is represented as lumped parameter model resistance and reactance that's all this is how we are going to represent short transmission line this is mod v s at an angle delta and this is mod v r at an angle of uh, zero and this is uh, i s and this is uh, i r and this is i r this is short transmission line let's go for medium transmission line representation yes let's uh, go for medium transmission line representation yes so medium transmission line in many ways we can represent in many ways we can represent in fact uh, sending in capacitor model receiving in capacitor model nominal t model nominal pi model but every practical transmission line must be symmetrical and reciprocal okay but if you come to series series uh, uh, series and capacitor model receiving and capacitor model those two are not symmetrical therefore those two are eliminated from the discussion all practical transmission lines are symmetrical and reciprocal then only then only it is correct okay a practical transmission line note let me write the note point here then we will take the medium note all practical transmission lines are all practical transmission lines are symmetrical symmetrical and reciprocal 
in nature all practical transmission lines are symmetrical and reciprocal in nature that is uh, what are the conditions for symmetry for symmetry for symmetry in terms of a, B, a B, C, D parameters a equal to d for symmetry for reciprocity for reciprocity yes what is the condition a d minus b c is equal to 1 sending in capacitor model and receiving in capacitor models are not symmetrical at all therefore those are not the correct way of representing medium transmission line then uh, what are the two ways what are the two ways we are left with is the two ways we are left with is nominal t model and nominal pi model medium transmission line so medium transmission line yes one is t model nominal t model yes nominal t model yes resistance reactance resistance and reactance in nominal t model we assume that entire uh, capacitance is located at the center of the transmission line at the middle of the transmission line in fact okay and we are dividing the entire transmission line into two parts two equal parts so this is r by 2 this is l by 2 this is r by 2 this is l by 2 and this is total c this is mod vs at an angle of delta this is mod vr at an angle of uh, 0 degrees yes and this is is sending inside current this is ic and this is receiving and current ir okay yes so this is a nominal t model so how many nodes are there in nominal t model there is one node there is a one node node one this is a node two this is node three i am leaving this reference node this reference node i am leaving okay number of nodes please note down this is number of nodes is equal to how many ma? three let's write nominal pi model second one is nominal pi model nominal pi model ma yes i am representing that entire capacitance we are dividing into two halves one half we are keeping at the sending inside another half we are keeping at the receiving inside yes so this is c by 2 this is c by 2 this is r and this is l yes this is l so yeah this is mod vs at an angle of delta this is is and this is a ir i can write this one as ic1 this one as ic1 this one as ic2 okay and see if this is c by 2 what will be its reactance value be two times of xc okay because x and c both are reciprocals xc is inverse proportional to c okay this is also what ma it is xc i told you in transient analysis we represent uh, rlc with rlc but in uh, steady state analysis we have to replace with uh, xl and xc l will be replaced with xl c will be replaced with uh, xc this uh, l will be replaced with uh, xl this will be replaced with uh, xl okay how many nodes it is having number of nodes how many nodes so this is uh, first node this is second node people will calculate uh, this as a node both are uh, same nodes okay number of nodes is equal to how much ma? number of nodes are how many number of nodes are two if you exclude the reference node so why we are stressing on it practically which model is preferred t or pi practically which model is preferred t or pi is the question practically nominal pi model is preferred why because the number of nodes of nominal pi model are uh, uh, is one less when compared to nominal t model let me write that note point out note practically practically nominal pi model is preferred preferred over nominal t model because the number of nodes in pi are one less compared to compared to t model compared to t model then you may be thinking sir if number of nodes are less what is the advantage you are going to have there is a very good advantage let's see 
let's see that that point is very important with respect to interviews yes that point is very important with respect to interviews see what is y bus y bus matrix y bus matrix is suppose n by n where n is the number of nodes where n is the number of nodes suppose y bus what is y bus it's an admittance matrix which is used for the study of load flow studies mainly load flow analysis will carry out with help of y bus okay n by n where where n is equal to n is equal to number of uh, nodes where n is equal to number of nodes now for pi model y bus yes y bus y bus for pi model for pi model will be let me write here yes y bus for t model will be 3 by 3 3 by 3 for t model for t model so how many total elements we are going to have in the matrix nine elements 3 by 3 means for t model for t model y bus is 2 by 2 for pi model yes so total elements are total matrix elements are how many total matrix elements are 9 here total matrix elements are matrix matrix elements are 4 you see 5 elements got reduced from this pi model to t model sorry uh, yeah t model to pi model 5 elements got reduced in t 9 elements in t in pi 4 elements okay means all these vibus elements we have to save in a computer okay so computer space required see for a very simple bus uh, three bus uh, three bus network or two bus network you are talking practically a power system is going to have thousands of buses you can imagine how much space required will be reduced how easily how fast our computer can extract that data the speed of the i can say process will increase with the pi model when compared to t model okay practically always pi model is preferred to represent medium transmission line not only medium transmission line even long transmission line also for long transmission line we are going to call it as equivalent t and equivalent to pi among equivalent t and equivalent to pi we are going to prefer equivalent pi model let's see what is that equivalent pi model also okay just uh, in one sentence i'll complete that okay yeah let's uh, cover that what is that equivalent uh, uh, pi also first uh, let's understand about long transmission line long transmition line yes see uh, what are the assumptions we take in, in uh, short and medium transmission line r l c g elements are lumped in fact uh, in medium transmission line in medium transmission line yes uh, g is neglected we did not uh, consider g g approximated to zero and uh, lumped and uh, lumped parameter model lumped parameter model this is yes here this also yes here this also g is approximated to zero and it is also what lumped parameter model lumped parameter yes model if you observe carefully all practical transmission lines are distributed in nature but we take in the assumption as lumped in short and medium okay but in long we are not going to take that why because for a long transmission line so what happens if i take and do the analysis you are going to get inaccurate results see it's all about uh, hit and trial see scientists did short transmission line with lumped parameter model he did the same with the distributed also with the both he got approximately same answers which one is a tough and lengthy process distributed which one is simple and easy process lumped parameter model so he is he decided to continue with the uh, lumped parameter model for short and medium why because you do with lumped parameter model or distributed parameter model the result is same almost that's why it is time consuming to go with distributed parameter model that's why they went with lump only but when it comes to long transmission line if you go with the lumped parameter model the result you are going to get is not same as that of a distributed parameter model answer there is a lot of difference that's why for long transmission line you never go with lumped parameter model you have to go with what distributed parameter model yes yeah so third one is long transmission line long transmission line let me represent that so for every one section yes uh, there is some inductance conductance and shunt capacitance for every one kilometer 
every one kilometer is taken as one section every one kilometer is taken as one section ma okay and if you observe this uh, this lump this distributed is also again lumped for every kilometer again there is some assumption here that is uh, the assumption which can be accepted there is no much difference in the practical results yes Yes, this is the total length of the transmission line. This is the total length of the transmission line. See, this is the length in kilometers. Yeah. So this is, uh, I can write here, R per kilometer and this is G per kilometer and this, sorry, I wrote wrong. This is L per kilometer. L per kilometer this is a G per kilometer and this is C per kilometer okay and one section is taken as one kilometer one section is taken as one kilometer sir I'll take one section as uh, 0.5 kilometer okay your answers are going to be more accurate but uh, as the number of sections increases analysis time will take more that's why one section as one kilometer is going to give good results enough sir i take two kilometers as one section no if you take two kilometers as one section the result what you're going to get is going to deviate from the actual result okay that's why the standard is if you have to take a minimum one kilometer as one section you can go below that means you can take a if you want you can take one centimeter as one section also there is no problem but number of sections increases analysis will become difficult results are going to be very good but uh, the result what you are getting if you take one centimeter as one section or one kilometer as one section or more closer therefore going for one centimeter as one section is a laborious task yes yeah now observe here so this is a distributed parameter model but again it is lumped for every one kilometer see if you consider this one kilometer this r l c and g am i taking lumped or distributed lumped but this entire resistance is uh, concentrated at some place or distributed throughout the length resistance inductance capacitance uh, are distributed throughout the length your main confusion for many students is yeah those students who don't know uh, this uh, concepts power system concepts uh, in a correct way they will get confused between this g and this r they'll say that's a g and r are reciprocals no let's understand what is g and what is r let's understand what is g and what is r okay after that we have to see equivalent pi then we go for the next question now, what is g and what is r see this is a transmission line or let me take tower and all yes this is the transmission tower this is the transmission tower this is zero volts and this is the cross on these are overhead line insulators these are overhead line insulators yes yeah and this is our transmission line this conductor is having some resistance that is r per kilometer the resistance of the conductor power conductor is uh, r per kilometer per kilometer i'm taking but if you take this is having r insulation resistance r insulation resistance it will be in terms of mega ohms but uh, see how big it is small amount of current it is accepting that we call it as i leakage i what ma leakage now g per kilometer is what 1 by r insulation per kilometer r insulation resistance per kilometer ma this is per kilometer not uh, not this uh, i can say uh, this resistance this resistance is different this conductance is different both are not reciprocals the conductance shunt conductance is because of this uh, i can say overhead line insulation not because of this resistance that is the conductor power conductor resistance okay now let's understand what is equivalent and equivalent pi okay what is equivalent and equivalent pi so we got a b c d parameters of long transmission line as a cos h gamma l where gamma is propagation constant b is equal to b is equal to zc into sorry zc into sin h gamma l and parameter c is parameter c is 1 by zc into sin h gamma l and parameter d is again cos h gamma l now with these parameters if i model into t and pi lumped but uh, 
we got these distributed these uh, abcd parameters from distributed parameter model okay so that is called as equivalent and equivalent pi okay means i am going to draw a pi model i'm going to draw a pi model like this okay with what uh, so i will take this one as uh, y dash by 2 and i'll take this one as y dash by 2 this one as z dash now get the abcd parameters of this one and get equate to this then you get z and y dash then this is called as equivalent pi model what is this this is equivalent this is called as equivalent pi model so equivalent pi model is an exact model see among the short medium and long which are the exact abcd parameters uh, long transmission line but because we take it as distributed parameter which is true okay uh, short and medium we taken with the long uh, lumped parameter models which are not uh, true but uh, results are matching that's why we are continuing as lumped parameters of short and medium okay yeah let's go to the next question now what is that read it what is surge impedance the impedance offered by the equipment the impedance offered by the equipment the impedance offered by the equipment for surges or sudden changes for surges or sudden changes for sudden changes the impedance offered by the equipment is called as surge impedance yes the formula for surge impedance is zc is equal to under root of l by c many a times uh, in interviews this question was asked what is i am writing here what is zc of ideal inductor ideal inductor ideal inductor surge impedance is what very simple ideal inductor what is the capacitance of ideal inductor ma capacitance of uh, ideal inductor ideal inductor is equal to zero therefore zc is equal to under root of l by zero is equal to infinite surge impedance of ideal inductor is infinite means uh, for sudden changes inductor sudden changes inductor will behave as open circuit for surges inductor behaves as open circuits its counterpart what is the surge impedance of uh, ideal capacitor yes S second question what is what is surge impedance of yes ideal capacitor ideal capacitor so that is uh, zc is equal to again under root of l by c under root of uh, l by c ohms for uh, ideal capacitor l is equal to 0 by c that is equal to 0 ohms uh, for sudden changes capacitor behaves as a short circuit means uh, if you want to bypass this uh, i can say suggest you put a capacitor and connect that one to ground suppose i'll tell you by, uh, by taking an example there is a transmission line uh, and there is a substation this is a substation this is the transmission line now a surge is entered here a voltage surge i can write uh, a surge entered here and that is traveling this way that may enter into substation if you want to protect the substation you put one uh, capacitor here you put one capacitor here this capacitor will behave as and put one inductor here put one inductor here that inductor will behave as open circuit this capacitor will behave as a short circuit entire this surge will be diverted to entire this uh, surge will be diverted to ground through this uh, capacitance that's why capacitors are also called as surge resistors okay so you can use it as surge resistors uh, before uh, uh, any substation means uh, at the end of substation also suppose here there is a transmission here, here also there is a transmission line i can put here like this a uh, transmission line there is a transmission line which is going out of uh, this one so there is a possibility that there is a possibility that uh, some surge may enter here some surge may enter here connect a capacitor here connect a capacitor here that surge wave will be connected to ground ground if there is a capacitance and put one inductor here so that it will act as an open circuit okay this way capacitors are used for protecting the substations ma. okay let's go to the next question ma. yes such impedance of an ideal capacitor and ideal inductor yeah judge c of uh, ideal inductor inductor is equal to infinite judge c of uh, ideal in fact we have to write that ideal ideal okay ideal 
capacitor capacitor is equal to 0 is equal to 0 yes let us go to the next question my yes what is regulation see we have different kinds of regulations okay let us discuss all those ma yes regulation see first of all static regulation and dynamic regulation first way of description is first way of description is one is dynamic regulation dynamic regulation this is a dynamic regulation we are going to calculate for electrical machines uh, motors especially where speed is uh, associated mechanical part speed, speed is associated okay means that that is a change of speed we are going to calculate that we are least bothered in power systems second one is static regulation yeah i'll give you the definition of regulation don't worry this is the classification static regulation okay this is no load speed minus full load speed wave full load speed into 100 percentage regulation percentage speed regulation if you want or let me write here example for dynamic regulation is speed regulation speed regulation yes so this example for static regulation is voltage regulation yes voltage regulation voltage regulation now if you come here if you come here yes voltage regulation again we have two types voltage regulation anyhow we have two any we have two types see voltage regulation is of two types one is regulation down regulation down second one is regulation up regulation up let us see what is this regulation up and regulation down. First of all, what is regulation? See, that is the change. See, I will tell you, there is a transmission line. There is a transmission line. Listen carefully. This is very important and good concept. There is a transmission line. It is receiving a voltage under no load is different. It is receiving a voltage under full load is different. Always you have to calculate the receiving a voltage only. Means, see, I will write here. The magnitude of no load receiving and voltage minus the magnitude of full load receiving end voltage means the change of voltage from no load to full load suppose under no load it is 200 volts when you kept full load it changed to 180 volts 200 minus 180 will be 20 volts is the change of voltage at the receiving end from no load to full load as a fraction of uh, yes this is down right under no load or instead of not we write as a no load under no load yes yes if you multiply with 100 you are going to get a percentage voltage regulation percentage voltage regulation yes means uh, under no load 200 volt 100 volt suppose say, for example under full load it is 80 20 is the difference by 20 by 100 how much it is uh, 20 percent means no load to full load 20 percent of the no load voltage is getting dropped 100 minus 20 by 100 into 100 20 percent of the voltage drop of what 20 percent of no load voltage is going to drop at the receiving end why it is called as regulation down no load we are keeping in the down okay in the denominator we are keeping no load no load voltage is more if it is more na, if it is more the percentage will be uh, i can say less the percentage will be less so this is a regulation down that's why this is regulation down now what is regulation up percentage voltage regulation is equal to no load voltage minus full load voltage as a fraction of full load voltage means 100 minus 80 by 80 20 by 80 1 by 4 25 percent 25 percent of uh, this uh, full load voltage is getting drop means if you take a no load voltage as a reference it is called as regulation down if you take full load voltage as a reference it is called as regulation up okay except for a transformer for all electrical equipments uh, including uh, transmission lines the regulation up we calculate okay except for uh, transformer for all electrical machines including transmission line regulation down only regulation up only we will calculate only for transformer we are going to calculate regulation uh, down why because 
the name plate details of a transformer are always no load voltages this is mentioned for a transformer this is mentioned for a transmission line and for any other electrical machine full load voltage is mentioned suppose oh, let's okay. understand more about uh, voltage regulation see why we are calculating voltage regulation and how we have to calculate voltage regulation see first of all voltage regulation will give us the information about the voltage drop from no load to full load at the receiving end side if we have that information then uh, if voltage is less we can imp we can increase it if voltage is high we can decrease it always mostly we are going to use voltage regulation up only for transformer we are using volt, uh, regulation down okay so uh, how to calculate voltage regulation means uh, this is uh, no load voltage magnitude only how means uh, uh, in what way what are the conditions we have to take up for finding voltage regulation i am talking here this is a percentage voltage regulation yes no load voltage minus full load voltage only magnitude of voltage regulation we have to calculate and uh, this is always we have to calculate at the receiving end side these two conditions must uh, we have to follow to calculate voltage regulation see only magnitudes we have to calculate at the receiving end side okay and uh, you should not compare the voltage regulation of one power factor with other power factor suppose you are calculating this, uh, this uh, uh, full load magnitude of receiving and voltage for leading power factor this also for leading power factor and you should not compare this voltage regulation with lagging power factor load always for the same power factor only we can compare okay this uh, we have to keep in mind see for different different transmission lines we are going to have different different form base for voltage regulation that is that doesn't matter uh, with respect to interviews you can directly calculate it. suppose if interviewer asks you to calculate that value write the equations get in terms of abcd parameters and do it okay and uh, how to find efficiency efficiency yes so efficiency percentage efficiency is equal to output by yes input into 100 so output by output by input can be written as output plus losses into 100 or the numerator output can be written as input minus losses by input into 100 so these ways we can calculate in transmission what are the losses loss due to transmission line resistance corona loss loss due to skin effect okay there are certain losses all those losses we have to calculate okay so the performance indices of a transmission line are voltage regulation and efficiency we must have a good efficiency and voltage regulation is a negative factor if more is the voltage regulation that is a bad that transmission line okay so more is the regulation means uh, more is the voltage drop more is the voltage drop how much less is the voltage regulation that much a uh, good transmission line is suppose if voltage regulation is negative what we have to understand if voltage regulation is negative we have to understand that receiving and voltage is more than uh, see full load uh, receiving and voltage is more than uh, uh, no load receiving and voltage okay yes let's go to the next question ma what is that next question yeah draw and explain the voltage regulation curve of a short transmission line yes let me draw that let me draw that one must be in a position to draw this voltage regulation curve in interviews like bar bark baba atomic research center or isro isro drdo they will ask you to sketch this voltage regulation curve and they will uh, ask us so many cross questions on this okay so this is a power factor power factor and this side is lagging power factor lagging power factor and uh, exactly here it is a uh, upf upf and this side is leading power factor this side is leading power factor okay leading power factor yes now let me draw here yes now see uh, if you remember voltage regulation equation percentage voltage regulation is equal to percentage r cos phi r this this belongs to line plus or minus percentage x line sine phi r exactly like upf upf means uh, power factor is uh, one cos phi r is one then sine phi r is zero then how much i'm going to get here i'm going to get here percentage rl so this side is leading see I, i'll write here plus for plus for or i'll write here so phi r yes plus for i'll, I'll write here plus for lagging loads lag loads minus for leading loads minus for leading loads yes observe 
now uh, I will write somewhere here yeah for leading loads this side is leading loads if you draw it yes see this side leading loads means a uh, minus some x minus y will be less this side it is x plus y more it exactly upf upf means the power factor is one power factor is one means a uh, phi r is zero if phi r is zero sin phi r is zero cos phi r is one then i'm going to get a uh, percentage resistance so let me draw here let me draw here yes this is yeah yeah observe it carefully so why this height is more this height is less x plus y this side that's why maximum is high this side is x minus y and what is this maximum value maximum value is a percentage z percentage z see maximum voltage regulation of a transmission line short transmission line is equal to percentage impedance of the transmission line how to get uh, the condition for maximum voltage regulation take this voltage regulation equation and derivate it with respect to the variable and make that equal to zero sir i have to take plus or minus you have to take plus why because uh, when you are going to get maximum value of uh, x and y if you add x with y right so take it do the derivative and uh, put here and uh, zero voltage regulation i got here zero voltage regulation yeah this is uh, zero voltage regulation so zero voltage regulation we are going to get for light leading loads light uh, leading loads this voltage regulation and this particular value is uh, percentage rl line resistance maximum this is the maximum voltage regulation and voltage regulation percentage voltage regulation is a function of only power factor yeah voltage regulation is a function of current also it is a linear function if current is increasing voltage regulation will increase if current is increasing voltage regulation will increase Why? because drop is directly proportional to current voltage drop is directly proportional to current now i am taking not the current i am taking current as constant just we are varying what a power factor load power factor this is voltage regulation curve with respect to load power factor so the most uh, uh, famous question with respect to voltage regulation is for what uh, loads for what loads uh, uh, zero voltage regulation will occur for what loads zero voltage regulation is possible or yeah for what loads uh, zero voltage regulation is uh, possible is the most famous question let's see that yes yeah what is the condition for maximum receiving and uh, real power yeah before we go to that let's write here yeah uh, i have many questions before that yeah one question we are left with yeah condition for maximum and zero voltage regulation let's do it let's do it what is the voltage regulation per i am not taking percentage per unit i am taking voltage regulation is equal to rl per unit cos phi r yes plus y plus i am finding voltage regulation maximum maximum is possible with plus sign only plus xl per unit yes sin phi r xl per unit sin phi r so derivative of voltage regulation derivative of voltage regulation with respect to phi r you do that is r l per unit cos phi r derivative is minus sin phi r yes plus x l per unit into sin phi r derivative is cos phi r that is equal to zero then what i'm going to get r l sin phi r i'm not writing per unit rl sin phi r is equal to xl cos phi r yes so tan phi r is equal to xl per unit by rl per unit by rl per unit yes let's write let's write it clearly yes So tan phi r, what is uh, xl by rl? xl by rl is equal to tan theta. What is this, sir? I'll tell you. Impedance triangle of the transmission line I'm taking. So this I'm taking theta. This is a uh, x line. This is this one is r line. This one is z line. Then what I'm going to get? Tan theta is equal to x line by r line. Then what is the condition? that is tan phi r is equal to tan theta that implies phi r is equal to theta means uh, 
for maximum voltage regulation this maximum voltage regulation condition is unwanted condition unwanted condition strictly unwanted condition it is voltage regulation is maximum most of the voltage is going to drop in the transmission line which is a strictly unwanted condition okay so i need the load power factor to be the load power factor angle to be equal to the transmission line impedance angle but this is true but theta is equal to phi r is not correct why theta is equal to phi r is not correct I can, this is our variable, see a constant can be equated to a variable, but never a variable can be equated to a constant. Now what do you ask, what is the condition for zero voltage regulation, that is very simple, ma see zero voltage regulation is possible only with the leading loads, see I will write a note point here, zero voltage regulation, zero voltage regulation, regulation is possible, is possible, only with only with leading loads leading loads yeah now by keeping that one in mind voltage regulation is equal to rl cos phi r minus xl sin phi r is equal to zero now rl cos phi r is equal to xl sin phi r so tan phi r is equal to rl by xl it is cot theta not cos ma cot cot theta so let me write it as tan phi r is equal to tan of sorry tan phi r is equal to tan of pi by 2 minus theta therefore phi r is equal to pi by 2 minus theta phi r plus theta is equal to pi by 2 is the condition for zero voltage regulation in fact this is a wanted condition if voltage regulation is zero we are going to get the receiving and voltage same no full load receiving and voltage is same as that of a no load receiving and voltage so phi r is equal to pi by 2 minus theta where theta is transmission line impedance angle phi r is load power factor angle load power factor angle yes theta is a transmission line yes impedance angle transmission line impedance angle yes so these are the conditions for uh, maximum and zero voltage regulations yes let's go to the next question read what is the condition for maximum receiving and real power what is the condition for maximum receiving and real power yeah what is the receiving and uh, power equation if you remember we derived the equations in the very starting yes we derived those equations in the very starting in terms of abcd parameters approximate and exact both we derived yes approximate exact both we derived in fact if you remember if you remember yes let me go back check those equations once if not we'll derive if not we'll derive that's very simple only uh, s is equal to v into i conjugate s is, s is equal to v into i conjugate yes we saw the reason why conjugate also we saw the reason why conjugate also i think uh, we derive only approximate equation not exact equation let's derive that one ma. let's derive that one okay and get the condition in terms of uh, exact uh, parameters and in terms of approximate also we'll see in terms of approximate also we'll see see what is uh, sr what is sr sr is equal to vr into ir conjugate what is vs vs is equal to avr plus pir vs is equal to avr plus bir where a a b c d are the parameters of the transmission line then what is ir ir is equal to vs minus avr by b now ir is equal to vs mod vs at an angle of delta minus mod a at an angle of alpha mod vr at an angle 0 by mod b at an angle beta so ir is equal to mod vs by mod b at an angle of delta minus beta this is mod a by mod b into mod vr at an angle of alpha minus beta alpha minus beta we have to take ir conjugate let's uh, take it in the next page ma. let's take a new white page let us take a new white page and we will solve there, very simple ma, very simple, but there is one important point is there, that is why we are doing the derivative, this uh, derivation, okay, what I got, yeah, 
So, SR is equal to VR. VR can be written as mod VR at an angle 0. What is IR? IR we call it as mod VS by mod B delta minus beta. Mod VS by mod B at an angle of delta minus beta minus minus mod A by mod B mod A by mod B mod VR mod A by mod B mod VR at an angle of alpha minus beta alpha minus beta conjugate yes we have to put the conjugate yes s is equal to vr into r conjugate yes now sr is equal to mod vr at an angle of 0 degrees mod vs by mod b at an angle of if i put conjugate beta minus delta minus mod a by mod b mod vr at an angle of beta minus alpha multiply it sr is equal to mod vs mod vr by mod b uh, at an angle of beta minus delta minus mod a by mod b mod vr square at an angle of beta minus alpha i need uh, active power or real power apply cos we discussed this one apply cos you are going to get uh, uh, this this one okay active power or real power mod vs mod vr by mod b cos of beta minus delta minus mod a by mod b mod vr square cos of beta minus alpha cos of beta minus alpha let's copy that one in the uh, next page ma what we got pr is equal to yes what we have mod vs mod vr by mod b mod vs mod vr by mod b cos of beta minus delta minus 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 mod a by mod b mod vr square mod a by mod b mod vr square cos of beta minus alpha megawatts it is now if you observe what might be the variable in this i want this one to be maximum i need maximum receiving in real power voltages are constants these are not variables these are not variables b is not variable cos uh, sorry beta is transmission line impedance angle not variable a is not variable constant 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 the only thing i can vary is load angle delta the only thing we can vary is load angle delta yes now we have to do the derivative with respect to delta dpr by d delta you do and make that equal to zero that is equal to mod vs mod vr by mod b cos beta minus delta will be minus of sin beta minus delta minus delta derivative is minus one minus it is zero that is equal to zero so mod vs mod vr by mod b sin of beta minus delta is equal to zero that implies beta minus delta equal to zero that implies delta is equal to beta is a condition is correct and if you write like this if you write uh, beta equal to delta this is absolutely wrong beta is constant beta is the phase angle of uh, parameter b b is the transmission line parameter in abcd parameters b magnitude is mod b and uh, beta is the angle of that okay delta equal to beta means load angle must be equal to transmission line impedance angle transmission line not impedance exactly say uh, if in case of uh, uh, short transmission line it is but um, in in case of any transmission line it is delta must be equal to beta is the condition yes now what is uh, what what is the point i told you which is very important for us i tell you see for what loads the question very important question is for what loads maximum receiving in real power is possible first of all what is uh, uh, what is the amount of maximum real receiving in real real power pr max we are going to get if delta is equal to beta in pr put delta equal to beta if you put delta equal to beta so this will be delta equal to beta this is one mod vs mod vr by mod b minus a minus mod a by mod b let me write mod vs mod vr by mod b minus mod a by mod b mod vr square cos of beta minus alpha this is the maximum receiving in real power we can get this is the maximum receiving in real power we can get now our important question is in any interviews 
for what loads for what loads maximum receiving end receiving end real power real power is possible for what loads maximum receiving and real power is possible yes now put a q equation q what is a qr qr is equal to mod vs mod vr by see what for what loads means uh, for leading loads or lagging loads or upf load or any load let's see mod vs mod vr by mod b cos of not cos for q it is sine sin of beta minus delta minus mod a by mod b mod vr square cos of beta minus alpha if you observe see this is a qr value i have to find when p r max now delta we have to replace with beta this is going to become zero this entire part will be equal to zero then what we are left with what we are left with yes we are left with the negative part of it yes we are left with the negative part of it so qr during pr max during pr max is equal to minus of mod a by mod b mod vr square cos of beta minus alpha so if you observe carefully beta is always greater than alpha anyhow cos value is positive why because see beta maximum possible value is 90 So 90 minus some positive value will be less than 90. If cos is less than 90, this is positive. Positive. Mod vr square is always positive. Mod a mod b are always positive. So qr is negative. Qr is negative means what we have to understand uh, leading load. For which loads reactive power we are going to get as negative for leading loads. For leading loads means uh, if you want to have maximum receiving and real power that is possible only for leading loads. by keeping lagging loads sir i can make a delta equal to beta not possible it is not possible to do manually see load and supply supply and demand both are connected to each other if demand increases supply increases okay if demand decreases supply automatically will decrease it's not that we are supplying more demand is less where this power will go yes i think all of you understand this one so for which loads maximum receiving and real power is possible possible only for leading loads so after this we have to discuss there are many questions after this we will go for the next question next question is what is a distortionless line here concept and condition both are very important many people will remember only the condition but not the concept let's understand what is a distortionless line if i am taking a transmission line yes i'm taking a transmission line yes this is sending end and this is receiving end this is receiving end if i'm giving if i'm giving sine wave sine wave at the sending end side sine wave a pure sinusoidal wave form without any distortion in the shape of the wave form so this this wave i'm giving at the sending end side and i am getting same shape of the waveform at the receiving end side not magnitude magnitude may be or may not be same this is a v r of t magnitude may be may not be same so yes this is the receiving end side waveform see if we are giving some shape of the waveform at the sending end side the same shape of the waveform without any harmonics in it added harmonics in it or without any distortion in the shape of the waveform distortion means changes in the shape of the waveform if i am receiving at the receiving end side if i am receiving at the receiving end side then that line is said to be distortionless line then what is the condition for distortionless line what is the condition see if you take a, a transmission line if you take a transmission line a transmission line is going to have series uh, impedance and shunt impedance let's see the condition for a distortionless line that's important okay concept is also important yeah every transmission line is going to have a series resistance and a series reactance in fact inductance we call and shunt conductance and shunt capacitance like this yes every transmission line will have like this this is a watt model mah distributed parameter model this is one section of the transmission line so let me write here very clearly this is r per kilometer yes i'll take in i'll take 
r per kilometer is this this is l per kilometer this is g per kilometer and this is c per kilometer what is the condition is the condition is if 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 series part time constant what is the series part we have r and l what is the time constant of rl circuit l by r is equal to shunt part time constant in the shunt what we have c and g actually we have to take uh, if it is rc tau is equal to rc but it is instead of r it is g therefore it, that will come in the denominator c by g that implies l g is equal to rc then that line is said to be a distortionless line if lg is equal to rc then that line is said to be a distortionless line ma let's go to the next question ma yes what is that what is a lossless line this is very simple now we taken a transmission line uh, one section yeah i we clearly understood how a transmission line with a distributed parameter model is represented yes and we are going to do transient analysis or wave traveling analysis always on this distributed parameter model this is r per kilometer r per kilometer l per kilometer this is a g per kilometer and this is c per kilometer now l by r is equal to sorry this is for distortionless line what is a lossless line if r per kilometer is equal to 0 and g per kilometer is equal to 0 then that line is said to be then that line is said to be is said to be yes lossless line lossless line yeah means uh, if it is a lossless line this is general representation if it is a lossless line uh, how it will be how it looks i'm going to draw here the circuit if it is a lossless line the circuit will be like this only series reactance and shunt capacitance that's all and many such types many such type of uh, sections uh, or transmission line representation is going to have yes this is l per kilometer and this is c per kilometer yes let's go to the next question ma velocity of traveling wave depending on what parameters yes our traveling wave see what is the velocity of uh, voltage and current waves in power system network what is the velocity yes the formula for velocity is 1 by or under root of l into c yes kilometers per second kilometers per second means which transmission line you are taking its inductance value and capacitance value you have to take now what is the formula for l l is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of gmd by self gmd gmd by self gmd henry per meter yes and c is equal to yes 2 pi epsilon not epsilon r by ln of gmd by yes self gmd if you farad per meter farad per meter in fact if you take uh, these in terms of meters these units are not uh, i can say uh, kilometers those units are uh, meters per second only not kilometers per second meters per second if you substitute those if you substitute those here let me do here if i substitute those what i am going to get is v is equal to under root of s yes. if you substitute this uh, this ln of gmd self gmd and uh, this uh, uh, this this two will get cancel you are left with what ma yes l into c right 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into 2 pi into epsilon not into epsilon r in fact instead of this 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 we can write it as uh, mu not into mu r you can write mu not mu r yes we can write it as yes we can write it as mu not mu not into mu r mu not into mu r okay by 2 pi you'll get mu not into mu r by 2 pi you'll get yes i think you remember the derivation you remember the derivation or yeah formulas you have to remember ma formulas we can derive these formulas but in interview most probably they may not ask you to derive these formula but you have to remember if you want you can derive also that's not a big deal now what you are going to left with is 
1 by under root of mu naught into mu r into epsilon naught into epsilon r will be left with. There is a small approximation here. Self GMD for capacitance is going to have r, whereas self GMD for uh, inductance is going to have r dash, where r dash is 0.7788. So that approximation both equal I am taking. Scientists also taken. Those, those will get cancelled. This is the formula for velocity of the traveling wave. Okay. So on what parameters velocity of the traveling wave depends? That is going to depend on relative permeability, permeability, relative permeability and permittivity of the system. Suppose if I am taking overhead transmission line, for overhead transmission line, for overhead transmission line made up of uh, ACSR conductor, ACSR is aluminum conductor steel reinforced, its mu r is 1, relative permeability of AC, ACSR conductor is generally taken as 1, then velocity is equal to under root 1 by under root of mu naught into epsilon naught mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7 and epsilon naught is 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus 12. If you substitute that, you are going to get velocity is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second or in kilometers, in kilometers, let me write here, that is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 5 kilometers per second, 3 into 10 to the power of 5 kilometers per second that is. Okay, yeah. So observe it. So this one uh, we got means uh, the velocity of the traveling wave, either voltage or current, is equal to velocity of the light. Voltage and current wave forms are traveling with the velocity of light. Okay, that's why. See, uh, there is no much uh, delay uh, in uh, getting power. Okay, there is no much delay. The uh, means uh, at the generating station, if uh, the generator starts. Immediately within no time you are going to get uh, the power at your home. Okay, yeah. Let's go to the next question. Ma. Read it carefully. Causes of under voltage in power system. Why we get under voltages in power system? Yes, this is important. Ma. Yes. See, if load is if a load is greater than surge impedance loading, comma, comma. If load is lagging load load is lagging load lagging loads lagging loads lagging load if load is lagging load and greater than surge impedance loading then then mod vr will be less than mod vs the main cause of under voltages in power system why we are going to get voltage level less at the receiving end means due to voltage drop which load will cause voltage drop? Uh, mostly inductive load. If it is a capacitive load, current will be leading current, voltage rise will take place. Yes. So this is the reason why we are getting under voltage in power system. Next question. Yes. What is the next question? Causes of over voltages. Yes. See, uh, over voltages are of two types. Switching over voltages. Switching over voltages. I'll, I'll explain you this. Second one is lightening over voltages. We already seen this. Lightening over voltages. These are transient over voltages, in fact. Transient over voltages. Transient over voltages. What does it mean by, sir? Switching over voltages, whenever sudden change of a switch means either you close the switch or open switch, you know sudden changes will cause over voltages and over currents in power system. From network analysis, see, suppose if you open suddenly an inductor, V is equal to LDI by DT, yes, V is equal to LDI by DT, sudden means within very less time, this DT is tending towards suppose 10 to the power of minus 9, then if I suddenly open a switch like this, there is an inductive network like this. Yes. Now, if I suddenly open this switch, this DT is tending towards, uh, actually, sudden means I have to take a zero, but practically zero not possible. Suppose if it is some nanoseconds, then voltage will be in terms of uh, 10 to the power of 9. Voltage will be in terms of 10 to the power of 9 volts, which is very high, which is very high. So, the, the, the cause for uh, sudden over voltages is uh, one is switching over voltages. 
what does it mean by switch in processor network circuit breaker whenever a fault comes relay we will give trip signal to circuit breaker circuit breaker is going to open immediately due to the change of current immediately through inductance uh, there is a possibility for the voltage to develop very high voltage that is called as switching over voltage this is one this is one another over voltage is lightning you know what does it mean by lightning yeah due to lightning uh, uh, there is a possibility to get a uh, more amount of uh, voltage in this power system how to protect uh, a power system network from lightning over voltages so we are maintaining uh, a wire called earth wire or ground wire or shield wire on the top of the transmission tower so this is see from this one we have to do the protection okay we are protecting our transmission line from lightning over voltages these are transient means uh, for a sudden change those are going to appear then what is uh, our main over voltage in power system is steady state over voltage that is steady state steady state over voltage yes this is not due to sudden changes these are due to these are due to the first one is steady state over voltage we are getting due to ferrant effect if the load is very less at the receiving inside the capacitance effect of transmission line dominates the inductance effect due to which the receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending end voltage one is ferrant effect ferrant effect see why why this ferrant effect we are getting why we, we are getting ferrant effect because we are getting ferrant effect because the reason main reason is see i can write like this uh, load is uh, less than surge impedance loading loading is less than surge impedance loading if the load what you are going to keep on power system network is less than surge impedance loading this is uh, i can say less loading because of no load or low less load uh, this receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending out voltage that may cause over voltage the second reason is due to due to leading loads due to leading loads in these two which one is practical which one is practical leading load is uh, practically not possible yeah all our loads mostly 99.99% of our loads are lagging loads experiencing leading loads is very rare of the rarest condition which is practically not possible because of this one ferrant effect means uh, under no load or light load condition the receiving end voltage is going to be more than sending end voltage which is causing over voltage means the voltage that is more than uh, or uh, i can say more than the rated value then there is a possibility for the insulation to damage see you may ask yeah, sir if there is a high voltage what is the problem for you yes our equipments will damage we are going to design the equipment insulation for some amount of voltage if voltage is going to be more than that amount uh, then definitely equipment will damage insulation will damage if insulation damages again short circuit will occur okay yeah so this is about over voltage let's go to the next question ma yeah what is it what are the methods to improve power factor yeah see first of all uh, we discussed already that uh, power factor is linked with uh, uh, reactive power power factor is linked with the uh, reactive power see i write here cos phi is equal to active power by apparent power that is root of uh, p square plus q square that q is of two parts q lag minus q lead square sir why you wrote like this i don't know whether my load is lead or lag suppose if your load is only lag this q lead will be zero if your load is only lead then q lag will be zero now from the from this itself i am going to explain how to improve power factor yes observe carefully yeah see uh, generally both loads will not present if both loads are present also suppose if lagging is high leading is low net is will be lagging only see it is a transmission line uh, there is a, some load load is taking 50 mvr lagging and uh, uh, there is some leading load also which is supplying 5 mvr net will be 45 lagging only suppose if leading is 50 mvr lagging is 5 net will be 45 leading only now what i do is if my load is this is the load this is the load now i'll keep uh, i'll put this one if this is the load load is lagging load load is lagging load which is absorbing lagging reactive power what i do is if it is absorbing 50 mvr of lagging reactive power i'll put a capacitor who will supply leading reactive power who will supply lagging reactive power capacitor i'll 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 put a shunt capacitor which is able to supply this amount of uh, lagging reactive power the net will be zero p by p will be equal to 1 yes so so this is this is the compensating element compensating compensating equipment compensating equipment there are many compensating equipments we will see or 
or let me write here or if this is compensating equipment if this is a compensating equipment this will be load this will be load if this uh, leading this is the load load is leading then i have to put a then i have to put what a inductor means lagging the uh, uh, the element or the equipment which is going to supply this leading reactive power people will feel that always uh, uh, capacity will improve power factor no if the load is inductive load then capacity is able to supply reactive power then that lagging reactive power capacity can, can improve uh, power factor but if the load itself is a leading load then i have to take inductor or a lagging reactive power sub absorbing device or leading reactive power supplying device yes now see uh, i'll tell you what are the methods to improve power factor by taking two conditions one is if the load is lying load which is general which is general very general means practical also if load is lagging load if load is lag load then what are the equipments used for improving power factor what are the equipments used for improving power factor the first one is shunt capacitor yes load require lagging reactive power that will be supplied by shunt capacitor yes or second one is i can say uh, synchronous synchronous condenser synchronous condenser or what is a synchronous condenser yes that is also a good question what is a synchronous condenser an over excited synchronous motor an over excited synchronous motor why we are over exciting any over excited machine will supply reactive power which reactive power lagging reactive power see if i am saying reactive power without saying anything by default it is a lagging reactive power an over excited synchronous motor is called as synchronous condenser without a load without any mechanical load on it that that is the last thing is very important see synchronous machine is able to supply reactive power is able to absorb reactive power both motor and generator an over excited synchronous motor without any mechanical load on it is called as synchronous condenser okay third one is synchronous phase modifier synchronous phase modifier synchronous phase modifier okay so these uh, these will improve the power factor if the load is lag load okay synchronous phase modifier okay now if the load is leading load if the load is leading load let me write here if the load is leading load yeah if it is leading load leading load the load is leading load then shunt inductor yes next uh, synchronous coil yeah many people don't know what is a synchronous coil synchronous coil what is a synchronous coil an under excited synchronous motor with no load on the shaft or without any mechanical load both are synchronous motor motors only condenser similar to capacitor the behavior is similar to capacitor coil the behavior is similar to inductor okay if the load is leading load if the load is leading load leading load require leading reactive power who will supply leading reactive power inductor or the equipments which behave like inductors okay yeah we we understood very well about the types of reactive power and uh, which element can supply which uh, which type of reactive power yes and uh, synchronous phase modifier here also i forgot to tell you about synchronous phase modifier i'll explain synchronous phase modifier synchronous phase modifier what is a synchronous phase modifier see synchronous condenser and synchronous coil are one is over excited synchronous motor another is under excited synchronous motor without load without mechanical load on the shaft if i am keeping mechanical load also on the shaft synchronous phase modifier synchronous phase modifier here we have to over excite here we have to under excite so these are all the devices which are used to improve power factor there are other power electronic converters also like stat comes and all uh, we are not uh, concerned with all those things uh, here in power system in power electronics you will be learning all those okay let's go to the next question ma what is that read it methods to improve voltage yeah the devices what we used for uh, power factor improvement uh, are also used uh, to improve voltage there is one extra device that is let's discuss 
see when voltage we have to improve when our voltage is less when voltage is less due to overload overload that to lagging loads if loading is more than surge impedance loading we saw if loading is more than causes of under voltages if loading is greater than surge impedance loading voltage voltage that to lagging load voltage will decrease we yes, it is required for us to improve the voltage yes now methods to improve voltage are with shunt capacitor yes shunt capacitor is having two roles it can improve the power factor it can improve the voltage also okay because it is able to supply the lagging reactive power yes if reactive power consumption from the uh, generator or from the source decreases then voltage drop decreases then obviously voltage rise will takes place shunt capacitor series capacitor yes series capacitor how series capacitor will improve voltage i'll tell you this is the transmission line having resistance and reactance now this is having some value of a z z with before compensation now with this series capacitor this z1 i call this one as z2 this is r this is plus jx this is minus j x c this is line this is line now z2 is less than z1 right z2 is less than z1 z2 is less than z1 if z2 is less than z1 obviously the drop in the transmission line is going to be less means that implies delta v1 delta v1 means drop in the transmission line without uh, this capacitor without this capacitor yes is uh, uh, greater than delta v2 that implies delta v2 is less than delta v1 delta v1 and delta v2 are the drops in the transmission line uh, this is uh, with capacitor this is without capacitor yes that implies uh, mod vr1 uh, mod vr2 is greater than mod vr1 yeah when drop decreases obviously voltage profile will improve voltage profile will improve mod vr2 is greater than mod vr1 yes yes or no yes so these are the methods and uh, this uh, i can say synchronous uh, condenser yes synchronous condenser also will improve voltage condenser will improve voltage and synchronous phase modifier also synchronous uh, because these uh, devices are able to supply the reactive power but uh, only this is, this is a peculiar what is a peculiar device in this this one series capacitor it is not supplying any reactive power but it is reducing the series uh, reactance of the transmission line due to which uh, uh, overall drop in the transmission line decreases and uh, receiving and voltage profile will improve synchronous phase modifier sorry synchronous phase modifier all this will improve the voltage in the same way if voltage is very high we want to decrease the voltage then yes here series uh, shunt inductor series inductor synchronous uh, coil synchronous phase modifier okay yeah let's go to the next question ma what are the methods to reduce over voltage yes we saw i told you already yes shunt inductor yes uh, series inductor overall uh, inductance will decrease overall drop will increase because of which rise will decrease yes and uh, i can say synchronous coil synchronous coil i, I listed previously i am not writing here you can understand that one let's go to the next question what are the advantages of per unit system yes see entire power system we are discussing in per unit system why i'll tell you suppose uh, if i say uh, for example if i say voltage drop of 10 volts people will feel that 10 volts is a very less voltage drop if i say voltage drop of 1000 volts people will say that oh it is huge but observe here observe here this is one of the very important concept ma there are two main reasons there are two main reasons what are the reasons we'll see the first one is let me explain then i'll list see 10 volts is the voltage drop in the first case 100 volts is the voltage drop in the second case these values with the units are called as absolute values values with the units are called as absolute values now if i ask you which one is the high voltage drop then obviously we'll say 100 but now i am changing my question 10 volts out of 10000 volts or 10 volts out of 1000 volts 100 volts out of i can say 100 volts now tell me out of 1000 only 10 volts is getting dropped how much 1% of the total voltage is getting dropped 100 volts out of 100 volts total is the drop 
yes now see I, I'll, I'll take another figure here to give you clarity out of uh, I can say here let me take here here I'll take 100 for better understanding here I'll take uh, 10,000 yeah now if you forget the denominators you feel that 100 volts is a huge draw when compared to 10 but now you see 10 out of 100 means how much ma 10% 10% of the total voltage is getting dropped here. 100 out of 10,000. 100 out of 10,000. How much it is? Ma? 1%. Observe. In which case voltage drop is less? Second case. If you see the absolute values, 100 volts. Wow, 100 volts is very high when compared to 10. But 100 volts out of 10,000 this is. This is 10 volts out of 100. Okay. Which voltage, which voltage drop is a, a considerable or significant voltage drop? The first one only, not the second one. But if you look at, if you look at the absolute value of drop, then we are not in a position to get any proper conclusion which one is high voltage drop. If you are dividing the absolute value with the base quantity, the, with some reference quantity, with respect to which you are considering this one, that, that value is called as per unit value, per unit. Okay, please understand that the per unity means. See, uh, simplest example I am going to tell you. One person wrote an exam, he got uh, 50 marks. Another person wrote an exam, he got 80 marks. If, uh, if, I am, if I ask you who is the best performer, obviously many people will say second person. But this first person wrote only for 50 marks. The examination is conducted for 50 marks only. But for him, the examination is conducted for 100 marks. Now you tell me who is the best performer, first one only, right? So without knowing what is the base quantity or what is the reference quantity, we are unable to tell which one is a good performance or where the more drop is, where the more loss is. That's why we have to go with the per unit. And see, in fact, in, in, in power system, voltage levels are very different. Generation, typical generation takes place at 11 kV. From 11 kV, it, is, it will be stepped up to 66 or 132, 132, 132, 220 like that. Uh, see, we are going to step up voltages for transmission purpose, this other reason also. Yes, at different, different uh, levels of our power system network, different, different voltages are there. If I want to compare the voltage drops or currents or power losses at different, different uh, locations, it is not possible if you compare directly which one is high value, which one is low value, we are unable to tell. Yeah, we saw 10 volts drop and 100 volts drop. Suppose if, if you ask someone, uh, anyone who don't have what power system, which one is bigger, 10 volts is loss is big, voltage drop is big, 100 volts. They will say 100 volts only, but 100 volts out of 10,000 volts uh, is very less when compared to 10 out of 100. Yes, now who is the best performer here? First person only. Means, uh, what is per unit? See, he got one out of one. If you simplify it, one out of one. For every one mark conducted, he got one. He scored one. One out of one. But here, he got 0.8 out of one. For every one mark, he got only 0.8. For every one mark, he got only 0.8. Now, he is not a best performer when compared to him. That's why per unit is very important. Yeah. What is our conclusion? Ma? Why we are going for per unit? It is possible to compare, it is possible to compare, yes, compare voltages, currents, currents, etc at, at different locations of power system network, locations of power system network this is one reason the second reason is uh, the elimination of the transformer transformer what is that i'll tell you see there is uh, a generator like this yes and uh, there is a primary of the transformer and there is a secondary of the transformer there is a transmission line okay and there is one more transformer like this there is one more transformer like this there is another uh, transmission line and after that there is a load there is a load okay this is r x load sorry yes this is x load this is r load this is a r l this is a x l sorry i have to take capital letter here r okay x line r line this is r line this is x line now if you see how many kvls i have to write if i want to find i1 yes sir. this current is i1 this current is i2 this current is i3 
if I want to find the currents, I have to write three KVL equations and I have to solve. Solving three KVL equations in AC analysis is damn difficult. If it is DC, okay, but uh, power system means total AC except HVDC. Yes. So solving three KVL equations is going to be damn difficult. Now, what happens if we go with per unit? Let me tell you. In per unit, in per unit, see for a transformer for a transformer in per unit for a transformer in per unit v1 per unit is equal to v2 per unit means uh, per unit voltage on both sides is same why right? because we have to take the base in such a way that uh, that uh, uh, transformation is going to match with that of transform uh, transformer okay means uh, uh, if uh, v2 by v1 is equal to k i have to take v2 base by v1 base is also must be equal to k Yes. So if uh, V1 per unit is equal to V2 per unit, means this voltage, this voltage in per unit both are same. Therefore, there is no need of uh, this connection. Means the same, I can draw like this. The same, I can draw like this. Observe. Means, uh, see, this is a transmission line. This is a transformer primary. Transformer in uh, per unit will be represented with simply its uh, per unit impedance. Z01 per unit or Z02 per unit, both are same z01 per unit and z02 per unit both are same this is transformer one and again transmission line and again transformer second transformer sorry second transformer z01 per unit or z02 per unit of the second transformer and after that uh, the load after that load yes now if you observe yes uh, how many equations i have only one equation means uh, solving power system network uh, having more number of transformers in fact Without transformer, our power system network will not exist, first of all. Yes, it is going to be very easy. Only single equation you are going to get. Once you got a current in per unit, if you want I1 per unit, multiply with I1 base. If you want I2 per unit, multiply with I2 base. If you want I3, see, I have I per unit. From I per unit to I want I1 in amperes. Multiply I1 per unit, I, I per unit with the I1 base. Multiply the same I per unit with I2 base to get I2. Multiply the same I per unit with the I3 base to get I3. Okay, so that much, see, this advantage is a damn good advantage. Damn good advantage, that is, let me write. Yeah, the transformer, the transformer in per unit, in per unit will be replaced with, will be replaced with, with, Yes, Z01 per unit or Z02 per unit and uh, and its coupling circuit is uh, removed. No, there is no requirement of coupling circuit and uh, its coupling circuit is coupling circuit is removed. Circuit will be removed. Circuit will be removed. So because of this, what is the advantage we are going to get? I, I show you, I'm not writing it. It is subjective. It will take a lot of uh, theory to write. Yeah. When that coupling circuit is reduced, the total circuit will become a single one. Okay. Only one equation you're going to get. It's very easy to solve that equation. These are the two main reasons why we are going for per unit system. Yes. And after that, uh, we have to see the remaining questions. But one of the very, very important questions in any interview, why we are going for a per unit system? That is, uh, uh, these are the two advantages. Comparison at different, different levels and different, different locations of forces and network is possible. One advantage. Another advantage is, main advantage is, the coupling circuit of the transformer will be removed because of which only one equation of the entire power system network we are going to get due to which it is very easy for us to solve any uh, it, it is very easy for us to solve uh, for any for, for calculating any current or voltage or power at any location of the power system network let's go to the next question the question is what is r per unit l per unit and c per unit you might saw z per unit you might saw z per unit what is z per unit z per unit is equal to z in ohms by z base and this also must have the same units of the numerator this is z per unit what is z base z base we have to take 
we have to take now we know one thing that we know one thing that z base must be equal to x base x base x base why z base must be equal to x base and that must be equal to r base also why x and r not having separate bases why z base x base and r base are equal i'll explain you so before before i go to the explanation of that let me give you a note point that is that is power factor angle see i, I can say like this per unit is applicable is applicable only for only for electrical quantities electrical quantities means if you go for mechanical quantities like uh, speed frequency power factor power factor is an angle power factor is an angle okay angle is not a, see you may you, you may think like so we have electrical angle and mechanical angle but from mechanical angle only we are getting electrical angle a angle is not exclusively electrical okay see one complete rotation is 360 degrees right but depending on the number of poles uh, that is getting changed theta electrical is equal to p by 2 into theta mechanical but uh, theta electrical is uh, depending on theta mechanical it's a mechanical quantity okay there is a difference between electrical angle and mechanical angle in terms of value but without mechanical angle will you get electrical angle no not possible so for this uh, per unit is applicable only for electrical quantities like voltage current uh, power uh, resistance reactance impedance uh, admittance conductance for these things only not for uh, mechanical quantities like right? frequency and number of poles or uh, i can say angle okay now either it is uh, either it is absolute uh, either it is absolute system or per unit system power factor should remain same yes that is the second point both in absolute system in absolute system and per unit system per unit system power factor must be same power factor must be same now if you take the impedance triangle or power triangle both let's take both so this is phi i'll take this is r this is x this is z you all know okay and that is the impedance triangle and this is uh, the power triangle i'm taking this is the power factor angle phi this is p this is q this is s now all of you tell me what is uh, power factor angle cos phi here cos phi is equal to r in ohms by z in ohms okay what is power factor here cos phi is equal to p in megawatts by s in mva s in mva now all of you tell me the power factor should be same both in absolute and per unit in per unit what shall i write for power factor in per unit yeah cos phi is equal to r in ohms by z in ohms r in ohms by z in ohms this is in absolute this is in absolute in per unit it must be r per unit by z per unit but r per unit can be written as r in ohms by r base yeah we will we'll get a conclusion here r base by z in ohms by z base z in ohms by z base these two will be these two will be equal these two will be equal if r base and z base will get cancelled if r base is equal to z base then only these two are going to be equal in the same way if you write for tan phi tan phi is equal to what is atma x by r this is in ohms this is in ohms in per unit x per unit by r per unit yes x per unit will be x in ohm by yes x base yeah and r in ohms by r base these two will be equal if x base and r base are equal therefore what we know is 
R base must be equal to X base must be equal to Z base. Z base. Okay, the those three bases must be equal. Uh, on the same, on the same explanation, on the same explanation, I am taking from that you can connect easily. P base, P is not having separate base. Q is not having separate base. P base is equal to Q base is equal to S base. Means if you are taking S base, uh, it means to say that you have a Q base as well as a P base. Both are there. In the same way, what is Y base? Ma? Y base, once you have Z base, na, reciprocal of Z base will be Y base. Y base is equal to G base that is equal to B base. So what is a G? G is conductance and B is a susceptance. B is susceptance. Okay. Yeah. Observe it carefully. So now the question is what is R per unit? R per unit is equal to R in ohms by Z base. Yes. Yes. Z base in ohms for this means why we are taking Z base here why not separate R base why because power factor should remain same both in absolute and per unit quantity that's why we are taking Z base instead of R base we need not to have separate R base okay one of the very important concept with respect to interhuma okay yeah now what is L per unit here it's very important thing observe L per unit generally what we know L in Henry by L base L in Henry by L base. This is what we know. This is what we know. Do we have any L base? Just now we understood that uh, X base uh, and Z base and R base are equal. Y base, G base and B base are equal. S base, P base and Q base are equal. But nowhere we encountered L base. Then what to do? Multiply the numerator with omega and denominator with omega. Then L per unit is equal to omega into L will be X that is in ohms X L in fact inductive reactance in ohms by the denominator is omega into L base will be nothing but X base no X base in ohms but do we have separate X base no X base and Z base both are equal therefore X L in ohms by this is Z base if you observe this one x by base x in ohms by z base in ohms will be nothing but x per unit x l per unit in fact so therefore l per unit is not having separate value that is nothing but x l per unit means once you have x inductive reactance value per unit value it means to say that you already have that l per unit now what is c per unit what is c per unit same on the same way c per unit is equal to c in farads by c base c base in fact but uh, do we have any c base separate c base no let's do one thing multiply with omega divide with omega now c per unit we can write like this omega into c can be written as a 1 by 1 by xc in ohms this can be written as this can be the denominator can be written as a 1 by xc base in ohms do we have any xc base no x base and z base must be equal therefore this can be written as a z base in ohms by xc in ohms xc in ohms observe c per unit is equal to this can be written as 1 by 1 by yes xc in ohms by z base in ohms so this particular part can be written as xc per unit xc per unit because x by z some in, something in ohms by some some base in ohms will be per unit you are going to get Therefore, very important thing, C per unit is equal to 1 by Xc per unit. C per unit is equal to what? Ma? 1 by Xc per unit. So, this is what the per unit, R per unit, L per unit and C per unit. Let's go for the next question. Ma. The question is, why 
or what is the need of symmetrical components what is the need of symmetrical symmetrical components my point is why we are going for the symmetrical components concept let me take one example i'll explain from there i'll explain from there okay let me take this example one of the simplest example i'm taking there is a, a balanced source assume that always source is balanced okay assume that always source is balanced yeah and there is a load there is a load a resistive load for simplicity i'm taking a resistive load for simplicity i'm taking observe here very carefully observe all of you here man okay now uh, this voltage uh, i'm taking it as ea this uh, this is plus minus this is minus plus minus plus this is eb yes this is uh, ac now this is ra i'm taking 10 ohms rb i'm taking 10 ohms rc i'm taking this is also 10 ohms load is balanced or not balanced load is balanced this is neutral this is also neutral both the neutrals i am not connecting i am not connecting though i am not connecting both the neutrals as the system is balanced as the system is balanced now tell me at what voltage this will be at zero volts yes i can write this one as zero volts this one also zero volts so i told you already that the supply voltages are always balanced ea eb ec are always balanced note note supply voltages supply voltages are always always balanced supply voltages are always balanced okay now this is also zero volts these two are physically not connected but i can say electrically connected if both the volts are same i can connect it without any problem and how much is the current flowing in this see this is not the connection i am not connecting this is virtual virtual connection means uh, as both the potentials are same virtually we will feel that we can feel that those two are connected those two are connected how much is the current that is flowing in that zero i want the current ia i want the current ia i want the current ib i want the current ic okay let's write the formulas for ia ib and ic let's write the formula for ia ib and ic as neutrals are not connected but uh, we can directly write that is ea by ra ea by ra next ib is equal to what eb by rb ic is equal to yes ec by rc means directly we can write so how we can directly write how we can directly write you know see though neutrals are not connected let me erase this one though neutrals are not connected yeah these neutrals are not connected but both are at same potential so these two are virtually connected we we, we can take and ia is equal to a by ra ib is equal to eb by rb ic is equal to ec by rc but whereas when it comes to this uh, let me take up uh, uh, a new diagram let me take up a new diagram okay where it is not balanced where the system is uh, not balanced let me go there yes observe here all of you i am taking a source and i told you that source is always balanced source is always balanced okay yeah observe this is the resistance ra this is the resistance phase a resistance this is phase b resistance this is phase c resistance this is phase b and this is phase c so this is ea and this is eb and this is ac this is plus minus this is a minus plus this is minus plus this is ra but this value is 10 ohms this is rp this is 5 ohms this is rc that is equal to i can write it as some 10 ohms okay no issues now tell me this load is balanced or not balanced unbalanced load it is this neutral is not at zero potential this is at zero potential okay now can you write ia is equal to ea by ra no this is ia this is ib and this is ic here in this case ia is not equal to ea by ra 
y and ib is not equal to eb by rb and ic is not equal to ec by rc why you know these two are not, not at the same potential then how to get a ia ib ic then you write a kvl first kvl you write a second kvl you write another third kvl i can say see uh, this uh, this one is one kvl yes or i can take uh, in the in different ways we can take there is no issue this is one kvl first kvl okay second one is second one is let me show this is the second kvl you can take this is the second kvl the third one is the third one is with a different color i'll show the third one is uh, from here yes uh, this way you can take three kvls which are having uh, alternating quantities ea eb ec ia ib ic are going to have magnitudes as well as angles it means you will be getting three equations three alternating equations three equations are containing alternating values and we have three variables ia ib and ic so solving three ac equations is damn difficult if it is easy okay but solving three ac equations is going to be damn difficult why you know let me show you with one example just for example i'll show see uh, x at an angle of 30 plus y at an angle of 40 is equal to 10 at an angle of 20 okay and x at an angle of 60 x at an angle of 60 plus y at an angle of uh, uh, 35 is equal to is equal to 100 at an angle of uh, 60 it is difficult for us to solve these two small equations which are having only two variables then you can imagine here you are going to get three equations uh, three alternating current involved equations then it is very difficult to solve therefore we are going for symmetrical components what symmetrical component makes this particular unbalanced system will be divided into two balanced systems and one cofacial system those two balanced are one is positive sequence another one is negative sequence and the cofacial is called as zero sequence zero sequence is very easy it means any unbalanced system will be will be divided into three parts that is two balanced and one cofacial Two balanced means uh, for balanced uh, yes uh, for balanced we know uh, we know that uh, both neutrals are at same potential directly ia is equal to ia by ra ib is equal to eb by rb ic is equal to ec by rc for two balance for cofacial and how it is in the next question we are going to uh, discuss uh, in, in the next question we will discuss what are the what are the symmetrical components actual symmetrical components in the next question we will see in this question we saw that uh, what is the purpose of symmetrical components to solve unbalanced systems we are going for uh, to make uh, to make the solution of unbalanced systems uh, we are going for symmetrical components let me write that and uh, we'll go for the next question yes this is to solve unbalanced unbalanced systems systems yes symmetrical components are symmetrical components are used yes symmetrical components are used according to symmetrical components any unbalanced quantity will be that also let me write according to symmetrical components symmetrical components any unbalanced unbalanced quantity quantity will be divided into two balanced two balanced and one cofacial quantity one cofacial quantity that are two balanced are positive sequence and negative sequence and this uh, cofacial component is zero sequence component after this we'll go for next question the next question is 
explain about uh, pass two negative and zero sequence components it's very simple ma it's very simple see uh, the name itself says positive sequence sequence means phase sequence sequence means phase sequence positive sequence means uh, the phase sequence of positive sequence components is same as that of original phase arts see suppose uh, we have uh, original phase arts like this these are the original phase arts i'll take it as uh, ia and ib and ic ic and these are rotating in anti clockwise direction the phase sequence will be uh, uh, we will write the phase sequence how to write the phase sequence this is also uh, one of the question which may be asked as a simple question in interview okay how to find the phase sequence see you stand here you stand here okay you stand you you should not rotate you should not rotate you stand there rotate the vectors in the given direction in which direction these rot these vectors are rotating in anti clockwise so b we are getting first after that c after that a yeah after that b after that c the phase sequence is what ma abc phase sequence a b c some people may get confused sir first time getting b maybe it may be but complete one full cycle one full cycle then you'll get a, whether it is abc phase sequence or acb phase sequence these are the original vectors now these components are divided into three parts one is positive sequence positive sequence okay plus another one is a negative sequence negative sequence yes another one is cophasal cophasal components see vectors rotation always will take in anti clockwise vector rotation always will take in anti clockwise that is a convention we are following sir why can't we take anti -clock uh, clockwise you can take but uh, for, since the uh, beginning we are taking anti clockwise direction rotation therefore we have to take here so observe here this is what phase sequence ma this phase sequence is abc see the, the original vector's phase sequence is abc this is of phase sequence abc now this is ia1 one stand for positive sequence this is uh, ib1 this is ic1 yes this is the direction of rotation anti clockwise you can write the phase sequence here you will be getting uh, a1 b1 c1 phase sequence is abc here this is a negative sequence component uh, this is ia2 and this is ic2 this is uh, ib2 so the direction of rotation is this way the direction of rotation is always uh, anti clock okay now uh, here if you observe uh, these are all rotating uh, in anti clockwise but uh, all are uh, all are appearing at a time means there is no phase angle difference this is ia not this is ib not this is ic not i'll write here that ia not is equal to ib not is equal to ic not ia not ib not ic not all three are exactly equal magnitudes as well as angles suppose if ia not is one at an angle 30 IB is also one at angle 30, IC not is also one at angle 30. But, but here it's not like that. I forgot to, uh, here, I, I forgot to put the angle here. Now, this is uh, 120 degrees. This is uh, 120 degrees. And this is uh, 120 degrees. And I can say one thing, magnitude of IA1 is equal to magnitude of IB1 is equal to magnitude of IC1. Okay. And... Uh, the angle between IA1, IB1, IC1 is mutually 120 degrees. Mutually 120 degrees. Therefore, IA1, IB1, IC1 are balanced. Come here. Magnitude of IA2 is equal to magnitude of IB2 is equal to magnitude of IC2. Magnets are equal. And the here also angles are 120. Yeah. Here also angles are 120. This is 120. This is also 120. And this is also 120 degrees. Magnets are equal and angles are displaced by one point here magnitudes as well as angles all are same this is about a positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence component okay yeah let's go to the next question ma what is that what is the frequency of zero sequence components yes many people will misunderstand that zero sequence components are dc components no though those components are also rotating suppose uh, here uh, here the frequency here the fre frequency of the original original phasers is 50 hertz then positive sequence frequency is also 50 hertz positive sequence components frequency is also 50 hertz negative sequence components frequency is also 50 hertz here the phase sequence is acb here the phase sequence is acb 
Here the phase sequence is A, B, C. There is no phase sequence here. There is no phase sequence here. There is no phase sequence. Okay. There is no phase sequence. I can write here. No phase sequence. No phase sequence. Yes. There is no phase sequence here in this. Here the frequency of uh, zero sequence components is also 50 hertz. All these are alternating quantities. Uh, many people, if I draw like this, they will misunderstand that those are DC quantities, not alternating quantities. Yes, these are alternating quantities. Okay. Let's go to the, yeah, this question. What is the answer? Ma? The frequency of uh, zero sequence components, let me write here. The frequency of uh, zero sequence components is same as the frequency of zero sequence zero sequence components is same as that of same as that of uh, original original quantities is same as that of original quantities phase frequency original quantities uh, original quantities uh, quantities frequency original quantities frequency let's go to the next question what is the objective of fault analysis why we have to do fault analysis uh, the objective of fault analysis is to design protection system equipment to find the rating of protection system equipment yeah if I do fault analysis, then only I will be knowing uh, how much will be the maximum fault current, minimum fault current, uh, fault uh, MVA or short circuit MVA. These all things I can do, I can get by doing fault analysis. The main objective of fault analysis is, is to design, is to design or is to design protection system equipment, protection system equipment. The objective of fault analysis is to design protection system equipment yeah if i do fault analysis then only i'll be getting maximum fault current minimum fault current then only i'll be able to put relay and circuit breaker let's go for the next question ma. let's go for the next question yeah what are the causes of faults what are the causes of causes of short circuit faults short circuit short circuit faults what will cause short circuit faults yes what will cause short circuit faults that is the first one is at falling a tree branch suppose if you take a transmission line on that a tree branch may fall falling a tree branch falling a tree branch yes and the second reason is a flash over of con flash over of insulators due to over voltage insulators due to over voltage over voltage sometimes animals also will animals or birds will cause short circuit fault how you know where you know suppose if you go to a substation there where uh, i can say uh, where a conductor is there where a conductor is there especially bus bar bus bar is placed on a con uh, on an insulator called a post insulator it is connected to an insulator called post insulator the insulator which is used to uh, which we are using uh, uh, to place a bus bar at a substation is called as post insulator okay the the monkey will come monkey will come and that that will sit on the this or uh, that will sit on this uh, i can say uh, bus bar the tail of the monkey is going to touch the ground tail of the monkey is going to touch the ground then obviously fault will occur lg fault okay can means uh, animals and these will cause but the main main causes are those are rare things the main causes are falling a tree branch our transmission line is a wide widespread system throughout uh, india okay where see everywhere it is there everywhere it is there through forests and all therefore uh, the frequent uh, faults are due to falling of tree branch and due to over voltage suppose uh, this is the tower if you take this is the tower if you take this is the cross arm this is the insulator and the tower is connected to ground here this is the power conductor now due to over voltage these insulators may flash over then this conductor is touched to ground via this uh, transmission tower which fault has been occurred ma? lg fault 
which fault has been occurred here lg fault so these are the main causes of uh, faults okay now after this uh, what are the assumptions what are the various assumptions various assumptions in fault analysis assumptions in fault analysis fault analysis yeah we are doing fault analysis by taking some assumptions otherwise it is not possible those assumptions must be valid assumptions see assumption means uh, don't misunderstand that we are taking something which we should not know that is valid it is not happening uh, practically but uh, if we take it it's going to be valid that's what uh, it means by assumption there are uh, many assumptions ma we have to see what are the various assumptions we are taking in fault analysis let's see let's understand the assumptions what we are taking in fault analysis the very first one is the very first one is fault analysis is done on fault analysis fault analysis is done on is done on no loaded generator no loaded generator sir why we have to do practically fault will take place on a loaded generator most of the times never we are going to keep a generator idle right generator is an operation that is uh, uh, supplying power to transmission transmission to distribution distribution to utilization like that yes sir, it's a chain generation transmission distribution end part is utilization or simply we can stop at distribution yeah why we are doing now tell me where the voltage is more on a loaded generator or a no loaded generator on a no loaded generator why suppose uh, if you take if you take a voltage source simple voltage source every voltage source is going to have some internal voltage internal resistance or internal impedance for simplicity i am showing you the resistance suppose if it is 10 volts if there is no load this voltage will be 10 volts if there is a load of uh, 1 ampere take it as 1 ohm if there is a load of 1 ampere then how much voltage will drop here uh, 1 volt then how much is the voltage 9 volts which voltage is high before the load or after the load before the load means no load voltage is more than the loaded voltage sir what what is the what is the use of this taking no load voltage when fault occurs suppose my generator is under no load when fault occurs if is equal to no load voltage by fault impedance so if1 is the fault current on a no loaded generator if2 is the fault current on a loaded generator that is equal to what is the voltage here 9 volts 9 volts with load 9 volts with load by same fault impedance now you see which fault current is more fault on no loaded current is more when compared to the fault current on loaded generator if fault current is more means it's an advantage is it an advantage we are doing the analysis we are doing the analysis we are preparing our system for the worst case means if I design my protection system equipment for handling this much amount of current, obviously, very simply, this current can this current can be handled. This current can be handled. Suppose if I design protection system equipment to handle this current, then it may not be able to handle this one. That's why we will do fault analysis on no loaded generator why because pre-fault voltage of a no loaded generator is more when compared to the pre-fault voltage of a loaded generator if a pre-fault voltage is high fault current of a no loaded generator is more therefore we are going to design our protection system equipment with high rating okay yeah let me write that okay explanation i am not writing fault analysis is done on no loaded generator the second assumption is the second assumption is yes all shunt elements all shunt elements and current through those current through those shunt elements shunt elements is neglected neglected during short circuit faults during short circuit faults 
I will tell you why it is so. Suppose there is a transmission line, there is a generator, there is a generator. Yeah, here there is some shunt capacitance, shunt capacitance of the transmission line I am showing here. Here this is the load, this is the load, okay. An LG fault occurred here, line to ground fault. This way fault occurred, this way fault occurred. So suppose this is the ground. What is this voltage? Zero. What is this voltage? Zero. What is the voltage that is appearing across this shunt capacitance? Zero and zero. How much it is zero? How much is the current flowing through that shunt capacitance? Zero. So all shunt elements and current flowing through the shunt elements is neglected during short circuit fault analysis. It's a valid point. Okay. But slight current may be flowing that is not going to affect our analysis. That's not going to affect our analysis. Okay. Yeah. The third point is load current, load current and load and load are neglected, neglected during, during short circuit fault analysis short circuit fault analysis yeah that is the third point the fourth one is fourth one is see uh, during fault analysis or during fault when fault occurs uh, if there is an induction motor if there is an induction motor uh, see uh, what is the current that or what is the power that is going to the load induction motor load zero then there is some inertia in the motor that inertia may convert it into electrical energy but for induction motor it will not happen because induction motor is a singly excited machine it is not going to have any field but if you take a synchronous generator synchronous motor sorry synchronous motor load it is going to have a separate field which will convert that mechanical energy into electrical energy and that a synchronous motor is going to feed to the fault point we have to consider it. Induction motor loads will we, we are not going to consider, but whereas synchronous motoring loads we are not we are going to consider. Yes. Synchronous motor, synchronous motor load will feed to the fault point. Feed to the fault point. I explain you. See. There is a synchronous motor which is rotating but all of a sudden due to fault the power input that is coming to the synchronous motor is zero but due to inertia of the rotor or due to the kinetic energy which is already stored in the rotor body of the synchronous motor it is rotating whenever a rotating conductor is placed in a magnetic field yes magnetic field is there for a synchronous motor why because it's a separately excited motor but whereas if you come for induction motor it's not going to have field though kinetic energy is there that kinetic energy will not be converted into electrical energy why because field is not available okay this this one we have to consider this one we have to consider the next point is the next point is whenever a fault occurs whenever fault occurs you know what happens is uh, uh, speed changes when fault occurs speed changes uh, when speed changes obviously frequency will change when frequency changes reactance of the machine is going to change reactance of the machine will change what is what is uh, the relationship between speed and frequency f is equal to pn by 120 whenever fault occurs uh, first of all when fault occurs why speed will change what is acceleration power pa pa is equal to ps minus p when fault occurs the electric power output will decrease if electric power output got decreased then obviously acceleration power will increase if acceleration power increases speed will increase if speed is increasing frequency will increase if frequency is increasing the reactance will increase that change in frequency change in reactance change in speed we are not considering due, during fault analysis the changes in the changes in speed comma frequency and reactance are not considered are not considered during during fault during fault analysis during fault analysis the changes in speed frequency we are not going to consider we have few more assumptions in fault analysis ma we will see the next and important assumption is the modeling of generator during fault analysis we are assuming that generator as a voltage source in series with its subtransient reactance yes that is one of the very important assumption why it is uh, i am calling it as assumption why because uh, generator is a power source neither it is voltage source or current source generally a generator is a power source the generator is modeled as 
during fault analysis during fault analysis generator is modeled as modeled as a voltage source voltage source in series in series with its with its sub transient reactants sub transient reactants reactants yes x double dash we call x double dash we call okay let's go for the next question now for a salient pole machine salient pole machine salient pole alternator in fact machine i'm writing salient pole alternator xd double dash is greater than xq double dash why it is so yes first of all let's come to the total reactants total reactants we have uh, we are dividing the reactants into three parts one is subtransient transient and steady state or forget about subtransient transient and all another way of classification is uh, the total reactants total reactants of a machine x is equal to total reactants is equal to i can say leakage reactants plus armature reaction reactants yes armature reaction reactants under steady state this is under under this total is under steady state under steady state under steady state okay if you take a salient pole machine see how a salient pole machine looks this is the stator this will be the rotor this will be the rotor see uh, when the rotor is rotating take this pole as north pole this one as south pole this is the air gap here but this is the air gap here means the air gap is not constant air gap is not constant as the air gap is not constant see we we have two axes uh, for a salient pole machine this is the direct axis this is the quadrate axis see i can say this is q axis this is d axis the reactance along d axis is less if reactance is less uh, see not reactance reluctance see this is d axis this is d axis this is q axis the air gap along d axis is less if air gap is less armature reaction is more if armature reaction is more drop due to armature reaction will be high drop is high means reactant should be high along q axis air gap is high reluctance is high therefore armature reaction is less if armature reaction is less i can say the drop will be less if drop is less reactance is less means for a salient pole machine the d axis reactance is more when compared to q axis reactance because of this variation in the air gap whereas when it comes to salient pole machine this is the rotor this is the rotor this is the rotor this is north pole and this is south pole this is the d axis and this is q axis the air gap along the d axis and q axis is same therefore armature reaction reluctance is same armature reaction is same therefore i can say reactance is also same approximately see for that also exactly not equal for that also exactly not equal i'll explain i'll explain for a salient pole machine yes we understood that we and for a for a salient pole machine salient pole machine machine xd is greater than xq since 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 air gap air gap along along d axis d means direct axis q means quadrate axis axis d axis is less compared to compared to air gap air gap along q axis compared to air gap along q axis see what is the relation for uh, between air gap and reactance uh, i explained you if more is the air gap if more is the air gap more will be reluctance more is the reluctance means uh, the flux interaction will be less that is that means armature reaction is less if armature reaction is less uh, i can say drop will be less if drop is less reactance will be less 
what is the reactance it is it is going to represent the amount of drop that is taking place in our machine or transmission and whatever it is yes now what is a subtransient reactance what is transient reactance and what what is that what is the all that what is what is x double dash x dash and x means what what are, first of all let's understand what is a subtransient period subtransient period Subtransient period is the period from from the fault inception to fault inception to means uh, for, uh, for, uh, the time at which a fault occurred from there onwards up to one to two cycles. See, subtransient period, transient period. I'll write here, subtransient period, subtransient period. What is that? From fault occurrence to the time the time from fault occurrence to the time from fault it is it is the time it is the time from the instant of from the instant of fault occurrence fault occurrence to to from the instant of fault occurrence to one to two cycles one two two cycles next one what is a transient period what is transient period i'll tell you what is transient period what is transient period transient period transient period this is two to five cycles two to five cycles okay what is steady state period steady state period yes after five cycles after five cycles yes this is called a steady state period now x double dash is called as x double dash is called as subtransient reactants subtransient reactants what is that x double dash before that let me draw the diagram what is that yes this is this is a synchronous generator this is a synchronous generator this is leakage reactants leakage reactants leakage reactants is constant irrespective of armature reaction or whatever it is Either it is a transient period or subtransient period or steady state period, whatever it is, leakage reactance is constant. And after that, we have one reactance called armature reaction reactance. Or instead of like this, I'll take in different way. Ma. I'll take in different way. Yeah, I'll draw here. This is uh, the generator. Okay, alternator EMF. This is leakage reactance. We have one reactance. We have one reactance called armature reaction reactance XA I call. But during transient period, why that period is subtransient period? Why that period is called as a subtransient period? You know, during subtransient period, uh, damper winding uh, field. So damper winding. There will be some. There will be some flux in the damper winding. Okay. See, uh, according to constant flux linkage theorem, flux will not change suddenly. Okay. Please concentrate very well here. Concentrate very well. See, uh, when fault occurs, huge amount of fault current will flow. Yes, that fault current is going to give huge amount of flux if if the machine is not going under saturation. Please take the assumption. If machine enters into saturation, whatever may be the fault current, uh, the flux will remain almost constant. Yeah. Now, do, when fault occurs, huge amount of fault current will flow. That fault current is. Uh, you uh, we all know that that fault current is a demagnetization in nature that that fault current is going to give flux so that flux is going to make demagnetization of the uh, total machine but uh, we know one thing that all of a sudden flux will not change from constant flux linkage theorem then who will support uh, suppose uh, the present flux is one milliweber due to fault uh, due to fault uh, demagnetization has to take place uh, that one milliweber the, the, that one milliweber, one milliweber according to the formula means if you calculate it it is becoming 0.5 milliweber but uh, according to constant flux linkage theorem it should not become 0.5 milliweber it should remain one milliweber for some time for some time why because flux will not change suddenly it will change gradually it will change gradually now but uh, the fault current is making that 0.5 milliweber to reduce then remaining 0.5 milliweber will be given by the damper winding flux and field winding flux 
ओके दिस डैमर फील्ड वैंडिंग फ्लक्स फील्ड वैंडिंग रियाक्ट फील्ड वैंडिंग रियाक्ट ई कॉल दिस वन एज एक्स एफ डब्ल्यू सी फील्ड वैंडिंग इज गिविंग फ्लक्स प्लीज डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड फील्ड वैंडिंग इज गिविंग फ्लक्स गिविंग फ्लक्स मीन फ्लक्स इज रेड्यूसिंग और इट रिमेन सेम इट रिमेन सेम इट रिमेन सेम now flux is same means the reactant should be less or should be high reactant should be less that's why we are putting in parallel okay another one is damper winding flux this also will provide this also will provide x d w we call x d w we call this is field winding field winding reactants field winding reactants yes f w and that is damper winding see and see i i can say i can say this is closed this is also closed when when this will open see in sub transient period all these three will be there now what is x total x total is equal to x leakage plus xa in parallel with x damp x field winding x field winding in parallel with x damper winding but uh, when the sub transient period is over what is uh, what is a transient period what is a transient period the period uh, from which uh, the damper winding flux becomes zero is called as transient period okay at the end of a transient period uh, what will happen at the end of transient period uh, field winding flux also will become equal to zero see this is x uh, double dash sub transient reactants then what is uh, transient reactants x dash that is uh, x leakage in parallel with xa so x leakage plus xa in parallel with only field winding only field winding means if you want me to draw the diagram i'll draw like this yes this is the armature reaction reactants and this will be the field winding reactants damper winding got open damper winding field is not flux is not available this is x f w that is open circuited so this is x leakage x leakage sub transi transient period is the period transient period is the period during which during which during which damper winding flux is not available only field winding and armature reaction flux is available armature reaction see only field winding flux is available damper winding flux is not available it is open circuited means this will be infinite minus infinite in parallel with anything will be the same thing x f w in parallel with infinite will be x f w only okay that is equal to x leakage x leakage plus x a in parallel with x f w yes now what is steady state reactants x that is equal to x leakage plus x a only means i can put here that yes i can put here that this is field winding is also open and damper winding flux is also not available yes only the leakage and armature reactants are available this is xa this is xl so steady state reactants is equal to x leakage plus x armature reaction reactants here you see here so from this we can say one thing that x double dash is less than x dash is less than x or this way we can write this way we can write that is that is better one for understanding x is greater than x double dash is greater than x uh, sorry x dash is greater than x dash is greater than x double dash okay from this one i can write i can write uh, i f double dash is greater than i f dash is greater than i f where double dash indicates sub transient fault current is more than transient fault current it is more than normal steady state fault current this is a relationship yes after this uh, we have to go for the next question ma we have to go for the next question see we are uh, we are discussing the fault analysis questions that is uh, fault analysis and symmetrical components uh, okay please uh, explain about uh, the uh, zero sequence switching diagram of a transformer one of the very important question for interviews okay transformer transformer switching diagram for transformer switch switching diagram for for zero sequence for zero sequence or transformer zero sequence network simply instead of all this yes transformer transformer zero sequence network zero sequence network 
by default we are discussing about a three phase transformer see the zero sequence current whether it is existing or not is going to be decided by the configuration of the transformer we have several types of transformers star by star delta by delta delta by star star by delta and star grounded star ungrounded both grounded both not grounded like that we have several configuration so this is the switching diagram of a zero switching diagram of zero sequence network of a transformer yeah this is transformer reactance xt not a zero sequence reactance cycle for a transformer xt not xt1 and xt2 all three are same all three are same and why we call this one as switching circuit we are going to take uh, some switches uh, for the operation when those switches are operated i'll explain you very clearly okay i'll explain you very clearly this is very important uh, with respect to interview point ma with respect to interview point this is very important this diagram they may ask you to explain this one this let's take this one as a one first switch this one as third switch this one as second switch this one as fourth switch okay now i can say the switch of one and three are primary switches two and four are secondary switches that is easily understandable switch one and two operate will be operated for star connection switches or let me write in the next page ma the switches one and two switches one comma two are operated operated means closed operated by operated by fault impedance fault impedance three times of fault impedance in fact three times of fault impedance for star connection for star connection instead of that symbol i'll write star why because why because there i am not putting any ground for star connection for star connection switches 3 comma 4 yes 1 and 2 are operated those are series switches 3 and 4 are shunt switches 3 and 4 are operated for or operated for delta connection delta connection let's take one example then you can understand very easily what does it mean by that what does it mean by that i am taking a transformer of star resistance grounded of rn by star solid grounded solid grounded means what uh, solid grounded means what uh, resistance is equal to zero now see for for star and star which switches has to be operated series switches one and uh, i can say two one and two we have to operate one and two we have to operate yeah come back here one and two we have to operate we have to close those switches with help of three times of the i, I can say three times of rn or rf rn or rf or zf order it is three times of impedance i can call three times of uh, fault closing um, that neutral impedance three times of uh, rn or three times of zf whatever it is okay now this is the diagram this is the diagram this is the switch primary switch this is the secondary side switch these switches uh, this shunt switch was always open for the above i can say configuration for the above configuration always these switches must be open these switches must be open why why these switches are these switches belongs to this this switches belongs to delta connection but uh, what we taken what is the configuration we taken star connection now this must be closed uh, with a value of how much ma three times of rn and this must be closed with three times of rn but rn is equal to zero therefore we are closing like this we are closing like this this is xt not this is xt not this way we have to explain the interior uh, about uh, this uh, transformer uh, zero sequence uh, switching network zero sequence switching network there may be some questions there they may give you some configuration in this uh, primary set zero sequence current uh, exists or second set does not exist like that simply you can say if there is a closed path for the flow of current yes it will exist now you see for the zero sequence current to flow yes there is a closed path yeah this is the closed path for this configuration if, if zero sequence current is existing definitely on both uh, primary and second side on both sides zero sequence current will exist let me take one example let me take one more example let me take one more example and i'll explain to you yes yes come here let me take uh, delta by star 
star ungrounded delta means series switch is always open shunt switch will be closed like this shunt switch will be closed like this this is xt not and series switch must be closed with three times of rn shunt switch is always open why because second side is star now with what value this uh, this must be closed with three times of uh, this uh, uh, neutral resistance neutral grounded resistance how much it is uh, infinite three times of infinite means uh, this is also infinite means this is also open now you tell me is there any closure path for the flow of a zero sequence current on the primary no this is open on the secondary this is open therefore zero sequence current does not exist both on primary and uh, secondary this way we have to understand this way we have to understand so this is about uh, the zero sequence uh, switching network of a transformer after this we have to go for the next question yeah read the question what will decide the severity of a fault we have various faults we have many types of faults the first one is a lg fault ll fault line to line line to line fault line to line to ground fault yes line to line to ground fault line to line to line fault line to line to line to ground fault these are the faults in these faults which one is severe first of all who will what will decide the severity of a fault severity of a fault is decided by yes uh, severity of a fault is decided by by the mva means uh, mva that is the power apparent power delivered by the machine delivered by the machine during fault machine during fault see when, when there is a fault during that fault that particular alternator or synchronous generator is delivering some mva that will decide which fault is a more severe fault if more is the mva more severe fault it is okay let me take a, a white page here and I like that point also the fault the fault which have has more MVA that fault is more short circuit MVA not MVA more short circuit MVA short circuit MVA that fault is that fault is more severe that fault is more severe okay what is short circuit mva during short circuit during fault the mva that is delivered by the machine is called as short circuit mva that is going to decide the severity of the fault severity of the fault okay which fault is a more severe fault except on generator terminals always a triple l fault is a more severe fault let me take up one more question here let me take up one more question here yes what is the difference between yeah what is is the difference between triple l and triple lg fault triple l and triple lg fault technically electrically both are same electrically both are same I, i'll show you the diagram i'll show you the diagram here yes i'll show you the diagram here by taking a new page this space is not sufficient i'll take a new page yes observe here carefully all of you both are same both are same electrically both are same physically both are not same but electrically both are same first of all triple l fault is a symmetrical fault or not symmetrical fault or not yes it's a symmetrical fault total faults are divided into two parts symmetrical and asymmetrical lg ll llg are asymmetrical faults why because uh, fault is not occurring on all the phases uh, at a time lg fault means on one phase fault is occurring remaining two phases are healthy but if you take triple l fault on all three phases fault is occurring simultaneously that's why that fault is called as a symmetrical fault okay yes i'll draw the diagram here this is the generator this is the generator or alternator whatever it is so generator or alternator yes observe it 
so this is phase a this is phase a this is phase b this is phase c this is a this is b this is c on three phases fault got occurred on three phases this is the fault this is the fault okay on three short circuit fault on three phases this current is ia this current is iv this current is ic in these three currents which current we have to take it as fault current either ia or iv or ic any one of those three currents is taken as fault current so let's take this one as xa this one as xb this one as a xc this is ec this is eb this is ea this is plus minus minus plus and minus plus observe ia ib and ic yes now what is ia plus ib plus ic ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero we discussed previously that always generator is balanced ea eb ec xa xb xc are balanced therefore if all three currents are coming and meeting at a single point called node ia plus ib plus ic whenever ea eb ec and xa xb xc are balanced then definitely ia ib ic are balanced ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero this is triple l fault what is a triple lg fault triple lg fault let me draw the diagram of triple lg fault then i'll explain you how both the faults are same I, i'll explain you how both the faults are same okay yes observe here carefully yes this is triple lg fault this is triple lg all three phases shorted and that is connected to ground and that is connected to ground this is ea this is eb yes this is xa this is xb plus minus minus plus minus plus this is uh, i can say xc this current will be ia this current will be ib this current will be ic then what is the current that is flowing here 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 from this one ia is coming from th from this one ia is coming from this one ib is coming this one ic is coming then what is this current this is ia plus ib plus ic that is equal to zero because uh, ia eb is here balanced xa xp x here balanced so therefore ia ib is here balanced ia ib is here balanced then ia plus ib plus ic is equal to zero how much is the current that is flowing from here to the ground zero current zero current is flowing means uh, this one is physically connected to ground but electrically it is not connected what is an electrical connection if there is a current existing then we call it as electrical connection means you, you see the current that is flowing in this part will be zero i can say triple l and triple g faults both are same simply triple l and triple g faults are electrically same but are physically not same physically extra thing is uh, this uh, all three phases are connected to ground the fault current and everything formula everything fault mva short circuit mva everything for a triple lg fault is same as that of triple l fault let's go to the next question now what is that which fault is a more severe fault except on generator terminals except on generator terminals triple l fault is fault is more severe more severe comma on generator terminals on generator terminals lg fault is more severe lg fault is more severe i told you please just calculate short circuit mva short circuit short circuit mva then you will be knowing which fault is more severe fault on generator terminals lg fault is more severe except on generator terminals everywhere triple fault is more severe yes let's go to the next question ma read it relay setting is done based on which fault current yes so relay is a sensing device it relay setting should be done to sense minimum fault current the relay setting must be done the relay setting must be done must be done in such a way that in such a way that it must sense it must sense the least fault current not least i can say minimum fault current yes minimum minimum fault current it must sense the minimum fault current 
let's go to the next question circuit breaker setting is done based on what value of fault current on which fault current circuit breaker is a device which has to open the contacts during fault means it must be in a position to open for a maximum fault current if you design for minimum fault current it can open the contacts for a minimum possible fault current but for maximum fault current it may not open if you design the circuit breaker in such a way that it is going to open its contacts for maximum fault current it can open for a minimum value of fault current also circuit breaker must be set up or designed to handle to handle maximum possible maximum possible fault current maximum possible fault current okay circuit breaker has to be designed in such a way that it has to handle maximum value of fault current let's go to the next question what are the effects of short circuit fault whenever short circuit happens what are the effects we are going to face our electrical system is going to face okay see whenever short circuit happens fault current is very high fault current is very high if fault current is very high what happens is our total system demagnetization takes place system or electrical machine alternator demagnetizes alternator demagnetizes comma heat heat increases because as fault current is very high fault current can cause power to loss what is power loss formula for a three phase system 3i square r that will increase by because fault current is very high power factor decreases power factor of the system decreases sir how power factor decreases can you explain yes i'll explain how power factor decreases see power factor is equal to p by s that is p by root of p square plus q square during fault this will decrease this will decrease this will decrease a lot that will decrease a lot means uh, this will increase this will increase therefore power factor will decrease the power factor of the system will decrease uh, during fault uh, during fault okay yes short circuit fault what are the effects of open circuit faults see what is an open circuit fault suppose we have three phases like this we have three phases like this phase a phase b and phase c let me write a b c due to some due to uh, some physical some physical i can say attack on the transmission line okay by some means this this is open this is called as a one conductor open fault this is called as one conductor open fault suppose if a second conductor is also opened due to some reason due to some reason this is called as two conductor open fault now if third conductor is also open it is not called as fault it's an open circuit completely uh, system is isolated load and source both are isolated this is not a fault we have in open circuit only we have one conductor open and two conductor open we do not have three conductor open three conductor open means that simply an open circuit <coughs> that does not come under fault what are the effects of this one see we know that in a machine flux is directly proportional to v by f v by f flux is directly proportional to v by f now what happens is yes what happens is during during this open circuit fault during, during this open circuit fault frequency will increase frequency will increase and flux will decrease frequency will increase and flux will decrease flux in the system will decrease flux in the system will decrease okay so this is one of the effect during open circuit fault and uh, load will not get satisfied means why because load is disconnected from the source load is disconnected from source that is one of the that is uh, one of the i can say uh, effect during open circuit another is power factor will increase power factor of the system will increase here power factor is linked with the flux power factor will be linked with the flux flux is decreasing means it is drawing less magnetizing current it's drawing see i can say flux decreases no power factor increases i wrote how it is i'll write here as as flux decreases that implies the 
the power drawn the power drawn which power reactive power in fact which power is used for creating flux we discussed previously reactive power the power drawn by the machine by the machine or system to create flux to create flux will decrease will decrease therefore therefore i can say power factor will increase Why? because the reactive power the amount of reactive power drawn will decrease but in the short circuit for most of the power is reactive power only why the real power load is disconnected real power that is going to the load will decrease but uh, the reactive power uh, transmission line will consume some reactive power okay most of the current uh, see transmission line resistance is very less uh, then huge current is flowing what is the power that is uh, there in the transmission system that is reactive power only i square x 3 i square x in fact i is very high therefore reactive power is very high but here in open circuit fault current itself got reduced current itself got reduced therefore power factor will increase let's go to the next question ma. what is short circuit mba yes now let me take let me take one generator yes this is phase a yeah and this is a phase c now in phase a i'm keeping one relay and circuit breaker i'll call it as cba relay is also there assume that relay is also there okay this is a cbb and this is circuit breaker c circuit breaker c this is an open this is a no loaded generator this is a no loaded generator observe here all of you this is plus minus this is minus plus this is minus plus this is ea this is eb this is ec ec so this is a x a i call it as x b and we call it as x c now whenever a fault occurred here fault occur here some fault current is flowing uh, now this uh, generator this generator is delivering some mva to the fault lg fault suppose you take that mva is called as short circuit mva the mva that is delivered by the machine during fault yes let me write it instead of uh, orally giving let me write that okay the mva the mva that is supplied supplied by the generator by the generator during short circuit during short circuit instead of writing sc let me write dash short circuit during short circuit is called as is called as short circuit mva it is called as what short circuit mva yes next question let's go to the next question breaking capacity of a circuit breaker in a phase come back to this diagram this diagram will explain so this circuit breaker this circuit breaker this circuit breaker i, I need the breaking capacity of a circuit breaker now tell me which circuit breaker is dealing with mva this one no the circuit breaker breaking capacity must be equal to short circuit mva means during short circuit the breaker in a phase must be in a position to deal that short circuit mva which one is the highest mva okay yeah the breaking capacity the breaking capacity of a circuit breaker in a phase in a phase must be equal to short circuit mva highest possible value means how to get this highest possible value you conduct the fault analysis uh, do lg fault see do the lg fault analysis LLG, ll fault analysis llg fault analysis triple l and triple g fault analysis which one is giving the highest short circuit mva for that rating you have to design the circuit breaker in a phase okay let's go to the next question ma. what is the concept of arcing round yes one of the very important entry question what is the concept of arcing ground let's understand i have a generator like this yes i have a generator like this let me let me draw it clearly yeah we have a generator like this this is phase a yes and this is phase b 
and this is uh, phase C. Phase A, B and C. Yeah. Now, this is connected to a transmission line. Let us connect this one to a transmission line. This one to a transmission line. We all know that, we all know that capacitance will be formed between line to line. Between A to B, B to C, C to A capacitance will be formed. And between line to ground also capacitance will be formed which capacitance is uh, of more importance uh, line to line capacitance is having more importance than line to ground capacitance uh, because the line to ground distance is very high if distance is high capacitance is very less that is negligible okay now neutral of the generator I am not connecting to ground this is XA this is EA okay minus plus this is EB this is XB minus plus this is ec and this is xc neutral of the generator we are not connecting to ground i am i am showing here open circuit i am showing here open circuit now lg fault occurred here yes lg fault occurred here this is zero volts now is there any closed path for the flow of fault current uh, yes from phase a fault current has to come fault current is coming yes some people may say sir to the ground 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 here yes if it is closed no if it is closed this fault current will go will make a closed path but it's not having any closed path then what happens to fault current people may feel very happy sir as there is no path for the closed path for the flow of fault, fault current fault current will not flow at all therefore we are happy our system will not be damaged due to fault but there is a relay and circuit breaker here which is waiting to clear the fault which is waiting to clear the fault or let's call it as a relay only now relay RA I will call there is a relay in phase A there is a relay in phase B there is a relay in phase C yes now when relay will recognize the fault when fault current flows then it will recognize is there any fault current flowing no means if neutral of the generator is not grounded our protection system equipment don't know whether a fault occurred or not therefore it will be not in a position to disconnect the faulty section that is one thing second disadvantage of not grounding the neutral is not grounding the neutral is i'll explain very clearly what is arcing grounds okay we taken a generator balanced generator but we did not connect the neutral of the generator to the ground we made it as isolated what does it mean by isolated neutral neutral of the generator is not connected to ground then that generator is called as isolated isolated neutral generator okay we we uh, one lg fault occurred on phase a there is no closed path for the flow of cult current what happens let's see further what happens let's see further yes this is a generator what we taken yes i'm not putting all that plus minus and x and notations i'm not putting ma yeah notations i am not putting you know yeah observe observe all of you there is a capacitance like this there is capacitance like this lots of capacitances are formed like that and between these two also capacitance will be formed between these two also capacitance will be formed now what happened here is here lg fault has been occurred LG fault has been occurred. What is this? Zero volts. If this is zero volt, this is also zero volt. What is this one? This one also zero volt. This one also zero volt. This one also zero volt. Okay. Let me draw one more diagram after this. This is phase A. This is phase B. And this is phase C. Now this capacitance, if you see, this is line to line capacitance. Uh, convert into line to not neutral that is that is the capacitance between line to line we'll take uh, that is that capacitance is delta connection delta connection see a to b b to c c to a c to a also i'll draw c to a also c to a also capacitance is there i'll, I'll draw in a i'll draw in a new page i'll draw in a new page okay now this is yes Observe here. Observe here, all of you. Now, 
the capacitance is uh, delta connected a to b is there b to c is there c to a is there i'll convert from delta to star then i'm going to get a neutral point that is uh, uh, an imaginary neutral point not a physical neutral point then i have a capacitance from a to the ground okay then yeah let me decrease the size yeah i have a capacitance i have a capacitance i'll put here yeah i'll have a capacitance from a to the ground and b to the ground yes and c to the ground all capacitance i'm making into single capacitance equal this is zero volts this is zero volts this is zero volts now lg fault has been occurred on phase a lg fault this is zero volts if this is zero this is also zero if you take it if you look at this capacitance no this capacitance here zero volt here zero volt therefore no current will flow in the phase a capacitance this is neglected but uh, this fault current will make a closed path yes uh, this fault current if if which is coming previously we understood that there is no closed path for the flow of fault current <coughs> now this uh, fault current uh, through the ground yes yes sorry through the ground it will make a closed path through this capacitance half half will make a closed path through this capacitance that will go this way to the generator yeah according to kcl current must have a closed path yes and uh, according to law of conservation of charge where the charge started or the current started again there it has to end this way the fault current is fine in closed path means closed path is there for the fault current but this is flow this fault current is flowing through the capacitance the fault current is very small and relay is not in a position to recognize it as a fault and faulty section will not be disconnected fault will not be isolated that is one problem another problem is i want to find i want to find phase b voltage i want to find phase b voltage i want to find eb see this is i i'll i'll draw that diagram once again i'll draw the diagram once again one of the very important concept one of the very important concept that's why these main times i'm explaining this way i'll draw this time this is uh, ea yes this is uh, eb and xb this is ec and xc okay this is a uh, minus plus this is minus plus this is minus plus all minuses we connected uh, to a single point okay plus minus minus plus this is minus uh, plus okay come here minus plus minus plus all these are connected and neutral is isolated that one we should not forget neutral is isolated okay now what happened a here is there is there is a capacitance from here to the ground yes there is from b to ground one capacitance and fault has been occurred on phase a now the fault current is flowing this way from here half of the fault current to here half of the fault current is flowing and it is making closed path so this is ea this is eb this is ec ec this is xa this is xb or let's take it as x and x and x why because we know that the generator is a balanced one now i want to find eb i want to find voltage at point b not eb voltage at point b i want vb i want vc okay how to find the voltage let's write kvl so i want with respect to ground no i want with respect to ground i'll take as plus minus i'll make a closed path i'll make a closed path so i'll start from here minus vb make a closed path minus vb come here uh, we'll start here we'll start here observe here carefully you start here go there what you are encountering plus eb plus eb yes go there and make a closer path like this again you must end at ground only no you must start at a point what is a, what is kvl start at a point and end at the same point now minus ea is equal to 0 therefore phase b voltage is ea minus eb that is equal to eab which is nothing but line voltage phase voltage is equal to line voltage means uh, if lg fault occurs on one of the phase if the neutral of the generator is isolated then remaining two healthy phases voltage will go up to line voltage which will make the flash over of the insulators flash over of the insulators this is called as arcing grounds or arcing horns okay 
so to avoid this one definitely neutral of the generator must be grounded this is the concept of arcing grounds the healthy phase voltage going to line voltage if the neutral of generator is not connected to ground is called as arcing grounds phenomena arcing grounds phenomena after this we have to see types of grounding there are several types of grounding neutral grounding methods solid grounding resistance grounding reacting grounding peterson coil grounding when we have to go for resistance when we have to go for solid when we have to go for reactance what is peterson coil all these things we'll discuss ma let's go to the next question ma that is uh, various types of groundings the question is what are the different uh, grounding methods we saw that if grounding is not done the healthy phase voltage will rise up to line voltage due to which insulation will damage there are uh, these these are the types of groundings these are the types of groundings first one is a uh, solid grounding means uh, solid grounding we are not connecting uh, means we are connecting neutral to ground but uh, that element uh, or the wire what we are using to connect from the neutral to ground is going to have negligible amount of resistance or reactance okay so we will represent like this this is a star connected uh, device okay this is the neutral point directly we will connect like this this is solid grounding it is also called as effective grounding it is also called as effective grounding effective grounding solid or effective grounding for transformers this type of grounding is preferred for transformers solid or effective grounding is preferred the next type of grounding is the next type of grounding is resistance grounding the second one is resistance grounding resistance grounding if you take uh, the synchronous generator yeah assume this one as synchronous generator neutral of this generator is connected to ground with help of uh, neutral resistance rn this is called as resistance grounding why we are going for resistance grounding the acceleration power pa is equal to ps uh, means s means steam input minus electric power output the acceleration power pa is equal to steam input minus electric power output uh, under fault condition during fault during fault uh, this electric power output will, will, will decrease therefore pa will increase if pa is increasing means more will be the acceleration therefore uh, the change in the rotor angle will be more okay so rotor angle is going to be uh, changed by more value which is not uh, a, a recommended condition for us then how to improve the stability how to improve the stability if pa is less if pa is less then acceleration is less then easily it can find that that much deceleration area uh, if i if i speak in terms of uh, uh, equal area criteria if more is the acceleration more deceleration area it needs if less is the deceleration Uh, less deceleration area required less deceleration area is available but more deceleration area if that much area is not available again uh, our machine will enter into acceleration never the system will become unstable our system will become never the system will become stable always our system will become unstable therefore always i need uh, this pa to be less pa to be less what i do is uh, under fault condition what is the current that is flowing this is uh, i f fault current is flowing see this is uh, this is uh, this is i can say without rn this is uh, without neutral resistance without neutral resistance now with neutral resistance pa is equal to ps minus of pe plus i square if square rn if square rn yes now when compared to this one see this let's take this one first one let's take it as a first second one pa1 pa2 see this is uh, with rn with neutral resistance rn i can say pa2 is less than pa1 pa2 is less than pa1 pa2 is less than pa1 means uh, i can say stability got increased acceleration power acceleration power decreased acceleration decreased acceleration area is less then uh, it need less deceleration area if more is the acceleration it need more deceleration area so power system stability increases that's why always alternator or synchronous generator must be grounded with a resistance okay let me take up a note point one of the very important question ma one of the very important question neutral of an alternator note neutral of an alternator 
must be grounded with must be grounded with grounded with resistance resistance what does it mean resistance grounding is used for synchronous generator or the same statement can be written like this resistance grounding is used resistance grounding is used for synchronous generator for synchronous generator okay generator why to improve to improve to improve stability to improve stability resistance grounding is used to improve stability okay let's go to the next question ma yeah what is a stable system yes yeah before to this uh, we discussed only uh, two grounding methods one is uh, effective grounding another one is resistance grounding we have to discuss uh, when uh, we are going for uh, reactance grounding and peterson coil also yeah let me discuss that what is that uh, reactance grounding and peterson coil grounding also i'll discuss yes what is reactance grounding and what is peterson coil grounding when reactance grounding is used second one is uh, so third one is reactance grounding reactance grounding means you know simply the neutral of a machine is connected to ground with help of reactants this i call it as xn reactants grounding where this reactants grounding is used uh, means for which machine this is used for synchronous motor for synchronous motor reactants grounding is used reactants grounding is used why for synchronous motor reactance grounding is used see synchronous motor mostly operated i can write synchronous motor is mostly operated mostly operated in over excited condition over excited condition why synchronous motor is mostly operated in over excited condition because uh, it can supply the reactive power means it is acting like a leading device it is supplying see it is uh, it, the current carried by the machine is a leading current a leading device can supply lagging reactive power or it is absorbing leading reactive power please do not confuse i'll repeat a leading device can supply lagging reactive power or the same can be said that it is absorbing leading reactive power so the current flowing through therefore the the current in over excited or excited synchronous motor is over excited synchronous motor is leading in nature leading in nature or i can write capacitive in nature if if current is capacitive in nature there is a possibility for the phase voltage to rise that leading current that leading current current may may increase may increase that leading current may increase the voltages in the system the voltages in the system yes yeah the nature of leading current see the uh, nature of the current is leading that leading current will increase uh, i can say uh, it it will increase uh, voltage in the system to to compensate or to reduce that leading in nature that leading nature to reduce that leading nature of current leading nature of the current of the current reactance is connected 
reactants is connected yes this is the reason why the neutral of synchronous motor must be connected with the reactants to the ground reactants grounding it is called as then what is Peterson coil grounding Peterson coil grounding this is also called as resonance grounding resonance grounding okay when it is what it is first of all same same as that of previous but if we are cancelling out the leading nature completely with reactants with the, a coil if leading nature of leading nature of the fault current of the fault current is completely cancelled is completely cancelled means if reactants see i can say leading and lagging nature both are equally cancelled that condition is called as resonance you know completely cancelled then that grounding is called as that grounding is called as is called as yes what grounding Peterson coil grounding Peterson coil grounding yes yeah. let's go to the next question ma. next question see uh, we we discussed about the types of groundings solid or effective grounding resistance grounding reactance grounding and Peterson coil grounding the next question is what is a stable system a system is said to be stable if it if it continues if, if it is there at the equilibrium point even after experiencing a disturbance this way we can say see there are two ways of discussing about stability one is in control system point point view and another one is in power system point of view okay see if the system continues to to supply the power to supply the power okay i'm not saying the same amount of power i'm not saying the same amount of power if the system or if, if you take a generator if a, a synchronous generator is uh, continuing its power supply to the grid even after experiencing a disturbance then that is said to be stable then that is said to be stable so see a system is said to be stable a system is said to be stable if that if that remains instead of system a machine i call a machine a generator a generator is said to be stable if that remains in synchronism you know what does it mean by in synchronism in synchronism even after even after experiencing even after experiencing a disturbance even after experiencing a disturbance okay next stability of a physical system is decided by what factors yeah what factors will decide a uh, system stability the first one is quantity of disturbance quantity of disturbance yes see if, if the disturbance is very big then uh, there are very less chances of uh, the system to remain in stable mode or in synchronism okay the time up to which the time up to which up to which disturbance disturbance occurs you know what does it mean by that you know what does it mean by that see disturbance is a medium range disturbance but that is there for long amount of time for more time then there is a possibility for the system to become unstable see uh, for example, very simply you can understand you can relate this one with uh, any uh, general example a person got uh, uh, ill if a person got heart attack suppose say so immediately we have to take him to the hospital how how fastly you can take him to the hospital that many chances of the chances of uh, for the per person to survive is more if you are if you are making late then chances of uh, survival are reducing in the same way if it is if the disturbance is uh, there for a long time stability will be less if the disturbance is there for very small time stability will be more 
relatively okay and initial operating point initial operating point see in the initial classes uh, we saw that delta greater than 90 approximately unstable less than 90 stable suppose if the initial operating angle of the synchronous generator is 89 even a small disturbance also can make the angle to exceed 90 degrees yes if the initial operating angle of the synchronous generator is at some 10 degrees even a large disturbance also may not make the angle to cross 90 degrees that's why initial operating point is also very important initial operating point means delta or not so these three are the factors which will decide whether a system is going to uh, remain in stable mode or not okay i need all these three should be less point of the disturbance should be less if these three are less then i can say that the system stability is more when compared to the system which is having these three as high values okay yeah next question classification of stability see this way we are classifying in stability one is rotor angle stability rotor angle stability this is important for us stability again this rotor angle stability is divided into yes small disturbance stability small disturbance small disturbance stability study stability study this is also called a small signal or steady state there are many names for this one small disturbance stability study or small signal stability study the second one is large disturbance large disturbance stability study means uh, if the disturbance is large see what are the small disturbances load changes whenever load change that is treated as small disturbance what does it mean by large disturbance uh, fault or contingencies if one of the equipment got disconnected one of the very big power transformer got disconnected uh, then it's a large disturbance it's a large disturbance third one is third one is dynamic stability study dynamic stability study dynamic not disturbance dynamic stability study that's all see what does uh, so this is not that much important and that is not having that much significance in india dynamic stability study what is dynamic stability study if a st small disturbance is happening for more time see this is small disturbance for normal amount of time large disturbance for normal amount of time this is a small disturbance uh, for more amount of time is taken as a dynamic stability study yes this is a uh, uh, rotor angle stability another uh, two classifications are one is see second one is second one is voltage stability voltage stability in our power system we need at each and every bus uh, the voltage should be the change in voltage should be plus or minus five percent of its rated voltage the change that much change only can be accepted not less than that or more than that suppose uh, at a bus 100 volts is the rated voltage 95 to 105 is accepted below 95 is treated as low voltage above 185 is treated as high voltage or over voltage okay voltage stability third one is uh, frequency stability yes frequency stability yes uh, our we we want the frequency to be always 50 hertz plus or minus one percent is accepted plus or minus one percent of 50 hertz means how much uh, 0.5 means 49.5 to 50.5 is treated as a uh, is accepted range of frequency any frequency less than 49.5 is treated as under frequency then immediately under frequency relay will come into picture uh, then the device which is causing that under frequency will be disconnected from grid uh, that relay will give trip signal to circuit breaker okay if a frequency is more than 50.5 over frequency relay will come into picture that over frequency relay will give trip signal to circuit breaker circuit breaker is going to open its contacts uh, by ensuring that uh, the, the the equipment or the section which is causing over frequency will be disconnected from the grid you know what happens uh, if frequency is high or low compared to the grid frequency circulating currents will flow voltage difference will be there circulating currents will flow from machine to machine or generator to generator or uh, generators will damage okay this is the classification of stability next question what is synchronizing power and synchronizing power coefficient uh, see whenever uh, there is a load change whenever there is a load change immediately input uh, may not act suppose suddenly load requirement got increased suddenly load requirement got increased but uh, this input this input is a stream input this stream input to act uh, uh, for the load to for to, uh, to uh, this stream input to act such that it is going to supply to the load it will take some time but load is taking its power then who is supplying this power this uh, synchronizing power is the power which will come into picture whenever there is a disturbance it is the power yes it is it is the power 
which will come into picture which will come into picture whenever whenever there is a disturbance in the system there is a disturbance in the system in the system let's discuss what is synchronizing power and what is synchronizing power coefficient uh, by using a formula yes synchronizing power see k we call that is equal to do pe by do delta yes this is a megawatt per radians simply we can understand if my angle is increasing then power is also increasing stable yeah this synchronizing power coefficient will give us whether a system is stable or not okay if, if uh, load angle is increasing power supply is also increasing stable the load angle is increasing power supply is decreasing unstable so i'll write like this if uh, k is positive system is yes system is stable yes if k is uh, negative system is unstable system is unstable it is having very good significance this will give whether our system is stable or not synchronizing power coefficient is giving the information whether our system is stable or not this is synchronizing power coefficient ma this is a synchronizing power coefficient okay now what is the formula for synchronizing power what is the formula for synchronizing power that is a p s y we call that is uh, do p by do delta into del delta this is in megawatts that's all that is a uh, k into del delta megawatts k into del delta megawatts this is synchronizing power synchronizing power yes it is okay yeah let's go to the next question now what are the methods to improve steady state stability what are what are the methods to improve steady state stability see we are we discussed we discussed the stability means with rotor angle only so now if you look at this equation p is equal to p max p max into sin delta how much less is the delta that much more our system is stable this p max can be written as mod vs mod vr by x into sin delta pe megawatts megawatts observe it here observe it here all of you see uh, with the decrement of uh, reactance if you decrease the reactance how to decrease the reactance go with the double circuit lines go with the series compensation midpoint compensation okay capacitance compensation x will be decreased x will be decreased you can you can go for uh, bundle conductors x will be decreased okay yeah what is the advantage of bundle conductors reactance of the system will decrease inductive reactance will decrease okay design design a machine in such a way that its reactance is less okay you design a machine to have more air gap if more is the air gap uh, then definitely less will be the armature uh, reaction less will, less will be the armature reaction reaction reactance okay if x decreases obviously obviously sin delta can sin delta this uh, this p max will increase p max will increase sin delta will decrease that means delta will decrease for constant p sin delta delta is decreasing means system is more stable one method is to decrease the reactance second method to improve stability is uh, operate at a over excited condition over excited condition then what happens is this this voltage will increase if voltage is increasing p max will increase if p max is increasing we have to decrease sin delta or sin delta automatically will decrease for constant amount of power supply sin delta is decreasing means delta is decreasing system stability got increased system stability got increased so by using static wire compensators by using static wire compensators or fax devices we can improve this uh, steady state uh, stability okay yeah now what are the methods to improve transient stability transient stability or large disturbance stability study both are same let me discuss few points about that small disturbance stability and large disturbance stability small disturbance means load changes i told you that small disturbance can be studied with help of uh, electrical equations power transfer equations only but whereas this large disturbance stability study we can't uh, we are unable to study with uh, i can say with electrical uh, power transfer equations so we have to use a equation called swing equation that swing equation is a, a nonlinear differential equation m into d square delta by dt square is equal to pa where m is a uh, uh, rotor inertia that going that is going to moment of inertia and delta is the load angle pa is the acceleration power which is equal to steam input minus electric power output okay transient stability means large disturbance large disturbance stability study there are various methods uh, 
see design design rotor with more capacity design rot or design the machine design alternator design alternator with high capacity see if the capacity is high capacity is high then the disturbance uh, large disturbance also may not completely affect it the effect of disturbance will be less suppose if you take uh, if you take a wheel very big very big wheel which is rotating which is rotating now a disturbance on that uh, suppose you want to you want to create some disturbance with your finger your finger only will damage why because it's a very big wheel it's a very big wheel uh, your your force is not sufficient to to disturb it okay if more is the generator capacity then its system is uh, stability is more than than that uh, system stability or generator stability is more okay the second way is uh, decrease reactance i i given several methods to decrease reactance that is uh, with the parallel lines with the bundle conductors okay with the series capacitance with static wire compensators okay design the alternator to have less reactance by maintaining more air gap okay yeah then connect a flywheel connect a flywheel by connecting a flywheel what is a flywheel i'll tell you what is a flywheel see flywheel is a very big uh, i can say rotating structure uh, very large it is uh, if you connect it's a very big mechanical one okay uh, it's simply a mass very big mass okay uh, if you connect it along with the generator flywheel also will rotate if there is a disturbance on the generator this flywheel will resist that disturbance why right? because this flywheel is having a kinetic energy stored why because it's rotating okay by connecting a flywheel there are uh, several methods by using automatic voltage regulator yeah fourth method is by by avr automatic voltage regulator see what is the purpose of avr whenever whenever uh, i can say voltage got decreased this can increase automatic voltage regulator can increase whenever voltage got increased this automatic voltage regulator can decrease it okay and uh, by changing steam input by changing steam input steam input fastly see suppose at the load side if load got decreased if load got decreased if we are decreasing the steam input also the acceleration power on the rotor will decrease if acceleration power is uh, less rotor acceleration will be less if load got increased if steam input is also increased then uh, then the rotor will not get decelerate rotor will not get decelerate by by changing the steam input fastly this must happen at a faster rate and means uh, the valves and this feedback mechanism system all this must uh, must work at a faster rate okay yeah the next one is uh, by single pole circuit breaker by single pole circuit breaker what this i'll tell you there are two types of circuit breakers one is three pole and one is single pole so this is a three pole circuit breaker this is phase a b and c what does it mean by that three pole whenever a fault occurs on any phase suppose on phase a fault occur remain to healthy phase also this is going to disconnect this is three pole then what happens is pa is equal to ps minus p as all three poles are disconnected due to the fault on phase a due to the fault on phase a all three phase got disconnected this pe will become completely equal to zero this acceleration power will be very very high acceleration power will be very very high okay but uh, by using single pole circuit breaker what is a single pole circuit breaker every phase it's having ha is having its own circuit breaker now whenever fault occurs on phase a whenever fault occurs on phase a only this will be disconnected these two are happy pa is equal to ps minus pe pe will reduce but it's not uh, entirely equal to zero therefore pa is increasing but not uh, that much as that of three pole circuit breaker therefore by using single pole circuit breaker instead of three pole circuit breaker we can improve the stability yes and another point is another point is by resistance grounding yes we discussed previously by resistance grounding of by resistance grounding of alternator 
by resistance grounding of alternator by using the resistance grounding of alternator yes we can improve the stability we can improve the stability there are few more methods also how to improve stability by by putting uh, i can say breaking resistance in the phase breaking resistance means uh, when circuit breaker is opening it will introduce a resistance in the system if the resistance got increased uh, this i square r will be there pi is equal to ps minus pe plus uh, i square r so if you use a resistance no so pa is equal to ps minus pe plus i square r yes this p is decreasing but this i square r is is introduced pa is going to increase but not that much the increment in pa is not that much therefore stability will be improved there are few more few more methods but these are enough in interview point of view okay let's go to the next question now what is the purpose of y bars what first of all what is a y bus matrix y bus matrix see it's a it is a simply i can say uh, admittance matrix okay we have impedance and admittance y bus is an admittance matrix suppose if a network is given we are going to form this matrix what is the purpose of it uh, by using y bus uh, we can we can do load flow studies we can do stability analysis we can do load flow studies and we can do stability analysis y bus based load flow is easy see for the purpose of load flow studies for for the purpose of load flow studies y bus is used y bus is used for the purpose of load flow studies y bus is used for stability also you can use y bus load flow so z bus can't we use for load flows yes z bus based load flow also we can do but uh, y bus based load flow is easy okay next question ma y bus construction methods see there are two methods to construct y bus one is uh, direct inspection method yes direct uh, inspection method direct inspection method another one is a uh, singular transformation method singular transformation method singular transformation method we always follow this uh, direct inspection method the name itself says direct inspection just by looking at the circuit we are in a position to write uh, that y bus matrix okay yeah the next question is why y bus of a power system network is sparse first of all what does it mean by sparse see y bus of a y bus matrix of a system is uh, uh, most of the y bus elements are zeros sparse that that is what it's mean by sparse matrix sparse means sparse means most of the y bus elements are y bus elements y bus matrix yeah it's a matrix y bus matrix elements are zeros zeros that is what it's mean by sparse why most of the elements are zeros see uh, an element uh, an element in the y bus matrix uh, especially off diagonal element is non zero if there is a connection between those two nodes let me write that note point see a non zero element element in the y bus matrix y bus matrix represents represents a non zero element in the y bus matrix represents what it is going to represent the connection the connection between those nodes the connection between those nodes what is that i'll tell you the connection between those nodes i'll tell you suppose uh, this is node 1 this is a node 2 this is node 3 this is node 4 okay see a y bus if i take what is size of y bus 4 by 4 you will get as four nodes are there you are going to get a 4 by 4 matrix okay so now if you look at this uh, 4 by 4 matrix y this is 1 1 y 1 2 y 1 3 y 1 4 it is y 2 1 y 3 1 y 4 1 suppose say this y 4 1 is uh, 0 if it is there is no connection between 1 and 4 1 and 4 not required also it may or may not it's not mandatory to have a connection from one bus to each and every bus okay what what i mean to say 1 2 2 there is a connection 2 2 3 there is a connection 3 2 4 there is a connection this is mandatory not may may, may not be in the same way 1 2 I can, I can write i can write like this may not be in the same way i can write like this see 1 2 3 is there 3 to 2 is there 3 to 4 is there this way also all nodes are connected 
all nodes are connected see 1 2 2 there is a connection via this 3 and 2 yes suppose if there is no connection between 1 and 3 if there is no connection between 1 and 3 i can say this uh, node 1 is an isolated node this this one node 1 does not belong to this uh, system so by some means there should be a connection uh, this is mandatory but uh, is it not mandatory to have a connection between 1 and 3 1 and 4 may or may not yes if there is no connection what is the impedance between those two elements zero infinite impedance is infinite what is the admittance reciprocal of impedance is uh, admittance if impedance is infinite admittance will be zero that's why most of the elements in vibus uh, matrix are zeros uh, because uh, there 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 need not to be always need not to be a connection from one node to each and every node yes let me write that point let me write that point there need not to be a connection from a node to each and every node each and every node see from a node yeah it must be there in the system means by some means it must be connected to other nodes means uh, if we uh, suppose uh, 1 2 3 1 2 2 2 3 connection should be there okay but 1 2 3 1 2 4 direct connection yeah let me write there need not to be instead of this way let me write there need not to be there need not to be a direct connection yes i missed this word previously direct connection from from one node to each and every other node each and every other node other node may or may not so as suppose if you take 100, 100 bus system 100 node system 1 to 2 is there 2 to, 2 to 3 is there like that 1 to 100 is there but 1 to 3 1 to 5 1 to 6 1 to 7 2 to 4 2 to 5 2 to 6 2 to 7 need not to be if there is no connection impedance is infinite if impedance is infinite admittance is zero that's why most of the off diagonal elements in vibus matrix are zeros that's why vibus matrix is called as a sparse matrix next question the off diagonal elements of a vibus matrix significance see the number of this is very simple if there is a connection between 1 and 2 let me write here 1 2 this is a 3 okay see i'll take here this is small y12 small y13 now if i write the matrix if i write the matrix see this is y bus y bus a 3 by 3 matrix we are going to get a 3 by 3 matrix we are going to get y11 capital y11 is non zero yes y12 yes minus of uh, this small y12 minus of this small y12 this is also non zero y13 y13 is zero uh, because from 1 to 3 from 1 to 3 from 1 to 3 you see is there any connection no from 1 to 3 there is no connection between 1 to 3 directly is there any connection no what is the impedance directly we have from 1 to 3 infinite impedance is infinite means admittance is zero yeah now let's see y22 two, two, capital y22 two, two is non zero sorry y y21 y21 is non zero see 21 means uh, 1 2 2 1 both are same minus of this value y22 two, two is non zero y23 is also non zero y23 is also non zero see y31 y31 is zero why because why because between 3 to 1 there is no direct connection if there is no direct connection impedance is infinite admittance will be zero y32 yes we have y33 also we have capital y33 also we have so this way see if you see if you see observe here carefully this is zero this is zero means if one transmission line is missing then how many off diagonal elements are zero then two so simply number of uh, transmission lines is equal to number of non-zero off diagonal elements by two of uh, diagonal elements by two or vice versa if you want number of off zero number of non-zero off diagonal elements so that is equal to two in number of transmission lines this is mostly asked a question in an interviews okay what is the objective of load flow studies why we are doing load flow studies i'll tell you 
see whenever a new equipment is coming into picture or whenever an existing element uh, equipment is disconnected how the voltage at a bus is changing how active power is changing how reactive power is changing changing how magnitude of voltage is changing or how the load angle is changing to do that one this load flow studies is required see to see the effect of apparatus effect of uh, effect of effect of connection or disconnection connection or disconnection disconnection of an apparatus this is the first one second one second one if i know if i know the voltage at a point and power at that point and current at that point then only i will be able to design the compensating equipment to increase the voltage or do decrease the voltage to design compensating equipment to design compensating equipment yes compensating equipment yes next uh, to do uh, i can say stability to to do the stability study if i know what is the present angle then only i'll be able to predict uh, if load changes or fault occurs what will be the next angle law no? yes for for steady state stability analysis for steady state stability analysis or transient stability analysis whatever it is this is the purpose why we are going for load flow studies let's go for the next question ma what is the need of bus classification yes this is one of the very good uh, interview question see uh, in power system network at each bus we have four unknowns at each bus four unknowns are there four unknowns are there four unknowns are there what are the four unknowns p comma q comma mod v and delta at each bus at each and every bus we have four unknowns in an n bus in an n bus power system network power system network total unknowns are how many ma total unknowns are total unknowns are four n how many total unknowns are four n we have total unknowns are four n now see let's say the number of equations available also see if if there is an unknown uh, we must have equations also to find those unknowns okay at each bus at each bus we have we have two equations only two equations at each bus what are those those are those are p comma q equations p comma q equations total equations total equations in n bus power system network are how many in n bus power system network are how many ma 2n now observe four n unknowns we have two n equations is it possible to get the solution of four n unknowns with two n equations not possible so it is difficult or not possible it is difficult or wrong answer we get difficult uh, to get solution of solution of 4n unknowns 4n unknowns with the uh, 2n equations with the 2n equations that's why that's why what we are assuming is that's why that's why at each bus at each bus two quantities are two quantities are taken as taken as known quantities known quantities yes at each bus four quantities are taken as known quantities not for two quantities how many two quantities are taken as known quantities okay now you tell me at each bus how many unknowns are there only two and two and two unknowns previously there are four unknowns we are assuming that at each bus uh, two unknowns two are knowns then we are left with only two unknowns in an nbus power system network two n unknowns two n equations we can get a unique solution yes now see depending on depending on what are the known quantities 
what are the known quantities at a bus at a bus bus classification buses classification is done buses classification is done buses classification is done see if you don't go for bus classification means if you are not assuming some quant two quantities as known quantities at a bus then your unknowns will remain 4n and uh, uh, number of equations remain 2n uh, it is not possible to get the solution of 4n unknowns with 2n equations okay let's go to the next question now size of jacobian matrix see jacobian matrix j that is equal to yes this is j1 j2 j3 and j4 let me write its description what is j1 do p by do delta do p by do mod v do q by do delta do q by do mod v see where j1 is what ma matrix say sub matrix it is jacobian sub matrix j1 is what again it is a matrix do p by do delta always we have to find this way let me take a new page and there i'll discuss how to find the size of a jacobian matrix j1 is equal to do p by do delta so this way we have to raise uh, write the size known by unknown this must be known this must be unknown this must be unknown let's write here see uh, total buses are n total buses is equal to n one bus is like bus first let me write the classification of buses first let me write the classification of buses then we go for it yes yeah first uh, let me write the classification of buses then i will come for this one what is the classification of buses what is the classification of buses buses are classified like this buses are classified like this yeah first one is a pv bus or let's take first one as slack bus okay slack bus at this bus slack bus or swing bus or reference bus all the names are same this practically will not exist but why you are taking for the purpose of reference what is the purpose of reference sir any unknown is taken as x sir, as a reference so x plus something is equal to something that x unknown we are going to get so in our power system network uh, how much is the excess power we want to supply or how much uh, power we have to reduce its generation these things uh, we don't know therefore uh, excess power if it is required we'll assume that this slack bus is uh, supplying uh, p slack plus p load plus uh, p slack uh, plus uh, uh, p slack uh, plus p load plus uh, i can say I, I can write like this slack bus is a generator highest capacity generator is taken or assumed as a slack bus p slack means this is generator generation plus p other generator generations is equal to p load plus a p loss p loss so this is not there actually this i am taking as a reference this is the generation this is the load plus loss if uh, this load is at uh, 90 loss is 10 total 100 but generation is 90 only extra generation 10 i have to do that i will get with this equation only so that's why i am taking this one as a reference just for the purpose of calculation okay or any excess amount of power is taken by slack we'll assume like that we'll assume that like that any excess amount of power that is taken by slack slack bus what are the known quantities here what are the known quantities here mod v and delta are known known second one pv bus or generator bus pv or generator bus here p and mod v are p and mod v are known p and mod v are known third bus third bus pq bus pq bus i can write p comma q are known p comma q are known okay pq bus this is also called as load bus pq bus is also called as load bus okay i'm not writing it you can remember it's also called as what bus ma load bus so now let's come here j1 how to write this one or we already wrote j1 let's write later total buses are how many total buses are n total buses are how many ma n first bus is slack bus first bus is slack bus means how many we are left with n minus 1 buses m buses are pv buses m buses are pv buses then m buses are pv buses then what we can write number of pq buses is equal to number of 
PQ buses is equal to total N in that MPV one stack. These are the number of PQ buses. Now come here. Now come here. Here observe. So J1 is equal to dou P by dou delta where P see I told you that uh, this we have to take it uh, as a uh, known this is a uh, unknown this is a uh, unknown now tell me P is known at how many buses P is known at only at PQ P is known at PQ as well as uh, PV buses P is known at uh, PQ plus PV buses how many PQ we have uh, n minus m minus 1 how many pv we have m if i add these two how much i am going to get uh, n minus 1 so n minus 1 this is unknown delta is unknown at delta is unknown at how many buses at pv we don't know at pq also we don't know yes only at one bus we know that is at slack bus this is n minus 1 therefore the size of j1 is what n minus 1 by n minus 1 by n minus 1 in the same way if you take j4 j2 j3 you can do ma j2 j3 you can do overall size of the jacobian matrix i will be giving okay j4 is what dou q by dou mod v how to find the size of uh, jacobian matrix this is known yes and this is a uh, unknown unknown you tell me q is known at how many buses q is known at we know q at uh, only pq buses only at pq buses how many pq we have n minus m minus 1 mod v is unknown at see v is known at slack bus v is known in pv but v is unknown at a pq buses n minus m minus 1 yes if you add these two if you add these two how much are going to get 2n yes yeah 2n minus 2m minus 2 2n minus 2m minus 2 yes see q is q is known at q is known at only at a pq buses and uh, mod v is unknown mod v is known at a pv as well as slack the only left is pq so 2n minus m minus uh, 2n minus uh, uh, 2m minus 2 okay now jacobian matrix size uh, j will be you see j1 is having a its own rows and columns j2 is also having its own rows and columns j3 is also having its own rows and columns j4 is also is having its own rows and columns tell me what are the total columns we have total columns j1 columns and j2 columns columns rows j1 j3 rows we have to take j1 j3 rows so uh, the total size of the matrix will be 2n minus m minus 2 2n minus m minus 2 by 2n minus m minus 2 you will be getting the jacobian size or let's find let's find why to leave like this why to leave like this let's find okay let's find the size of j2 also j2 what is that j2 dou p by dou delta dou p by dou delta p is known at directly i'm writing p is known at how many buses known by unknown na? known by unknown p is known at uh, pv plus pq what is pv what is pv pv is, pv is uh, m buses m, m buses are pv plus delta c p is known at both pv and pq what is pq n minus m minus 1 by delta is unknown at pv and pq delta is unknown at pv and pq yes delta is unknown at pv and pq but because delta is known at only slack bus what is pv pv is a m plus pq is n minus m minus 1 so this m m gone m m gone n minus 1 by n minus 1 yes this j2 size is also n minus 1 by n minus 1 n minus 1 by n minus 1 let's come to this j3 what is j3 j3 is yes dou q by dou delta dou q by dou delta sorry I, I i did wrong here i did wrong here what is that you know this is dou p by dou delta yes come back here we taken it wrong we taken it wrong yeah actual j actual j we have to go there dou p by dou delta dou p by dou mod v j2 is not dou p by dou delta 
see dou p by dou delta dou p by dou, dou mod v this is dou q by dou delta dou q by dou mod v that's why you are getting wrong answer yes come back dou p by dou mod v my it is dou p by dou mod v let me do it j2 j2 is equal to what dou p by dou mod v p is known at both pv and pq n minus 1 it is and v is unknown at v is unknown at only we don't know v only at pv we know slack also we know only at pq versus n minus m minus 1 done j2 done j3 is j3 is what dou q by dou delta dou q by dou delta q is known only at n minus m minus 1 buses only at a pq buses and delta is unknown at delta is unknown at both as well as pv as well as pq therefore we get that one as n minus 1 therefore is yes dou q by dou mod v q is known at only at a pq n minus m minus 1 by v is unknown at a, only at only at a, i can say pq buses n minus m minus 1 so with this you can get the total size of jacobian matrix after this we have to see few questions on generation part and a few questions on uh, i can say power system protection part ma let's go to the next question next question read the question what is the difference between protection ct and measurement ct see uh, ct is a current transformer which is going to step down the current uh, high value of current to low value of current but uh, there is a uh, difference between normal ct measurement ct and protection ct i'll tell you i'll tell you what is the difference what is the difference if you draw the characteristic magnetization characteristic of uh, ct yes flux versus current this is uh, flux this is current yes let me draw let me draw it clearly yes these are the characteristics and uh, i can say uh, this is the ankle point this is the ankle point yes uh, just a minute yeah yes okay and this is called as ankle point and this is called as knee point this is knee point this is ankle point ankle point see the measurement ct must operate at knee point the measurement ct must operate at knee point whereas the uh, protection ct must operate at ankle point if the protection ct is operating at ankle point whenever a fault occurs the fault current increase then it will be in the linear region the primary fault current will be reflected to secondary fault current and our protection system is in a position to recognize the fault and that, that will use to, that really basic protection system will work okay suppose if it is operating here our protection ct is operating here whenever fault occurs it will enter into this region into the saturation region then the primary side fault current is not reflected to secondary side fault will remain unrecognized okay therefore measurement ct must operate at ankle point uh, sorry measurement ct must operate at knee point uh, whereas protection ct must operate at uh, ankle point this is what the difference between uh, normal ct measurement ct and uh, protection ct okay let's go to the next question ma. read the question types of the relays there are many types of relays uh, depending on the characteristics depending on characteristics let me write depending on characteristics these are the main types of relays we have uh, that is uh, first one is instantaneous relay instantaneous uh, relay see uh, the name itself when our fault occurs immediately that will that is going to disconnect uh, uh, the this this is going to give trip signal to circuit breaker circuit breaker is going to disconnect the system this is instantaneous relay but uh, there are some disadvantages of this relay what what are those disadvantages you know there are some faults some, some faults called transient faults what are those this is a, a transmission line this is the tree branch one of the tree branches coming touching this transmission line again on its own it is going back on its own it is going back it's a temporary fault it's not a permanent fault okay need not to cleared by the operator the fault which itself got cleared by itself the fault which got cleared by itself is called as a temporary fault or transient fault 
for these strange and false relay should not operate right? because this type of strange and false keep on happening therefore uh, uh, the relay keep on uh, giving trip signal to circuit breaker uh, number of times uh, our system will be disconnected reliability of power supply will decrease that's why for these type of uh, false relay should not operate uh, there is some disadvantage with this uh, instantaneous relay next one is uh, dmt relay what is dmt definite minimum time relay definite minimum time relay means uh, for some time this relay will wait for some time the, this relay will wait before it operate when fault occurs that's why it is called as definite minimum time relay the third one is uh, idmt relay inverse uh, inverse inverse definite minimum time relay so this is going to have the characteristics of both inverse and definite minimum time let me draw those characteristics let me draw those characteristics okay yeah see if you see dmt relay this is time and this is current first up to uh, up to some value of uh, see i can say yeah this is uh, this is the characteristics for no operation up to here no operation up to here after that it is going to operate yes next uh, let me draw idmt inverse definite minimum time inverse definite minimum time okay so this is i and this is uh, t so till here no operation after that as current is increasing the time taken is going to decrease the, the as time is as current is increasing the time taken will increase this is idmt relay characteristics idmt relay characteristics and uh, instantaneous inverse relay instantaneous uh, instantaneous inverse relay inverse relay yeah these are the characteristics of that one this is i and this is t this is zero okay yeah and uh, these, these these types of relays are based on uh, the characteristics but based on uh, Activating quantity based on activating quantity. This is the classification relay of relays based on activating quantity Activating quantity. What does it mean by activating quantity the quantity which will cause the relay to operate? The first one is over current relay over current relay second one <coughs> Over voltage relay over voltage relay yes third one is frequency relay frequency relay yes fourth one is power relay fourth one is power relay so after this we have to see the types of circuit breakers and uh, with their voltage ratings for up means up to what value of voltage uh, those circuit breakers are used let's go for the next question ma yeah, read the question types of circuit breakers with voltage ranges yes these are the types of uh, circuit breakers the first one is a uh, air circuit breaker second one is first one is air circuit breaker and its voltage rating is a uh, less than 1 kV less than 1 kV see for low voltages I can say for low voltages for less than 1 kV it is used the second one is vacuum circuit breaker vacuum circuit breaker for the operating voltage uh, less than 33 kV this uh, vacuum circuit breaker is uh, used see first one is uh, air circuit breaker for low voltage second one is vacuum circuit breaker the third one is uh, oil circuit breaker again in the oil we have two types uh, minimum oil and uh, bulk oil circuit breaker yes uh, third one is uh, bulk oil circuit breaker simply I can say I can say oil circuit breaker this is for the voltage less than 220 kV this is for the voltage uh, less than 220 kV this is for the voltage less than 220 kV the next one is air blast circuit breaker please do not misunderstand uh, between air and air blast air circuit breaker is the for low voltage and air blast is for high voltage like up to 400 kV okay see air blast circuit breaker air blast circuit breaker for the voltage less than 400 kV the final one is uh, which is going to withstand the uh, highest uh, voltage that is uh, SF6 circuit breaker X SF6 circuit breaker for the operating voltage is less than 800 kV this is the classification of circuit breaker along with their voltage ranges so it's very important with respect to PSU's interviews okay let's go to the next question ma what is that 
what is a base load plant and peak load plant very simple question what is a base load plant the plant which can supply continuously continuously is used as base load plant and uh, the cost per unit of the base load plant should be less that's very important okay a base load plant is going to supply power continuously hydro power plants hydroelectric power plants and coal i can say natural gas and nuclear power plants these are used as a, a base load plants what is a peak load plant first of all what is a peak load whenever there is a spike or more <coughs> demand in the load these peak load plants are used the per cost uh, cost per unit of the peak load plant is more when compared to base load plants okay uh, i can say diesel power plants or, or diesel generators or i can say solar wind these can be used as uh, peak load plants whenever see and uh, one more characteristic of this uh, peak load plant very important thing required for us is uh, see this uh, this uh, peak load plant must immediately come into action it, it should suppose if, if there is a diesel generator yes immediately we can it can commence it can it can supply power okay parallel operation of that one with the grid uh, should be easy okay gas plants and uh, i can say uh, 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 gas plants wind plants solar plants uh, and uh, diesel power plants these can be used as peak load plants the cost per unit per unit cost of uh, per unit electric energy cost of uh, peak load plants is more when compared to base load plants this is the difference between these two okay let's go to the next question ma what is the differential relay differential relay is the relay which will recognize the difference of uh, same electrical quantities uh, the phase difference of the same electrical quantities if there is a phase difference between those two quantities then the relay operating coil is going to be activated and it is going to give trip signal to circuit breaker this is mainly used <coughs> for the purpose of for the protection purpose of transformer and alternator for the for the protection purpose of transformer and alternator there is a relay called buckholz relay which is used to recognize the oil level or slowly developing faults in uh, transformer it is not going to give trip signal it is going to give an alarm that relay is called as buckholz relay okay the the relay which is used to recognize uh, the oil level means if the oil level in the transformer tank decreases then this buckholz relay is going to give an alarm okay the buckholz relay is used to recognize the slowly developing faults uh, which are also called as incipient faults incipient faults are also called as slowly developing faults yeah with this we are done with the marathon of power systems ma we covered almost all areas so all the best ma thank you